Chapter 391, Arosia, Grade A Chain Mission, 2. Chapter 391, Arosia, Grade A Chain Mission, 2. Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios. The slave market was being rebuilt. Han Xiao showed his identity to the construction team and entered the underground corridor successfully. He came to the cell that Arosia had once been in, looked around, knocked here and there, and did not find anything unusual. Floating Dragon had searched the cell long before him, and they did not find anything either. Arosia stood outside the door and watched. She suddenly asked, Why do you want to bring me away? Han Xiao paused for a moment. He definitely could not say that it was a mission requirement. So he said, I'm very curious about you. Curious. Arosia mumbled. What is that? Curiosity is the desire for knowledge. For example, when a normal person loses their memory, they want to know who they were before. This is a type of desire. Desire. I don't seem to have this sort of thing. Is that special? Air, usually, those without desires are artificial intelligence and not needing to consume or excrete is a characteristic of energy life forms. Han Xiao sized Arosia up and said, But you're neither of them. You just don't have the basic physical needs, you might not have no desire at all. Don't you have anything you want? Arosia thought carefully and said, I don't think so. Are you sure? Since you asked me a question, that's the curiosity of wanting to know what desire is, Han Xiao said. Desire is the sign of life a feeling that makes people realize their existence. Can also be said that it's the motive for every action a life form takes. Therefore, a life form like you seems very unique. Arosia tilted her head, pondered, and said, Is the reason for you teaching me how to use the energy inside my body also your own desire? I want you to be stronger and become a help to me, Han Xiao said honestly. He had figured out a few ways to communicate with Arosia. There was no need to pretend. He just had to be straightforward and express his motive. As always, Arosia still had a carefree attitude. I won't die, so what's the point of becoming stronger? Strong or weak, it's all meaningless. Or I should say, existence itself is meaningless. Han Xiao thought about it and said, But if you die, your memory will be reset. You'll forget about this short-term memory. The you after reviving might not be who you are now. Once you revive, you'll start from the beginning again, thinking the same things you have been thinking, wasting the same time you have already wasted, only to end up in the same place you are now. Becoming stronger will help you to avoid reviving, preventing yourself to be killed by others or disasters. Han Xiao paused and said, and about meaning. You don't need food and excretion to maintain your life so you can't feel existence. If your mind is blank, a day or even a year will feel like an instant. Hence, why not find something to do and give meaning to your life? I see. Arosia mumbled a while, nodded, and said, Thank you. Talking with you is very pleasant. No one had ever said this much to me. In the past three years, the others only had two impression of her. A space wonder or a slave that did not run away. Never was there someone that communicated with her like she was a normal individual. Don't mention it. It's just chit-chat. There was no clue in the prison cell. Han Xiao could only stop and casually chat with Arosia, waiting for the time limit to arrive and see what would actually happen. Seconds and minutes passed. As the last minute ended, the change happened. Arosia was still standing outside the door. She did not return to the cell. She took a few steps backward, then looked down on her body. Nothing unusual happened. Then she backed off further and further. Visitor from afar completed. You have received 1,800,000 experience. Han Xiao was so surprised her eyebrows almost raised uncontrollably. He hardly did anything at all, yet a space wonder that even the floating dragon could not resolve was gone just like that. There was definitely more to it. Han Xiao recalled that this mission had an unknown reward. He looked at the interface and realized that this reward turned out to be a new mission. You have triggered grade A hidden chain mission. Reboot. Mission introduction. Arosia is a unique life form. An enormous secret lies within her. Bring her alongside you, and one day, this secret will find you. Reminder. This is a chain mission. 
The next mission will only be unlocked once the previous one is completed. First round, teach Hiroshia. Help her to awaken her power, control the energy inside her body, and reach grade B. Reward, 5,200,000 experience, 1x random reward, plus 5 risk to favorability. Failure condition, Hiroshia dead. Chain mission type grade a hidden mission. Han Shao was shocked. This was usually something that only happened in large main storyline events. He had no information about the storyline in his previous life, which meant that no one had triggered it. This was an unknown event. He was more assured that Hiroshia was not ordinary. The mission name was Reboot. What did that mean? Also, who was this person called Rista? Apparently, I'm able to leave. Hiroshia was confused. What did you do to me? I have no idea, Han Shao said. Anyways, this is a good thing. Two days later, the superiors of the three large mercenary group arrived late at Floating Dragon. Jenny had a meeting with them. After she accepted their apologies, she finally released Goa, Porter, and Serlini's teams who had been locked up for many days. Right after these people got out, they surrounded Han Shao and expressed their gratitude and praise. The superiors of the three armies came to contact Han Shao with very friendly attitudes. Every mercenary could feel how their superiors took Han Shao seriously. Han Shao had showcased his abilities in this mission, and now that he had the backing of Floating Dragon, even the three large armies could not take him lightly. After they were free, they immediately prepared to leave Floating Dragon and go back to complete the mission, returning the silvers to the long-awaited employer. The reason Han Shao had waited till now was to travel together with them. On the day of their departure, Jenny, Will Sander, and Hire all came to send him off. The entire dock was stunned. People from everywhere sized Han Shao up with shock as he chatted with the three of them. Black Star Mercenary Group's position there was definitely high, given the fact that three of them were sending him off. The people who knew what had happened were even more surprised. It had only been a short half a month since Han Shao joined Floating Dragon, and he had been able to work his way up so high in such a short period. The three of them had come to send him off, which meant that they gave him a lot of face. Even the superiors of the three armies were only able to see Jenny. Her Excellency Dragon Emperor has allowed you to be a field team. You're now a field commander. Your power is Floating Dragon's external military power, so we hope you can grow stronger quickly, Jenny said in a very formal tone. She took out a specially made communicator and passed to Han Shao. This communicator can be used to contact Ames directly. However, as a reminder, if there's no absolute need, it's best not to disturb her. Able to contact Ames directly? This small thing is equal to a nuclear launcher. Han Shao stowed it carefully. Hire crawled over and said regretfully, You're quite a good mechanic. After you're gone, my workload will go up again. This gift is for you. Looking down, Hire's pedipalp passed an alloy box over. Han Zhao's eyes sparkled as he opened to look at it. Inside was a mini portable nuclear reactor. Stable nuclear reactors were something that could only be built with advanced energy knowledge. Energy knowledge was more difficult to obtain than compression technology, so he could not build it currently. Now that he had the reactor, he could add materials and use it to generate power, then use it at the power core of a mechanical suit. The output of the mechanical suit would reach new heights. Thank you. Han Shao nodded with joy on his face. After Hire walked away, Will Sander came closer and said, Hire is a little ugly. I felt he was hard to look at initially but got used to it after some time. His personality is quite good. Han Shao glanced at him and said, Ames probably feel this way about you. Will Sander's expression collapsed immediately. Don't change the topic. Did you bring a gift? No. Bye. Han Shao turned around and entered the ship. Come on. Why is the treatment difference this huge? Will Sander said resentfully on the dock. Who? The ship took off. Floating Dragon Island gradually became smaller in his eyes. He left with four more people than he entered with. Three Volga brothers sleeping on the side and Erosia, who was gazing out of the porthole. There were both pros and cons to joining the Dragon Emperor's faction. At the moment, the pros largely outweighed the cons. Not only did he receive new blueprints and materials, 
his talent evolved as well. The most priceless thing that he got during this mission should be the secret message bead. The higher the risk it brought, the higher the value it would bring. As Floating Dragon Island had already drifted to the Fawn Galaxy, less than one day after they left, they had already returned to the desolate planet that the employer was waiting for them on. As soon as they landed, the Silvers could not wait to return, filled with the joy of escaping death. After the employer calmed down, he paid the reward as promised. Finally, I have the last two knowledges of compression technology. Han Xiao breathed a sigh of relief. For these two knowledges, he had taken on an unfamiliar mission, and it had been exhausting. But at long last, it was time to reap the rewards. Chapter 392 The Sudden Arrival of a Fleet Chapter 392 The Sudden Arrival of a Fleet Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios What Sky Ring, Blades, and Purple Gold wanted was money, whereas the reward that Han Xiao requested was the two advanced knowledges of the compression technology. After the employer wired the money to the three armies, he personally approached Han Xiao and thanked him sincerely. The employer had initially paid more attention to the more renowned three large armies. The biggest reason that he hired Black Star was because the other mercenary groups changed their mind and none of them dared go to Floating Dragon Island. He did not expect this small mercenary group to be the key to the success of the mission. My friends wouldn't have returned safely if it wasn't for you. As he was speaking, he and all the rescued Silvers put down their sense of superiority as royalties and greeted Han Xiao with the sincerest way to express gratitude in the Silver culture. Goa and the others received the same treatment as well. They were a little ashamed, knowing that they had been imprisoned the entire time and it was Han Xiao who had turned the tables and completed the mission. Sadly, two of your friends died, Han Xiao said. Sigh, they're unlucky, but you're not to blame. The Shattered Star Ring is too dangerous, so we'll be leaving in just a while. I hope to hire you guys as guards and protect us on our way home. The three armies kindly rejected the offer. They were not willing to travel that far. The Sea of Star Spirits and Shattered Star Ring were two star fields away, so it would take too long to travel there and return even with the Stargate that could transport them across star fields. What about you? The employer looked at Han Xiao. Han Xiao shook his head and said, Sorry? It's too far. Not inside my business scope. Although the Sea of Star Spirits' resources was richer than Shattered Star Ring, it would waste a lot of time if they traveled there. It was all doing missions and earning money anyway, so he preferred not to travel for it. The Shattered Star Ring was rural and dangerous, but it had a lot of opportunities. That's a pity. If there is a chance in the future, I hope to invite you to travel to our home for a trip. The employer shook his head and gave him the reward. The mission complete notification appeared on the interface. He received more than 4 million experience at once plus the 5,000 anas. Including the amount that he had obtained through blackmailing, he had obtained more than 40,000 anas. The other players' rewards were not as rich as their captains, but it was quite good nonetheless, so they were all smiling with satisfaction. The communicator vibrated as it received the two knowledges. This was a special reward that only Han Xiao received. He checked and made sure that they were correct, then immediately chose to learn them. Learning. Successfully learned. You have learned. High-density material compression technology. Learning. Successfully learned. You have learned. Basic spatial technology. You have acquired ability. Super compression technology. You have acquired ability. Basic machinery construction. You have acquired ability, weight reduction structure. As always, he felt the familiar headache, which only went away after quite some time. Without hesitation, he spent 20 potential points and leveled up these two knowledges to the max level. Mechanics used different knowledge combinations depending on what style they were using, but these knowledges were a must-learn for all mechanics, and their level had to be maxed. The knowledges of the compression technology had a hidden connection. Only by possessing all of them would one learn the ability of compression technology, and this was the sign of the rise of mechanics in version 3.0. Super compression technology folded the machineries. As the ability became stronger, it could fold larger machineries into the size of a finger, and its effect was enhanced by machinery affinity, level, and intelligence. 
Currently, Han Zhao's limit was folding medium-sized machines, which was most of the machines that he could build at the moment, such as firearms, rangers, amphiptera, and others. As the size of his machines decreases after compression, their density increased. The mass of an object never changed, so its weight remained the same. However, weight reduction structure would solve this problem. It used many technologies to achieve an internal repulsive force, creating an independent hovering field, maintaining a very low weight in various gravitational environments. It was suitable for many materials. This was a basic technology to achieve large-scale compressions. To achieve compression, folding structures needed to be added into the machines, increasing its complexity by multiple times. For convenience, many machines would be split up during compression, then reconnected back to their original form when they were expanded, using basic machinery construction. This was an active ability that required energy to use, enabling extremely high-speed weapon assembly during combat. As long as there were parts, mechanics would never run out of ammo. When killing other players in his previous life, the usable parts of weapons and robots of mechanics that were shattered seconds ago would be immediately reconstructed into other weapons, largely increasing the continuous combat capability and annoyance of the mechanic class. If not for this ability that acted as a recycle mechanism, the cost of using the mechanical army style would have been many times higher. From Han Zhao's perspective, his mechanic class could only be counted as shaped now that he had gotten these three abilities. With super compression technology and basic machinery construction, my combat style will receive revolutionary upgrades. All my equipment needs to be modified into a compressed form. The number of weapons that I can equip will increase dozens of times. I won't need to fight head-on wearing my mechanical suit anymore. Finally, I can bully others with my machinery C tactic. Finally, the bitter days came to an end. This time, the superiors of Blades and Purple Gold approached. Black Star, we want to sign a partnership with you, inviting you to be our ally. These two superiors were the ones in charge of this area. Them sending an invitation personally showed their sincerity. The structure of large armies was similar. With Sky Ring Army as an example, the army commander was the leader and the only one that had the Five Rings level, followed by two Grade A deputy army commanders. There were two types of Four Rings members. One was Grade B plus high-class combat personnel, and another was high-class managers in charge of one business area. The superior from Sky Ring was one of them, someone in charge of numerous galaxies. Going further down the corporate table, one would find three rings officers like Goa, who usually brought a large team along but also could choose to work alone. They also had the authority to assemble a team temporarily. Han Xiao had become an ally of Sky Ring earliest, and now, Blades and Purple Gold also saw Black Star's potential. So they took the initiative to invite him. Large armies like these would only be the one initiating a partnership when they valued someone heavily. One more large army partner meant more opportunities for missions. Han Xiao agreed and signed the contract. The Blades and Purple Gold mercenaries immediately looked at him in a friendlier way. A partner was half as good as one of their own. Sky Ring, Blades, and Purple Gold were the most renowned armies in their star cluster. Becoming their partner was a very rare opportunity. Many normal mercenary groups would not even have the chance to request a partnership with just one of them, Yet Han Xiao was a partner to all three of them. After the rewards were given out, the Silvers boarded the spaceship and slowly took off. Fruobnovel.com The mercenaries were getting ready to leave as well. Goa found Han Xiao and asked, Where are you planning to go? Han Xiao pondered and said, Colton Star Cluster Star Zone 1, Godora Colonized Planet. Golden Palace. The players were surprised when they heard. Black Phantom, are we not going back to you, Barely Hub? A player asked. Not yet, we have other things to do. Also, call me Black Star. Many players were used to calling him by his previous moniker and found it hard to adjust. Han Xiao made an effort to make sure they called him by the correct name. Since they were already in space, his nickname would, of course, have to keep up with the times. What are you going to Golden Palace for? Haluz asked curiously. To find someone... Han Xiao did not explain it clearly. The others did not ask too much. They just had to follow their captain. He was not planning to return to Uberly Hub for the time being. The secret message bead was a hot potato, and he wanted to identify it first. 
Fortunately, it just so happened that he knew that a top-notch Goddard mage was secluded in Golden Palace, who was good at analyzing magic patterns and charged a fee to identify unknown magic items for customers. That person was like a functional item identifying NPC in the eyes of the players. Let us send you there then, Goa said. If it was someone else, Sky Ring would have sent them to a public planet at most and not sent them straight to the destination like Han Shao. Han Shao boarded Sky Ring's spaceship. He felt the spaceship vibrate and slowly take off. The ground shrunk in his eyes. He moved to the bow of the spaceship and looked out the window. The two spaceships of Blades and Purple Gold were taking off at the same time beside them. Very soon, they rose thousands of meters above and were about to leave the atmosphere of this planet, entering the dark space. The Silvers had taken off earlier than them, so they were already in space and were very far away. They could barely be seen. At this moment, an enormous and thick laser beam suddenly penetrated the Silver spaceship. The next moment, the Silver spaceship turned into a firework in space. Everyone saw the explosion, but no sound reached them through the vacuum. The Silvers who were just inviting them to their home not long ago were now all turned into ash, dying silently. There was no sound in outer space. Death seemed like a small matter. It was deadly silent outside, but it was loud inside the spaceship. What's going on? Who attacked the Silvers? The Sky Ring mercenaries were stunned. This time, space ripples appeared. A large and black Dark Star mothership deactivated its stealth mode. Many small battleships detached from the mothership and approached quickly like black locusts. Their targets were the three mercenary spaceships. All the people who might have seen the secret message bead were captured, and Darkstar had yet to find the bead. The mercenaries were the last target, the possibility of it being with them was the highest. However, Darkstar did not know whose hands it was in, so they decided to target all the mercenaries. After Ember's failure, Darkstar ordered Sirota's fleet to come to the planet where the Silver Employer was and capture all the mercenaries ruthlessly. Inside the secret message bead was something that Darkstar had spent a hundred million anas to buy, a key item for them to deal with Ghidorah's plans. There was no way they were going to give it up. Darkstar. Everyone was shocked when they recognized the renowned Darkstar mothership. We were never involved with Darkstar. Why are they attacking us? Furthermore, they are sending an entire fleet for just three spaceships. What sort of vendetta is this? Stop dazing about. Turn back. Han Xiao yelled, reminding the dumbfounded pilot. The spaceship made a sharp turn and dived toward the ground, and the other two spaceships followed. Om. The sharp turn made the spaceship tremble, and many people could not maintain balance and almost fell. An entire Dark Star fleet surrounded this planet. The difference in the number of spaceships and combat power was too huge, so the mercenaries had no chance to break through the siege. Once they entered space without any obstructions, they would be destroyed by focus fire in no time. They could not escape the siege, as they would be stopped before they could enter the jumping state, which meant they had nowhere to run. The only way out was to call for backup and stall for time inside the atmosphere. The chance of survival was low, but it was better than certain death. Han Xiao was frowning. Darkstar's persistence and decisiveness were beyond his expectations. They were not going to give up on even the slightest possibility, which proved what he thought earlier. The more value the secret message bead had, the higher the risk was. What a coincidence, the secret message bead is really in my hands. They don't even know it. This was not even a battle. It was like a hunter chasing after prey. The small spaceships of the mercenaries were absolutely no match for the Darkstar fleet. The only good news was that Darkstar did not fire immediately. It seemed like they wanted to capture them alive. This made the mercenaries feel a little more at ease, with there at least being a chance to negotiate. This is the most dangerous situation I have ever met. Han Xiao felt his heart was beating very fast. Not only was he not panicking, but he was excited. Chance of getting out unharmed is less than 10%. Now, this is interesting. He licked his lips, and excitement flashed in his eyes. Those that were faced with imminent death either became terrified of death or fearless. He happened to be the latter. After experiencing countless dangers and even dying once, he had surpassed fear long ago. Chapter 393 Power of the Experienced Chapter 393 
Power of the Experienced. Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios. During the process of the spaceship diving down, the pilot sent out a distress signal to the area channel, and invisible waves spread out in space. The area channel was like the public channel for players. All the spaceships passing by the area were able to receive it. This is Fawn Galaxy, the territory of Holy Stone Civilization and Black Raven Civilization. Friction occurs very often due to territory boundaries. These two large civilizations always have people stationed nearby, and they have set up very strong signal receivers that are sensitive to all sorts of waves. The Fawn Galaxy radiation is always operating at high output, which means that this area is like a bright spot in both of their detectors. If Darkstar activated a signal disruptor, there would be an obvious area with shade out of nowhere. Holy Stone Civilization and Black Raven Civilization would think it's each other's forces. They would definitely send people over, Goa explained. Therefore, I'm 50% sure that Darkstar is not disrupting the signal. Buzz. Communication requests from Porter and Serlini appeared on the screen, discussing their strategies anxiously. They had sent out a distress signal as well, but Serlini was very pessimistic. Even if someone receives our signal, the problem is, who dares to come? Darkstar is the one attacking us after all. Holy Stone and Black Raven might come to just watch and guard against Darkstar in case they have other motives, or they might not be willing to waste their military power to help us, a group of irrelevant mercenaries. Unlike Godora, who have so much hatred toward Darkstar, Holy Stone and Black Raven might not want to mess with Darkstar. The three of them looked at their superiors, and the superiors nodded firmly. We have already contacted the commander. He will come to save us. He's sending emergency dispatch orders to the nearby teams. We fear Darkstar, but we definitely will not let them do whatever they want, and we will certainly not give up on our own people. The commander is currently assembling a fleet and sending out messages to all partners. We have to protect ourselves. Stall for time. There will definitely be someone here to save us. All the mercenaries were instantly motivated, and a sense of honor rose in their hearts as firmness and hope appeared on their faces. Large armies really are different. They're very united. Han Xiao was envious. There were definitely some things that large armies did right after being created for so many years. Although they were all mercenaries that valued rewards, given that they could unite strong forces from everywhere showed that they knew how to build a sense of belonging. Although many members knew about this, they could not deny that they enjoyed it. After all, being in an organization that did not give up on its members was one thing that bonded them together in this cold universe. Darkstar was known to be fearsome, but Skyring, Blades, and Purple Gold were not some organizations that they could easily mess with. Other than their own forces, they also had a very complicated network in the mercenary industry. They had many partners, and they were all very strong individuals or organizations. It was not simply three large armies that Darkstar messed with, it was half of the entire mercenary industry throughout the three nearest star clusters. In other words, Darkstar was used to being unbridled, but this time they stabbed the hornet's nest. However, a distant water source could not put out a nearby fire immediately. Han Xiao took out the unidirectional communicator that Jenny had given him. He calmed his mind and sent the request. The mercenaries called for backup, and he also requested help from his cheap boss. He was not putting all his hope on the three armies. Didn't expect to use it this soon. Ding. Ames appeared on the screen. Han Xiao saw the environment Ames was in. A palace filled with a sense of magic, built with obsidian, white crystal, mithril, fine gold, jade, and precious stones, like a piece of jewelry enlarged thousands of times. Mysterious magic patterns hovered in the air, colorful and bright. Many translucent magic dragons swam happily in the air. Ames was sitting in front of a small hovering table, and on it were all sorts of unique and rare foods. Sitting opposite her was a kid in a red and white magic cape. He looked about six to seven years old, with sharp ears, white and tender skin, and a cute round face. The cape on him was like a blanket. It did not fit at all. The cape was long, but the kid was short, so it was almost burying him. Han Zhao's mouth twitched. This little kid was another beyond grade A being of the Shattered Star Ring, a mage whose race was a long-lived species that looked like humans on the outside, 
but his real age was hundreds or maybe even a thousand years old. Also, he was a fighting opponent of Ames. More accurately, Ames was there as a guest. The four beyond grade A beings in the Shattered Star Ring knew each other. Fighting was just to kill time, and once they were tired from fighting, they would sit down to rest and have a meal together in a very peaceful manner. Han Shao just pitted that small planet. Ames' eyebrow raised a little. It's you, my new subordinate. Did you forget my name? Ames swiped the communicator like she was looking for something. One second later, she said with a very natural tone, Black Star, what is the reason for you contacting me? Have you found the whereabouts of my teacher? She emphasized Han Zhao's name like she was trying to say that she did not forget. Han Xiao shook his head and said, The aircraft I'm currently in is attacked by Dark Star. The situation is dire. So I'm here to ask you for help. Why did Dark Star attack you? Ames asked curiously. Han Xiao coughed. A few days ago, Dark Star caused trouble on Floating Dragon while you were not there. It seems like they were up to something. Coincidentally, I happened to disrupt their plan. This attack should be an act of revenge. Ames tilted her head. She recalled Jenny's report. Now that Darkstar was mentioned, she seemed to have some kind of beef with Darkstar, and she had even been planning to find trouble with them earlier. All right, wait there. I'll go when I'm free, Ames said with a casual tone, then hung up the communication. Han Xiao was speechless. Ames' attitude was carefree, so he had no way to force her to come immediately. He was not strong enough so he could only seek help from someone stronger. You have triggered an urgent mission. Escape. Mission introduction. Start running. Mission requirement. Escape Darkstar's pursuit and stall till backup arrives. Reward. Basic reward 800,000 experience. The final reward depends on mission rating. The basic reward is given when achieving the lowest rating, D. After lasting for two days, the mission rating will reach D. The rating will increase by one level every 12 hours thereafter. Failure condition. Captured by Darkstar. Freewebnov.com. Han Xiao looked around at the players and realized that their faces changed a little. They had probably triggered the mission as well. This time, the reward for the players was exactly the same as Han Xiao, so all the players were shocked. 800,000 experience. Han Xiao was long used to it. It was not much for him. However, to the players, this was the highest reward that they had ever seen in a mission. Shock, joy, surprise. Various expressions appeared on the players' faces. Han Xiao analyzed the information that he read between the lines of the mission. The lowest rating requires me to last for two days. This should mean the earliest backup will only arrive after two days. Which means that we need to fight alone for two days. He was instantly troubled. They might not even last two hours, let alone two days. This time, the aircraft finally returned to the ground and flew at a low altitude. This desolated planet was almost completely empty. It had no forests and no signs of life, and it was filled with stones and mountains. The only good thing about it was that its terrain was vicious enough. The three aircrafts took the same approach. Stall for as much time as possible by using the obstacles in the terrain. Boom, boom, boom. Hundreds of mini Dark Star hovering ships were in pursuit, firing green-colored low-energy laser cannons from above, chasing after three spaceships, and creating clusters of dust on the ground. The sound of explosions was non-stop, and the spaceship shields were flashing from the impact. Dark Star wanted to capture them alive. They did not want to destroy the spaceships as it would destroy the secret message bead that might be in the hands of one of them. So, they sent out mini hovering ships that were less than 10 meters long. The mini laser cannons had very low power too, good for damaging yet not destroying. Using speed and mobility, they would force the mercenaries to give up their spaceships. Split up! The three spaceships dashed past a black and gray colored menacing mountain then suddenly split up and escaped in three different directions. Green lasers hit the mountain. With a loud bang, its peak broke and rolled down its hill, stirring up a cloud of thick dust. The hovering ships split into three groups as well, chasing after the spaceships. The Sky Ring spaceship that Han Xiao was on was being chased by about a hundred hovering ships. However, unluckily, 
The direction that they turned toward was a plain land without any obstacles. This is bad. Their faces changed. The pilot was covered in sweat, trying his best to control the spaceship and dodge the attacks. The dust created by the green lights was like a fountain. The spaceship was able to dodge some lasers, but it was getting hit more often than when the three spaceships were together. The shield was flashing rapidly. Warning! Warning! 67% energy left in shield. Energy level entered the yellow warning zone. Please refill in time. Energy core close to overload. Please cool down in time. A string of warnings was announced, like a hammer hitting their hearts. The pilot's face was pale. Suddenly, they saw Han Xiao walk out of the crowd. He walked to the pilot's side, pressed on his shoulder, and said in a confident tone, Stand up. Give me the seat. The face of all the mercenaries in the spaceship changed. Changing pilot during the fight, are you sure? Goa stared at Han Xiao and said, This concerns the life or death of everyone here. Do you know what you're doing? Han Xiao nodded and said, If he continues piloting, the chance of crashing is 99%. If I do, it's only 30%. You! The pilot was outraged. Goa stared at Han Xiao for a full two seconds, then nodded and said, Okay, you do it. The Sky Ring mercenaries were shocked. Even though they knew Han Zhao's capabilities, piloting a spaceship was completely different from fighting. In such urgent situations, no one would be willing to entrust their fate to someone whose pilot skill was unknown. If we carry on this way, in less than an hour our ship would crash. Let him try, Goa explained. Although the pilot knew that this was a fact, he was unwilling to let someone else control his fate. After the expression on his face changed several times, he finally gave the position to Han Xiao. Han Xiao took over the pilot position immediately. This time, Goa walked to him and said in a very serious tone, Black Star, our lives are in your hands. You must, must, be careful about this. At this moment, the mercenaries could only place their hopes on Han Xiao. Quite a number of mercenaries actually knew how to pilot a spaceship, but no one was confident that they could do it better than the previous pilot, nor did they have the guts to take on this responsibility, worrying that their mistake might kill everyone. This was a very large amount of pressure, and no one dared do it. Now that Han Xiao had stepped forward at this crucial moment, they could only hope that he was dependable. Black Star, you know how to pilot spaceships, Haluz said with surprise. I know many things. Do you know me very well? Han Xiao adjusted the control panels casually and easily. Piloting a spaceship is nothing. I used to pilot mechanical suits, like the difference between a passenger aircraft pilot and a fighter plane pilot. One requires safety and stability, and the other requires complexity. The difficulty of piloting a mechanical suit was much higher than a fighter plane. Han Xiao was someone who had horned his pilot skills killing other players in the galactic battlefields. Even in the entire universe, he was a top-notch ace pilot. They suddenly heard an announcement from the system. Adjustment complete. Shield output decreased to 20%. Have you lost your mind? The pilot yelled uncontrollably. Everyone was shocked. Han Xiao weakened the shield as soon as he took over. The spaceship's defensive capability was largely decreased. If they got hit by attacks like earlier, the body of the spaceship would be damaged. Was that reminder all for nothing? Goa was filled with regret. Just as he was about to yell, another announcement sounded from the system. All energy is being directed into the engine. Complete. Han Xiao turned his head back a little and gave the people behind him a reminder. Hold tight. The next moment, the sudden explosive recoil tore straight through the internal gravitational stabilization of the spaceship. Everyone staggered and fell down in unison. The yelling that was just about to come out of Goa's mouth fell right back down his throat. Chapter 394 Speed and Motion Sickness Chapter 394 Speed and Motion Sickness Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios On a desolate, unpopulated planet, a chase was underway on its gray planes. Almost a hundred hovering ships were chasing after the Sky Ring spaceship. The Sky Ring spaceship's exhaust flames expanded violently in an instant. The sudden increase of speed was like a tornado that stirred up countless dust from the floor. Hum! Dashing at a low altitude, 
the head of the boat was covered in dust, like a high-speed triangular speedboat dashing across the ocean. Boom! The hovering ships hastily increased their speed as well, but they could barely keep up with the Sky Ring spaceship. Many hovering ships' accuracy decreased noticeably because of the angles, and their attacks missed much more often. The spaceship was trembling like it would crash at any moment, but everyone felt the visible change. Although it felt more dangerous, the number of times that the spaceship got hit decreased drastically. The high mobility largely enhanced the ship's ability to dodge. The weakened shield was just strong enough to endure these attacks. Han Zhao's piloting skills were horrifying. By increasing the power of the engine, the difficulty in piloting would increase as well. Yet, as compared to the previous pilot, everyone could directly feel the difference when Han Xiao took over. It was like the spaceship became alive. It felt like the spaceship became an extension of Han Zhao's body. The gravity in the spaceship was finally calibrated. The people stood up one after another, and their doubts all disappeared. They were overjoyed by Black Star, who took on such crucial responsibility in the current dire situation. Anything that could better the situation was a pleasant surprise. They never expected Black Star to have this up his sleeves. Fantastic! Goa's tone changed instantly. A glimpse of a smile appeared on her expressionless face. At this pace, the damage dealt by the hovering ships will be minimal. You did very well. What? Han Xiao was confused. This is just basic controlling. I have not done anything yet. The higher the speed, the better his controls. He was far from his limit at the current speed. Sadly, if he increases the speed further, the shield would be too thin. He was worried that he might be rusty after not piloting a battleship for so long. Maintaining the current shield thickness was a safer choice for him. However, in the mercenary's eyes, the shield's thickness was already horrifyingly thin. Yet Black Star said that this was just his basic controls? What was he going to do then? Freebnovel.cm A bad feeling arose in everyone's heart. Han Xiao stretched his wrist and said, Hold on tight. With the lesson of falling right on the floor earlier, no one ignored his reminder this time. They held on to anything that they could as soon as possible. Their faces were filled with nervousness. Hum. In an instant, the Sky Ring spaceship started to drift, like a raging horse trying to get rid of the rider on its back. All kinds of tricks were interjoined smoothly, lateral rollover, roller coaster, Z-maneuver, and so on. The spaceship had still been flying in a straight line just one second ago, and now it was completely random. The hovering ship fleet was already having a hard time following, and now that Han Xiao was moving this way, their formation became broken immediately. Many hovering ships blocked the shooting range of the fleet behind them. Their laser fire became sparser, and the threat level of the attack decreased largely again. Everyone felt like they were in a can that was being shaken violently. For the first time, they felt inertia that pulled them in all directions. Their stomach acid was rushing up, their brain juice was vibrating, and their faces were pale white. Their vision started to blur, and the surrounding environment and people started to have mirror images. After piloting spaceships for so many years, the pilot felt like he was back to when he first started learning. The dizziness was like an old friend that he had not met for a long time. He could almost see his pilot teacher waving at him with a smile on his face. Han Xiao could still divert his attention and said, That pilot, come and control the weapon. If we keep running and don't fire back at all, it will be the end of us sooner or later. Fire when you see a chance. The pilot hastily followed the order and sat in the weapon operating seat. Compared to Black Star, his piloting skills became completely ordinary. The resentfulness before completely disappeared. He was now only scared that he might burden Han Xiao. On my count, five, four, three, Han Xiao stared at the screen, then did one more drift that messed up the formation of the hovering ships, creating a split-second opportunity to fly straight up. Who? The trembling came once again. Even if the people expected it, their legs still softened and they almost fell. The spaceship flew in a U-shape, flying from close to the ground right to above the hovering ship fleet, dashing back in the opposite direction. Fire! The pilot fired immediately. The cannon shot out from the Sky Ring spaceship. There was no need to aim. It was an attack fired at the dense part of the formation. Boom, boom, boom. 
shield lit up on a few leading hovering ships as they were forced to stop for a moment. The fleet behind bumped into them straight away, causing chain reactions like dominoes. The entire fleet in front became a mess, rolling across the sky. The hovering ships were not that fragile, so they did not crash. Han Xiao only stayed in this position for less than three seconds. Before the fleet could adjust, he made a sharp turn and escaped to the side. This movement was as smooth as silk. On the other hand, the chasing fleet took a few seconds to adjust before catching up. Although no battleship crashed, Han Xiao largely increased the distance between them. Not bad. Han Xiao smiled and gave the pilot a thumbs up. The pilot smiled brightly back at him as vomit flew down right between his teeth. The difficulty of these few movements was very high, yet no one in the ship showed any sign of being shocked. They did not even have the strength to be surprised. Their legs were shaking, and their heads were spinning. These movements had successfully given all of his teammates a debuff. Goa opened her mouth, forcing herself to try to give a few words of compliment, but instead covered her mouth in an instant. The muscles in her neck could be seen clearly to have moved up and down. Only then did she dare put her hand down. Arosia shook left and right, then sat down on the floor, unable to stand up. She said with confusion, What's happening to me? Her lose was breathing heavily, and he almost suffocated like a fish out of water. The mercenaries around were all trembling. Luckily, her lose body was strong enough so he could still hang on. He turned around and was shocked to see that the players were very calm. Are you people feeling fine? The players smiled cheekily. As short as three seconds after Han Xiao took over the spaceship, they realized the danger and immediately decreased their physical senses to 5%. Therefore, although they had the heavily dizzy status on their character, so they were still feeling very refreshed. I thought we just entered a time and space tunnel. This piloting skill is absolutely horrifying. I have seen fast and furious. This is fast and dizzy. The players still had the strength to discuss what was happening. With no time to be bothered about everyone's reactions, Han Xiao started to think of the plan. Just piloting the spaceship will not last us two days. The Dark Star fleet will not make no changes. When they realize that the hovering ship fleet cannot deal with us, they will definitely use more aggressive methods. I can only play with the hovering ship fleet for two hours at most. After that, the danger level is going to rise step by step. He planned ahead. After all, stalling for two days was not an easy task at all. The others did not know Darkstar's motive. Only Han Xiao did. Darkstar had come for the secret message bead. Therefore, Darkstar would not be willing to miss out on even one person. A few plans flashed in his head before Han Xiao said, it's not going to work out like this. We can't stay on the surface. I have a plan. As soon as he said this, the expression on everyone's face became as tragic as a prisoner on their way to the execution ground. In it, anything you say, we trust you, Goa said. Despite it clearly being an encouragement, there was no sound of joy in it at all. Instead, her voice was trembling a little. In the command hall of the Dark Star mothership, the image feedback from the hovering ships was shown on the screen. The captain, Sirota, was watching it with hands behind his back. Ten minutes passed after the battle started. The spaceships of Blades and Purple Gold were clearly struggling. Only Han Xiao was doing slightly better. This attracted Sirota's attention right away. He pointed at the screen and asked, Which mercenary group does this spaceship belong to? The Sky Ring Army. Sirota nodded and said, they have quite a good pilot. Looks like we need to spend more time. By the way, that Black Star is apparently on the Sky Ring ship as well. Isn't he? The last question was directed toward the corner of the hall. In the corner, Ember was standing against the wall with a cold and indifferent face. When he heard Han Zhao's name, his eyes swayed slightly. He had a very strong impression of Han Xiao since his last defeat. Oom. Mm. At this time, the alarm suddenly sounded. Captain, space ripple detected. There are fleets jumping toward this direction. Sirota was not surprised at all. He brought up the detection image, showing that a large battleship fleet was jumping toward this direction from far away at both sides of the mothership. Both of them were in a guard formation. Darkstar was in the middle, 
The two fleets were the Border Guards Army of Holy Stone Civilization and Black Raven Civilization. Their style of the battleships was very different. One side was semicircle shaped and thick, and the other was streamlined and thin. The metal fortresses were very intimidating. As soon as the Dark Star mothership showed up, it was noticed by the Border Guards Army. Holy Stone and Black Star immediately sent out a fleet to make a field investigation. They did not act immediately once they saw Dark Star. Instead, they stayed still and watched from afar. Is there a need to do anything? An assistant asked. Send out a message. Tell them we are just passing by to settle our business, and we will be leaving very soon. They will not attack us, Sirota said calmly. He was not concerned at all like everything was under his control. Chapter 395 The Battle of Pursuit 1. Chapter 395 The Battle of Pursuit 1. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios The ownership of this area has always been blurry. If Dark Star showed up in the official territory of these two civilizations, they would definitely be warned and evicted. However, due to the sensitivity of this area, the two fleets did not make a move. In the Holy Stone Border Guards Army, command ship of the Third Formation, Streamlight, the atmosphere was filled with nervousness. Dark Star's fearsome name was well known, and they had quite the tension with Black Raven. The captain of the Third Formation, Shivet, said with a very serious face, All units on level one alert, hold the position. At this time, Streamlight received a message from the Dark Star mothership. Sirota expressed their motive, emphasizing the fact that they meant no offense to Holy Stone and Black Raven. They were just carrying out a pursuit, of which the targets were some mercenaries. Once the mission was completed, they would leave immediately. Shivet's tightened face relaxed a little, and without thinking, he said, Tell them that it's possible for Holy Stone to not interfere with Dark Star's operation, but during this period, no suspicious action will be allowed. We will be monitoring from here, and we hope they leave as soon as possible. Shivet did not want a war to break out. There were many reasons. The first would of course be, they did not want to mess with Dark Star. The entire Shattered Star Ring knew the ugly history between Dark Star and God Aura. No one wanted to be part of it. The most horrifying characteristic of Dark Star was that they were very stealthy. If they lost the battle, they would still be able to run away, and the revenge afterward would make you suffer a large loss. Secondly, if they fire, it might very likely cause Black Raven to misunderstand, which would then turn into a scrimmage, leading to a territory conflict. If he was determined guilty of deliberately starting a war in the court-martial, the punishment for that was very heavy. Due to the territorial conflicts, there had always been some tension between these two civilizations. The Holy Stone civilization was an aristocracy civilization, ruled by a royal family. Its political construction was very complicated, and its efficiency in making decisions was mediocre. They did not like wars, and they were good at using diplomatic measures. Be it resources, connections, or power, Holy Stone civilization was a little higher than Black Raven civilization. However, as Black Raven civilization had limited resources in their early days, their developing process was very tough, which made them have very strong minds and become collectivists. Their efficiency in executing matters was very high. Even though their nation was not as strong as Holy Stone, Holy Stone could not find a way to get rid of them. If they started a large-scale war, both sides would definitely suffer a huge loss. Therefore, both sides controlled the scale of their conflicts. Hence, Dark Star was not the only thing Shivet feared. He was more afraid to cause a misunderstanding. The most important reason that made Shivet decide to sit on the sidelines was that Dark Star's target was just a bunch of mercenaries. They were just passers-by that did not matter at all. Unless it was the people from their own civilization, these two armies would not make a huge move for it. Seeing that Black Raven's army also held their position, Shivet knew that the captain of Black Raven had made the same decision. Sit on the sidelines and monitor. After all, to two civilizations, the life and death of these mercenaries were not their concern. Like a droplet of water in the sea, it did not matter. Therefore, the fleets that rushed there were watching silently. Shivet waved his hands and told his subordinate to check the escaping target on the planet. I see they're members of the three large mercenary armies. Their background is rather impressive. Sadly, they met Dark Star, 
After reading the report, Shivet was a little bit surprised. He then shook his head and said, The sooner they're caught, the better. Then Darkstar can leave earlier. From the perspective of his own benefits, he would prefer the mercenaries stop resisting. The same scene also played out in Black Raven Civilization's command ship. On the other side, the Darkstar mothership received the replies. Sirota's face remained the same as if it was exactly as he expected. He knew both sides would not attack. On another area of the planet, the Blade spaceship was being chased by many hovering ships. They were struggling, its shield already had countless holes, and its recovery speed could not match up to the speed of it being destroyed. The rapid system alarms had the Blade's mercenaries on edge. Faster, even faster, Porter mumbled with sweat all over his face. When the situation was not looking good, he pushed away the original pilot to control the spaceship himself. Yet, the situation did not become better. Suddenly, a laser exploded on the shield. Bang! The shield blinked twice and disappeared. It had reached its limit. Everyone in the ship was stunned. Porter's face changed drastically. Without a shield, the spaceship itself would not have any protection anymore. If they were fired on once again, the spaceship would definitely crash. Boom! Just as the hovering ship fleet was going to fire the next downpour of laser rain, a chain of cannons hit the formation and caused a series of explosions. This hovering ship did not have the time to react to it fully, and they hastily dodged. The accuracy of the attacks all missed the blade spaceship by centimeters. Far away, the Sky Ring spaceship drove there at a high speed. Behind him was the pursuing fleet. It was Han Shao who had returned after a detour and saved his teammates hastily. The pursuing fleet did not give him any pressure at all, and they were going around and around chasing after him. Therefore, Han Shao tried to help his teammates as much as he could. The existence of teammates could divert the enemy's firepower. The longer the teammates lasted, the less pressure he would face. Han Shao stopped the enemy for one moment before turning around and escaping immediately. The shield of the blade spaceship took the opportunity to recover. Porter almost collapsed, and his face was filled with happiness. That was close. This time, Han Shao sent a message to the other two ships. Don't run around randomly. You guys can't deal with them yourselves. I've sent you the route. Even if you split up, don't stay too far from me. I'll provide support from time to time. Why did you become the pilot? Porter asked with surprise. We all feel safer with him being the pilot. Goa's voice came from the side. Porter looked over, only to see all the mercenaries in the Sky Ring spaceship were encased in hard ice from the waist down and firmly fixed onto the ground like ice sculptures. It was Goa that used her spell to help everyone to balance. Porter was shocked. You don't look like you feel safe at all. Porter's eyelids twitched. Anyway, Han Zhao's suggestion was approved. Blades and Purple Gold's teams agreed to follow Han Zhao's plan. They quickly changed their route and maintained communication between them. As soon as they got into a dire situation, Han Zhao would provide backup. After helping them out in dire situations time after time, the members of the other ships also realized how good Han Zhao's piloting skills were. They were immediately convinced. Han Zhao stabilized the situation temporarily. Three ships brought hundreds of hovering ships and ran around the planets. Half an hour passed, and the hovering ship fleet had yet to capture them. They were in a stalemate. On the Dark Star mothership, Sirota was getting impatient. More than 300 hovering ships against just three ships. Why have we yet to capture them? The initial plan was to be done with the battle within ten minutes, then retreat quickly after. Sirota was very unsatisfied with the current situation. He stared at the Sky Ring spaceship on his screen with unhappiness in his eyes. It's all because the pilot of this ship is too good. That's why they're able to stall this much time. Send out medium fighter ships. Surround this area and cut off their escape route. As he gave the order, more fighter ships launched from the Dark Star mothership and flew toward the planet. Inside the faraway streamlight, Shivet saw this and was a little surprised. Facing Dark Star's pursuit and being trapped on the planet, not only were these three small spaceships stall for half an hour, they even forced Darkstar to send in more support. But if this continues, it will drag on even longer. 
Through the porthole, the people in the Sky Ring spaceship saw more fighter ships coming toward the surface from the Dark Star mothership. SH asterisk T. Dark Star sent reinforcements. The ex pilot shouted. We knew they would sooner or later. Don't sound so surprised. Han Shao glanced outside. He had expected this since long ago. It's only half an hour, and they have already sent reinforcements. Dark Star changed their tactic quicker than I expected. In gaming terms, this means that the pace of this mission's difficulty change is very fast. How am I going to stall for two days like this? Han Shao thought. Although it looked like they were safe at the moment, they were still dancing on blades. When Dark Star lost their patience completely, they would not care about the resource expenses. They might surround them, and by then, there would be nowhere to escape. After all, piloting skills had a limit. He was only flying a small spaceship, not a galactic-level mechanical suit. After some contemplation, Han Shao decided to carry out the next part of the plan. At this time, all three ships received the same message. This is Holy Stone Border Guard's Army 3rd Formation. We have received your rescue signal and have arrived near the planet. Please gather at the coordinates we gave you. We will be there to receive you and provide protection. Together with this message were the coordinates, which were not far from where they were. This message was like cardiotonic, instantly giving everyone energy. Holy Stone is willing to help. We're saved. All the mercenaries in the three ships were overjoyed. Han Shao frowned and pondered, then said something that immediately cooled everyone down. I think this is quite strange. Chapter 396 The Battle of Pursuit 2 Chapter 396 The Battle of Pursuit 2 Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios If the Holy Stone Border Guard's army wants to receive us, they would definitely be in conflict with Darkstar, but take a look up there. The Darkstar mothership is still floating there and not sending out any other ships. Furthermore, this is a very sensitive border area, so it's impossible for Holy Stone and Black Raven to take very long to come. This means that they've made a certain deal with Darkstar. This is the edge of their border, so the official authority here is blurry to begin with. They did not provide any help even when the Silvers were kidnapped. Now they suddenly want to help us? It doesn't feel trustworthy. Han Shao paused and said, But of course, there's a chance that Holy Stone did not compromise with Darkstar and really wants to protect us. However, this is very unlikely. He did not mention the most important reason. The mission requirements stated that they had to last two days for just the lowest rating, but only half an hour had passed. The reinforcements could not have arrived so soon. His intuition told him that there was a problem with Holy Stone's message. Many people started to rethink, but they still hoped that they had gotten lucky. This time, there was a disagreement. Serlini said in a low voice, I choose to believe this message. Holy Stone has no need to lie to us, and this might be our only chance. I've decided to go to the pickup location. What about you? I'm not going. Han Shao shook his head without hesitation and then looked over to Goa. Goa hesitated for a while, then nodded and agreed with Han Zhao's decision. Although there were some mercenaries in the ship that had other thoughts, seeing that Goa and Han Shao had both decided, they could only hold their thoughts in. Porter hesitated for a moment, then rejected it as well, choosing to listen to Han Zhao's advice. Serlini frowned and said, Best of luck to you guys then. The purple gold spaceship deviated from the route and headed toward the pickup location, disappearing from sight shortly. Han Shao exhaled and said with a deep voice, Dark Star's reinforcements will arrive very soon, and our activity area will become smaller and smaller. If we continue to stay on the surface, the situation will only become worse. We have to go underground. The scanner has already recorded all the terrain we have passed by, and there's quite a number of canyons and gaps in the terrain. The space below the ground on this planet is very huge. Plus, it has a complicated environment and many obstacles. Limited moving space will give us some trouble, but it will give those chasing us trouble too. Furthermore, the ground and block the direct detection from their mothership, providing us another layer of protection. He had a rough plan of what to do next. The situation was not pleasant. The reinforcement was just Darkstar's first step. They would soon be limiting their movement areas, surrounding them, bombarding the area, and so on forcing them to change the route. 
Han Xiao pondered and pondered and eventually, he realized that in order for them to last two days, there was only one workable way, spread out. Dark Star's target was all the mercenaries, and two spaceships were only two targets. However, if they spread out in an undetectable environment, every mercenary would be a target. Although there would definitely be unlucky ones that might be sacrificed, it would also make Dark Star spend more time searching. After all, wishing to save everyone was not realistic. Let's do as you say. Goa trusted Han Xiao a lot. Han Xiao changed the direction of the spaceship and looked forward. Very soon, a very long gap in Earth appeared on the horizon. Like the gray-colored Earth opening its mouth, black as an abyss. From far away, it looked like just a small gap, and only when they got closer did they realize that it was tens of meters wide. Who? The Sky Ring spaceship dived straight into the gap, and darkness filled their vision. The detector sketched out the terrain in the darkness. About two to three hundred meters down, numerous caves appeared on both sides. Han Xiao chose a cave and flew in. Inside was an underground space, leading to somewhere far away. There was a very large space under the ground of this planet. It had complex tunnels and was filled with storage stones. It had been undisturbed for countless years, and now its first guest had arrived. The Blade spaceship did the same, and the hovering ship fleet followed behind. Unavoidably, their speed decreased. Flying in this kind of environment required a very high reaction speed, plus space was limited, so the formation of the hovering ships had to turn into a long snake shape. Due to space restraints, 90% of the fighter ships were blocked by their teammates in front and unable to fire. The attack faced by the Blades and Sky Ring spaceships significantly lessened. The two ships flew underground just in time, escaping from Darkstar's plan to surround them on the surface. The Purple Gold spaceship was still on the surface, and it arrived at the pickup location. Serlini sent a communication request to the channel that they had received the message from. Holy Stone Third Formation, please come in. I have arrived at the pickup location. Where are the receiving units? He repeated that again and again, but Holy Stone did not reply and kept silent. His expression gradually changed, and he started to sweat all over. The purple gold spaceship did not dare stop. It circled around the pickup location like a headless fly. When the Dark Star reinforcements came from all directions, Serlini's face turned pale. Only then did he realize that there was no one there to pick them up. Black Star was right. He had lost the gamble. Boom, boom, boom. Bullets rained down. Not long after, the purple gold spaceship crashed onto the ground covered in smoke. The gate opened, and the mercenaries inside sprinted out in all directions. However, the Dark Star warriors landed from the fighter ships hovering in the sky and surrounded them. There was nowhere to run. The struggle of Serlini and the others did not make any impact, so they were captured easily and escorted onto the spaceship to be sent to the mothership. Everyone in the two ships that were descending underground saw what happened to Purple Gold. Seeing that their friends that had once fought alongside them were in such a dire situation, everyone was grieving. If not for Han Xiao standing his ground, they would have ended up the same way. The mercenaries looked at Han Xiao with even more trust in their eyes. I did tell them, Han Xiao sighed. Serlini had been willing to take the gamble, and there was nothing Han Xiao could do about it. He could not have taken over the control of Purple Gold Spaceship. However, from a purely pros and cons perspective, this would give them more time. With at least some result, Dark Star would be a little less in a hurry. Inside Streamlight, the scene of Purple Gold spaceship crashing was being played on the screen. Shivet shook his head and said, Too bad only one ship was captured. He was indeed the one that gave the order to send that message. It was to mislead the mercenaries and make it easier for Dark Star to capture them, but it was not because he wanted to help Dark Star. In his eyes, these mercenaries would definitely not be able to escape, and them getting captured was just a matter of time. He only sped up this process. The earlier the mercenaries got captured, the sooner Dark Star would leave. The armies of Holy Stone and Black Raven were holding their position, and these mercenaries' meaningless struggle was wasting their time, leaving these two civilizations with no choice but to stay there and monitor the situation. This increased their workload and brought along risks. Shivet just wanted Dark Star to go away as soon as possible. 
giving out that order was purely for his own benefit. Furthermore, this could not be considered as interfering, so it was not really counted as helping Darkstar. He had just sent a message, it was not a big deal. Regarding what plan Darkstar had, he simply did not care. Darkstar had no business with them. No matter what they were up to, Godora would be the only one suffering from it. Holy Stone had no obligation to help Godora get rid of their enemies, and Shivet did not want to stir up a mess. Sadly, not all the mercenaries were tricked. Commander, the target has gone underground. We're unable to see a direct image. Continue to hold your position. Shivet shook his head. They would not be able to see what was going on once these mercenaries enter underground. All they could do was wait. Inside the dark underground, beams of light flashed past. These were all spaceships flying at a high speed. Boom! Lasers hit the stone walls and caused a partial rockfall. Quite a number of stones landed on Sky Ring spaceship's shield before being shattered by the spaceships dashing through. The pursuit underground lasted for a few hours. As space was limited, larger sized fighter ships could not enter. Dark Star could only use the hovering ships to hunt. The underground space was filled with twists and turns, and it was pitch black. The blurry images from the detector were the only thing that they could depend on to dodge the obstacles. Han Xiao was highly focused and did not bump into anything, but the hovering ships behind him were gradually making more and more mistakes. From time to time, fighter ships crashed into the wall, the pillars, and other things. The contrast was very obvious. The pursuing spaceships gradually lost sight of Han Zhao's backlight. The Blade's spaceship, on the other hand, was not as lucky. They were still being chased tightly. Porter's skill was hard to look at, and the Blade's mercenaries almost wished to change ship. Coincidentally, the Sky Ring people had the same thought. Can't see the hovering ships. There are only sounds. They're still chasing. Han Xiao looked behind and said, After chasing for a few hours, Dark Star's patience should be reaching its limit. We're reaching. Limits too. Her lose was almost prostrated, unable to finish a full sentence without pauses. He could be considered as being in a good state since at least he could talk. Beside him, the Sky Ring mercenaries lay flat down on the ground like dead pigs. Their eyes were out of focus. Streams of white bubbles flew out of their mouths, and their hands and legs were shaking. The ice used to fix their legs had already shattered. Just as Han Xiao was about to say something, the underground space started to tremble violently. Boom! Sounds of explosions came from all directions. This is a bombardment, Goa said. Most likely, Darkstar has started to bombard the surface, hoping to trigger a chain reaction and cause the underground space to collapse forcing us back to the surface, like chasing mice out of their cave. Then, they'll surround us on the surface, and we'll have nowhere to run, Han Xiao said calmly. He had expected this to happen so he could stay calm when it happened. Is there nothing we can do? Goa did not want to give up. We've stalled for many hours with the spaceship. It's already the limit. Han Xiao inhaled deeply and said slowly, We have to abandon ship. The people were shocked. The spaceship was the only thing that they could depend on. If they abandoned the spaceship, it would mean they have lost the mobility, and they would really become fish in a barrel. Chapter 397 Arrival of the Fleet Chapter 397 Arrival of the Fleet Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios The people immediately disagreed. How were they going to escape without a spaceship? It was never possible to break through Dark Star's army in a spaceship, Han Xiao explained. The chance to escape has always been close to zero. We only had one choice from the start, stall for time and wait for backup. Abandoning ship and losing ability is obviously disadvantageous, but it will also decrease Dark Star's efficiency. Without spaceships, we will be fish in a barrel to Dark Star, and their alertness will further be decreased. Once we spread out underground, Dark Star will stop bombarding the surface. Because without protection from the spaceship, we will be buried alive if the underground space collapses. What they want is the... Ahem, what they want is to capture us alive. Therefore, they'll most probably use the hovering ships and send out troops to search slowly. This was a risky plan, and the mercenaries exchanged nervous looks. Although the plan did make sense, 
the risk of abandoning the spaceship made them hesitant. Are you absolutely confident about this? Goa could not help but voice her doubt. What do you think? Han Shao shook his head. How could he be 100% confident in this kind of situation? If he was, it would not be called a risky plan. Staying in the spaceships looked safe, but their chances would be almost negligible. Abandoning the spaceships looked desperate, but it could squeeze out more time and stall them longer. The bombardment continued, and time waited for no man. Goa and Porter discussed a little, then finally clenched their teeth and agreed with carrying out the plan to abandon the spaceships. So, Goa asked, what is the plan? The plan is, Han Shao explained in detail. Boom! In the sky, dozens of Dark Star bombardment fleets were in a neat formation, dropping bombs down on the surface. Mushroom clouds rose up one after another. Heated wind from the explosion stirred up dust and sand all over the sky, creating countless craters filled with cracks like spider nets. In the command room of the Dark Star mothership, Sirota was staring at the image of the surface, and his fingers were tapping the table continuously. His impatience was clearly expressed through these small movements. Since the spaceships escaped underground, a few hours had passed, and they still had yet to make any progress. His patience had run out, so he decided to send out bombardment ships to destroy the planet's surface, causing the underground space to collapse and forcing the targets to get out of the twisted narrow underground and come back to the open surface. He also sent out many medium intercepting ships to form encirclements. As soon as the mercenary spaceships appeared on the surface, there would be no more chasing and running. They would be able to capture the spaceships immediately. Commander, the interrogation is completed. These captured mercenaries have never seen the secret message bead before. We searched their clothes and inside their bodies as well, and they don't have it, an officer said. These captives were Serlini and the others. At least the range is smaller. Sirota nodded. Therefore, the last two ships were the most suspicious. At this time, the Sky Ring spaceship appeared on the image from the hovering ship fleet. The hovering ships had almost lost them, but now they were catching up. The Sky Ring spaceship speed had become much slower, and it even bumped into walls from time to time. Bang! Lasers hit the spaceship shield. It was as if the Sky Ring spaceship had changed its pilot. There were no more dazzling dodges, and it looked very clumsy. Almost all attacks landed on the target. The shield shattered in no time. Boom! Lasers fired at the tail of the spaceship, unleashing a trail of flames and smoke. Sky Ring spaceship's accelerator broke and lost its power. It glided forward and shattered about a dozen stone pillars before crashing into the stone wall, stirring up thick smoke. The hovering ships surrounded the spaceship, but the Sky Ring spaceship was silent. A few units of Dark Star warriors jumped out of the hovering ships and blasted the gate open with their guns, only to see that there was only darkness inside the spaceship. The Dark Star warriors rushed in, but there was no one inside. A warrior headed to the pilot seat and check system, then quickly reported the situation to their superior. Report. There's no one in the spaceship. It was the spaceship system's autopilot. Sirota slammed his hands heavily on the table, and with rage in his eyes, he said, They've abandoned ship. On the other side, the Blade spaceship did the same and jumped out of the spaceship in different batches. As they did not get out of sight of the enemies like Han Shao, the image of them jumping out was directly seen by the chasing ships. However, the mercenaries did not care about that. They landed and spread out on their own. Abandon ship. Seems like it's to stall for more time. TSK. They still have hope for reinforcements. Sirota sneered. They have some guts to gamble like this. Then, he loudly ordered, stop the bombardment. Hovering ships, split up and search for vital signs. Send out ground troops to continue to pursue. Sirota looked to the side and said, Ember, you'll lead the ground troops. Ember nodded and left the command room. Hundreds of egg-shaped airdrop cabins were ejected from the mothership, falling toward the ground. Inside were all Dark Star supers, including Ember. Sirota could see through Han Zhao's plan, but he still did as Han Shao expected because Dark Star's target was indeed to capture everyone alive. From how he saw it, this was what the mercenaries were gambling on. There was nothing that he could do about it. The target did not have a spaceship anymore, so Sirota was not worried. 
If they were hunters chasing after prey earlier, now they were just catching them in a ring. There was no need to worry about anyone escaping. This time, in a hard-to-find corner underground, a silver-white metal sphere was parked quietly. Inside the metal sphere was a sophisticated cockpit, where Han Shao and a few others were. This was a transporting tool that Han Shao had been building, Portable Sphere Fortress. On the outside, it was just a metal sphere, but its structure inside was complicated. It could travel in both sea and land as well as air. The sphere was made up of many layers. The most outside silver layer were both the armor and the mobility device to move on land, as the sphere was suitable for rolling movements and was able to change direction and speed easily. When it rolled, only the outside layer would move. The inside pilot cabin had an individual structure and was separated from the outside layer, so it would not spin as well. The real-time image of the outside was played on the large curve inside the pilot cabin. When traveling through complex terrain, for mechanical pedipalps could be extended out of its body for crawling purposes. Furthermore, the sphere was also equipped with thrusters, balance wings, and turbines. It could fly at relatively low heights and move in the oceans. It was a multifunctional transport tool. In his previous life, the players had called this the Carball. Han Shao had built it while he was on floating Dragon Island. He had placed it in the spaceship, and now that they abandoned the spaceship, it was time to use it. The plan was to spread out, so the ones in the Carball at this time was only Herluz, Arosia, the three brothers of Volga, Frenzied Sword, and Maple Moon. The bombardment has stopped. Han Shao was sitting at the controlling seat. His eyes sparkled. The underground terrain did not tremble anymore, which meant that Darkstar had stopped the bombardment as expected, which made him feel relieved. From now on, Darkstar will send out ground troops to carry out the search and start a game of cat and mouse. The mercenaries have all spread out, so there'll definitely be some people that'll get caught. Hope we can stall for longer. The car ball rolled backward and disappeared in the dark and twisted underground tunnel. Darkness was mercenaries' cover, which made the search more difficult. There were two to three hundred people in the two spaceships. Now that they had all spread out, the number of targets that Darkstar had to capture changed from two to hundreds. The hovering ships split up as well, slowly searching every corner with their cone-shaped blue searchlights. Not long after, the ground troops led by Ember arrived underground and started their thorough search. The sound of footsteps echoed in the underground space. The situation went from spaceship pursuit to time-consuming search. It seemed to be less heated, but the nervousness in the hearts of mercenaries kept growing as they were in the constant alert of not knowing when they would meet enemies in the endless darkness. In the beginning, Darkstar captured some mercenaries very quickly. However, as time went on, the mercenaries became more spread out, and their capture efficiency rapidly decreased. Often, Darkstar had to take a very long time only to find one or two mercenaries. The mercenaries had all sorts of abilities, and some were very good at hiding. Time trickled by. In Streamlight, Shivet was rather annoyed. Darkstar had stayed for one day now, and they had yet to leave. He had sent several warnings, but Darkstar had told him that because the mercenaries had abandoned their spaceships, it would not take too long to capture everyone. Shivet had no choice but to continue waiting despite his impatience. Oom! Mm. The alarm suddenly rang. The radar showed that, not far away, a new fleet was jumping toward this direction, and its numbers were growing rapidly. Whose forces are these? Shivet's face changed. Through the porthole, he saw that in the space behind the Dark Star mothership, streams of light dashed across and stopped, showing their true identity. It was an enormous fleet with mixed styles like it was made up of battleships from many different races. It looked like a motley army, but when they saw the symbols on these battleships, the faces of the Holy Stone and Black Raven commanders immediately turned grave. This was a fleet temporarily gathered by Sky Ring, Blades, and Purple Gold. Other than the three large mercenary groups, there were also dozens of mercenary group partners. Hundreds of all kinds of battleships faced the Dark Star Mothership. Do these large armies really have to make such a huge scene? Shivet was surprised. If these mercenaries and Darkstar could not come to an agreement, they would definitely start fighting. By then, it would be very difficult for Holy Stone and Black Raven to not be affected. Shivet's expression became terrible. 
If these mercenaries had been captured earlier, such a troublesome situation would never have happened. Chapter 398 Conflict and Attention Chapter 398 Conflict and Attention Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios The Dark Star mothership turned around slowly. Hundreds of frigates flew out and formed a combat formation around the mothership, confronting the Mercenary Alliance fleet. The Alliance fleet sent out a message, demanding Dark Star to stop capturing the mercenaries immediately, or they would use force to settle the problem. The three large armies were very tough in their stance. As they did not have any territory to protect like civilizations, they were not afraid of revenge. If you mess with our people, we will mess you up, no matter who. Sirota was a little moved. He had thought that mercenaries were extremely divided, and he had never thought that capturing a small group of mercenaries would attract an entire mercenary fleet. Sirota has to admit he had underestimated the mercenary industry. The Alliance fleet gave them only ten minutes, demanding Darkstar withdraw all their forces immediately, or they would start attacking. Sirota's relaxed mindset was nowhere to be found, and his face was grave. Of course, he was not afraid of the Alliance fleet since the Darkstar mothership was a moving space station base and was very well equipped. However, if a direct conflict broke out, the damage would exceed the forecast of this operation. Darkstar was not dragged down by honor or name, so even if they retreated and were deemed as being afraid of the mercenaries, it would not affect them at all. What Sirota was considering at this time was another question. Was it worth fighting a fleet head-on for the secret message bead? Or could they give up this opportunity and strike again in the future? Would there ever be an opportunity as good as this? After some contemplation, Sirotas came to the conclusion that there would never be such a good opportunity again. Letting these mercenaries return to their organizations would mean that their search range will expand. If these mercenaries split up, it would be very troublesome to find them again. And these were just the smaller problems. Letting these people back to their organizations might very well lead to accidents like the bead being given to someone else without Darkstar's knowledge or the bead being lost on some godforsaken rock due to the person dying during a mission. There were too many possibilities. But now, all the mercenaries that might have come into contact with the bead were right there. Certainly, there would never be a better opportunity than this. This time, Shivet gave a serious announcement to the Alliance fleet and the Darkstar mothership. On behalf of the Holy Stone Border Guard's army, I warn you, if you start a battle here, we will see it as a provocation. We will very likely see you as enemies and interfere with the conflict. The announcement was clearly very effective as soon as it was sent out. The Alliance fleet opened fire at the Dark Star mothership straight away without saying anything. Colorful lights exploded in the dark space. The battleship formations carried out all kinds of tactics, and lasers were fired at each other nonstop. The mercenary fleet and the Dark Star fleet started to battle. Shivet's face turned black, and he was furious. They had completely ignored what he said. Commander, what do we do now? Which side do we help? Help your ass, we watch. Shivet clenched his teeth. One side was a chaotic, evil, and very vengeful terrorist organization. Another was a chaotic, neutral, and lawless mercenaries. Helping either side was a waste of military power. Furthermore, he did not dare move his fleet. If they moved, who knew how Black Raven would react? They might as well watch the mercenaries and Dark Star bite each other. And about the warning earlier, just let it be ignored. Outside the chaotic battlefield, Holy Stone and Black Raven did not interfere. However, they did not do nothing at all. Their fleet spread out sideways and formed a line to surround the battlefield preventing it from expanding further. Allowing them to fight outside their border was already their bottom line. If Dark Star or the mercenaries went over it, the fleets of the two large civilizations would fire without hesitation. The battle started in an instant. In terms of raw power, the Dark Star mothership was stronger than this temporarily gathered fleet. The Alliance fleet was not planning to fight head-on either, so they sent out small spaceships wanting to go around the battlefield and fly to the planet to pick up Han Shao and the other mercenaries. However, Sirota noticed this and ordered a fleet to intercept them. Thus, they were in a stalemate. The mercenaries on the planet were the key to determining the result of the battle. Whether they were saved or captured, as soon as either happened, the battle would end immediately. 
In Sirota's eyes, Han Zhao's plan to abandon ship was initially digging their own graves and a meaningless struggle. However, the situation had changed, and the meaningless stalling had become the key. Abandoning ship had given them more time, and every second that they earned with that, Darkstar was suffering from more damage. Battle damage reports came one after another, and the coldness in Sirota's eyes became ever deeper. Initially, it had been a simple mission that could be completed easily, but now it had become so troublesome and tough. The performance of that Sky Ring spaceship was the start of all the changes. If not for that pilot who could stall for so long, he would have captured them and left long ago. They would never have met the Mercenary Alliance fleet. Sirota was deeply regretful for missing that opportunity. The fleets fired at each other, and the energy reaction from the attacks was as conspicuous as a fixed star as seen from the detectors. From afar, the light of the explosions was as bright as the stars. The spaceships passing by noticed the abnormality there even from afar. The battle attracted many spaceships as spectators, and the scene was quickly recorded. In the galactical generation, the increase in communication level also made the news more real-time. The distance was not a problem. Not long after, the battle between Dark Star and the mercenaries spread out across numerous star clusters. After watching for more than half a day, Shivet received an unexpected communication request. Buzz! A pure-blood Goddard's face appeared on the screen and said with a serious face, I'm the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs of Goddard Civilization, Plenipotentiary Representative of Goddard Civilization. I hope the Holy Stone Civilization can interfere with the battle immediately and attack Dark Star. Shivet's face turned formal and said, This is our local affair. You have no right to interfere. Dark Star is an evil force that has spilled innocent blood in many places. They're the common enemy of civilizations. Watching them carry out their crimes is a very irresponsible act. The Goddard sounded very justified. Sorry. I only listened to the marshal's orders. Shivet held his ground firmly. I'll only interfere with the battle if the marshal gives me a direct order. If you have questions, you can send a request to the Foreign Affairs Department. Actually, as the commander of Formation 3, Shivet could take care of matters of this scale himself, but he still chose to use the marshal's name. It was obviously an excuse. He knew very well what Godora was thinking. Dark Star was Godora's mortal enemy, and they had made a rare appearance. So Godora wanted Holy Stone to help them to fight Dark Star. However, Holy Stone and Godora were not strategic allies, so they had no obligation to help. Furthermore, it was a sensitive political issue. As one of the commanders of the Border Guard's army, Shivet was definitely not going to follow the requests of another civilization. The Godarans had no choice but to contact the higher-ups of the Holy Stone civilization. However, royalty-ruled civilizations such as Holy Stone were best at pushing around responsibilities. They were firm on the grounds of not giving out any orders. Even when the Godarans expressed that if they let Darkstar get away, they would publicly condemn Holy Stone during the Shattered Star Ring Diplomatic Council. Holy Stone was still beating about the bush. Their position was very clear. They did not want to mess with Dark Star. The Goddard civilization was just one of the forces that had their attention on this matter. As Dark Star rarely appeared, more and more forces and organizations had their eyes on it, watching the center of the storm from far away. Whoosh! In the dark underground, Thermoelectrical incisor gloves sliced through a Dark Star warrior's chest like slicing through a piece of tofu, easily taking that person's life. Han Xiao pulled his hand away, and the Dark Star warrior fell down. On the ground were the corpses of a Dark Star search team. Let's go quickly. Their reinforcements will arrive very soon. Haluz kept his voice down. The car ball was parked at the side. Han Xiao jumped back in, controlled the car ball, and rolled away. He opened the interface, and the mission information had already changed. Escape mission rating, C. Lasting two days would grant a rating of D. Every twelve hours onward, the rating would go up by one grade. They had already lasted two and a half days. The mission was already completed. At this time, more than half of the mercenaries had already been captured, and very few were still running. This meant that the Mercenary Alliance fleet and Darkstar had been firing at each other for more than one day. If either Holy Stone or Black Raven interfered, 
Darkstar would have retreated, and the mercenaries would have been saved. However, the two civilizations were only watching, not helping either side, which led to the stalemate. The Alliance fleet could not pick up the mercenaries. Putting our hopes on these mercenaries was not a good idea indeed. Han Shao shook his head. Luckily, he had already contacted Ames and requested help as another layer of insurance. The thing was, she was not very dependable either, so he did not know when she would be free to come. If the players were caught, their mission would fail. Some of them were very cheeky and wanted to go offline to avoid being caught, but when they came online again, they realized that the mission had failed straight away. However, if the players were captured by Darkstar, it would add on quite an amount of trouble. Han Shao gave out a new mission through the faction interface. As long as they were not captured, they would receive a bonus reward. This way, even if they went offline and failed escape, they could still go offline if they are almost caught and at least they would still have some reward. Luckily, no players had been caught yet. This had made the Darkstar search team very frustrated, as the prey disappeared without a trace just as they were almost captured. The Darkstar search teams were at a loss and very confused. Boom! At this time, the tunnel ahead suddenly collapsed. The car ball made a sudden stop. A new group of pursuers walked out of the hole from the wall, and the leader was Ember. Found you. I won't be as careless as the last time. Ember was expressionless. He raised his esper power to the maximum, and his battle intent sword. His eyes had been fixed on Han Shao for a very long time, and now he had finally caught up. Han Shao's face changed a little. Him again. This is not good. Freewenville.com. The great mechanic Han himself was not afraid of Ember. They would not be able to kill each other if they started a fight. However, Ember's power was too destructive to his friends around him. Her lose was already considered to be quite strong. But if he faced Ember, he would be turned into dust in an instant. That Esper power was too powerful, and it could even be called a walking human dust maker. That guy is very dangerous. Retreat. Han Shao did not have any desire to stay. He pulled the joystick, and the car ball crashed through the wall on the side as they retreated. Chapter 399 Broken Arm and Awakening Chapter 399 Broken Arm and Awakening Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios The last time that they met, Ember got a taste of defeat from Han Shao. He had met quite a number of mechanics, but Black Star was the first mechanic that could use his own body to drag the battle without using machinery. Plus, Han Shao was like a faded enemy of his power. Ember had thought about how to deal with Han Shao, and he had come up with some plans. Thus, he had been waiting to meet Han Shao again. Now they had finally intercepted Han Shao. Seeing the car ball turn to run away, Ember immediately activated his power. Hum! The walls in all directions started to move as if they were alive. A large amount of black and gray particles gushed out like a black cloud, winding around the car ball, turning into all sorts of shapes such as spears and blades, creating sparkles on the moving armor of the car ball. The underground space was narrow and twisted. The car ball crashed through the walls like a mole digging a tunnel. Ember and the others chased behind. The car ball was very fast, so even though grade B supers were not slow, the distance between them was still getting longer. Call the search team and follow my position. There's an important target here driving some kind of sphere-shaped transport tool. It's very fast, but I will slow it down as much as I can. Although Ember really wanted to fight with Han Shao, the training that he had gone through made him always put the mission first. The hovering ship fleet nearby received the message and came from all directions. The range of Ember's power was limited. The car ball was going to leave his sights. Ember's energy turned into fuel for his power. The ground in front of the car ball bulged and turned into rocks, forming obstacles. Bang, bang, bang. The car ball crushed everything in its way, breaking through fong shaped pillars one after another. Its thick, heavy armor was not damaged, but its speed unavoidably decreased. The curved surface inside the sphere was all made of screens, displaying the image outside. Han Shao could see in all directions from sitting in the driver's seat, so he quickly pressed on the control panel and activated the car ball's other functions. With the sound of mechanical parts moving, the front, back, left, and right side of the armor suddenly opened. A mechanic pedipalp slid out from each of the openings and pressed onto the ground. 
the car ball jumped up like a flea and skipped over the dangerous obstacles. Then, four anti-gravitational thrusters appeared at the bottom of the car ball, pushing the car ball forward almost a hundred meters before it landed on the ground. This process was repeated again and again. The car ball was not affected by the terrain at all. Ember was getting further and further away. TSK. The search team will definitely surround us. We have to think of a way to get rid of the enemies. Luckily, there's a gap between Earth near here. We can. Freewebnovel.com. As he was saying, Han Shao suddenly realized that something was wrong. He turned around and looked at everyone else. All of their faces were filled with veins like they were struggling with all their lives, and they were unable to move. Stop or they die. In the distance, Ember was reaching out his hand with a cold face. Han Shao was the only one who he could not do anything about, but in the case of the other people inside the car ball, he could use his power on them through the armor. Han Shao frowned a little. This was what he was most worried about. The two players were not a concern. Even if they died 100 times, he would not even blink. But Herluz, Arosia, and the others were different. They were his weakness when facing Ember. Han Shao was definitely not going to stop, and he would not hesitate on this matter. He was just worried about these two characters that he had spent so much effort to recruit. Don't. Don't care about us, he won't kill anyone. We can't. Can't be the reason to cause our entire teams. Destruction. The energy on Herlu's body was flickering. He was resisting the Esper power from Ember, and even with all his might, he could only speak while stuttering. His face was ferocious, and every word sounded like he was spending all his energy on it. Through the time that they spent together, Herluz had gained some knowledge of Han Shao. He knew very clearly that Han Shao would not hesitate on something like this and would be able to make choices despite the enemy's threatening. So he did not have to worry. He only spoke so that Han Shao would not have any psychological burden. Hold on, there's a gap in front. We can get rid of the enemies once we fly down. Han Shao nodded and increased the car ball speed. He did not waste any words. Seeing that the car ball was about to leave his power range, Ember's eyes turned colder, and he clenched his fists. The higher-ups did not allow killing, but as long as the target was alive, it would not matter how badly hurt they were. Arg! Herluz inhaled deeply with the scream stuck in his throat. His left hand changed shape noticeably, then slowly turned into dust and splashed on the floor. There was no blood and no metallic smell. The decomposition was spreading from his hand toward his shoulder. Ember. A flash of rage appeared in Han Zhao's eyes, but he had no time to look at her Lu's injury. The most important thing at the time was to get out of Ember's power range, and only then would the damage not continue to grow. Sand fog flew out of Arosha's body, and she was being decomposed as well. She looked down at her body as confusion flashed through her eyes. Most normal life forms would be curious about what came after death, but they would only have one life, and when they discovered the answer to that question, it would also mean that they had left the world of the living. Arosia, on the other hand, had countless opportunities to try it, so death was not unknown or mysterious to her. She could see her own ending, a new life. She had been through it countless times, and she knew that she would not die. However, a new life meant that her memories would be reset again. She did not have any memory of what happened after death, and she could not remember anything about what happened before she died. She could not help but think of Han Zhao's words. If she did not have the memories of her past life, even if she received a new life, would she still be who she was now? Would that be just another form of death? So, I can die after all, Arosia mumbled. Suddenly, a sense of trepidation was born in her heart. When this thought appeared, a change happened within her body. Hum. The feeling of her body being controlled suddenly disappeared. Arosia realized that she could move now. The world in her eyes was different. It seemed brighter, and many small dots of light were swimming in the air like fish. Her senses became completely different from just a moment earlier. Then, she realized that she was floating and she saw the shocked expression on the people beside her. What happened to me? Arosia looked down at her body. It was not a physical body anymore but a half-transparent luminous body with a dim glow of bluish gold. Light particles floated around her. 
Her senses were not her body and head anymore. It was like she was no longer limited by a physical form. With a thought, she suddenly turned into a sphere-shaped ball of light. This, this is, Maple Moon was shocked. Energy life, Han Shao glanced over. He was shocked as well. The characteristics that Orochia was showing now were the characteristics of energy life forms. Her physical structure changed, so of course she was not controlled by Ember anymore. He did not have the time to think of the reason for this to happen, but a thought appeared in his mind. Try to touch the energy core. Orochia did as Han Shao said. A thin tentacle extended out of the ball of light, passed through the cockpit wall, and came into contact with the energy core. The light particles in her body flew into the core through the tentacle. Buzz! With the sound of electric currents, sparks appeared on the engine, and the output of the car ball increased tremendously and went into overload mode immediately. The car ball speed increased instantly. It jumped right into the gap in front and finally got out of Ember's power range. Her loose decomposition progress stopped at his left shoulder. He was covered in sweat, holding on to his hollow left shoulder, and his face was filled with agony. Other than him, the Volga brothers suffered some damage too. However, Ember's main target was Herluz, who had the strongest resistance, so they were still in a relatively good state. None of them were maimed. Ember and the others stopped at the edge of the gap and watched as the car ball extended its balance wings and flew away at a high speed. Ember failed twice on the same target. He yelled at the communicator, Is the search team here yet? Target has disappeared. Track it immediately. However, the reply was very unexpected. One minute ago, the mothership sent out a new order. Give up this mission. Everyone, return to the mothership and retreat immediately. The other side of the communicator sounded very anxious. Ember's pupils constricted in disbelief. How could it be an order to retreat? The secret message bead was very important to Darkstar. Now that they were not far from succeeding, unless there was an accident, it was impossible for them to give up halfway. And this accident was definitely something that the mothership could not deal with. The order was not to be disobeyed. Even though Ember was very unhappy, he could only watch Han Shao and the others get away while he turned around and retreated. What had happened above? Fifteen minutes earlier. This is Shattered Star Ring Express News. I'm the frontline reporter, Brimner, reporting live on the battle near planet 122 of Star Zone 4, Fawn Galaxy. A new spaceship stopped not far from the battlefield, reporting the situation live at the scene after hearing about it. Brimner was the reporter hosting this live news. The news was playing on the Shattered Star Ring Current Affairs channel, reporting live on things happening around the area to all the audiences in the Starfield. People and organizations of countless galaxies and star zones were paying attention to this news broadcast. It is known that Fawn 122 Planet is located at the border crossing of Holy Stone Civilization and Black Raven Civilization. A special battle has happened in this sensitive area. As everyone can see, the battle is between Darkstar and mercenaries. As reflected by witnesses, the battle has lasted for almost two days now. The cause of this is that Darkstar wanted to capture some mercenaries, and these mercenaries happen to belong to Skyring, Blades, and Purple Gold, the three very well-known mercenary armies. Hence, a conflict broke out. The situation now is Holy Stone and Black Raven's armies are monitoring on the sidelines, while Darkstar and the mercenaries are in a stalemate. On the planet, the mercenaries who are being chased are unbelievably still running. According to our knowledge, the Goddard civilization far away in the Garten Galaxy is already forming an army. Darkstar is a violence group acting against Godora, so they are naturally enemies. As Darkstar rarely appears and is very stealthy, it is very hard for Godora to trace them. Now that Darkstar has appeared publicly, Godora wants to hold on to this opportunity. As Brimner was reporting, a large object appeared on the edge of the image, flying toward the battlefield. Wait, there seems to be a change to the situation. A new force has appeared. That's air. Floating Dragon Island? Her eyes widened in shock. The interest of countless spectators in Shattered Star Ring who were watching the news rose immediately. Floating Dragon was Dragon Emperor Ames' territory. Almost everyone in Shattered Star Ring knew that. They were very curious. Why was Floating Dragon there? 
Brimner paused and thought of a logical explanation. Our crew has just checked Floating Dragon's route. It just so happens that it came to Fawn Galaxy Star Zone 4. Apparently, it's just passing by out of coincidence. Holy Stone and Black Raven's fleets are surrounding the battlefield. I believe after some communication, Floating Dragon will take a detour. This should not have any impact on the situation. Before she finished her sentence, Floating Dragon bumped straight into the Holy Stone fleet at the edge of the battlefield, without any intention to change course at all. Chapter 400 The Arrival of Dragon Emperor Chapter 400 The Arrival of Dragon Emperor Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Holy Stone and Black Raven's fleets surrounded half of the battlefield each. They were on level one alert. Countless cannons were aimed at both sides of the battle. Shivet stared at the battle and was on high alert all along. A third-party conflict happening at the border had always been difficult to deal with, as guarding the border was the responsibility of the guard army. Firstly, interfering blindly would not grant any merit. As it would not be defending against an enemy, there would be no reward for winning, no compensation for damages, and very severe consequences if they lost. Hence, taking part in the battle was the worst choice. Shivet believed that, if his fleet suffered damage due to his decision, the royalties of his political opposition would definitely use him as an example to attack the political faction that he was in. As the Holy Stone was aristocratic with many factions, most of the army were royalties as well. Of course, there would be political opposition paying attention to what he was doing. Luckily, the attacks from the Darkstar Mothership and the Alliance fleet were controlled within the area. As long as the situation did not escalate further, Shivet would be thankful. At this time, a subordinate said in a hurry, Commander, a large object is approaching the battlefield. Streamlight is on its route. Please give the order. Shivet was shocked. He looked at the screen. A large object was approaching at a very high speed, and its energy reaction was through the roof. He adjusted the angle of the porthole and looked over. Then he saw an ellipse-shaped golden object was shining in space, gradually approaching. Its size was dozens of times larger than a fleet. It was indeed Floating Dragon Island with its shield activated. That's Floating Dragon Island. Is it passing by? Shivet was surprised. Seeing the Floating Dragon Island was still approaching and would crash onto his fleet soon, Shivet immediately sent out a message to Floating Dragon Island. Attention Floating Dragon. Attention Floating Dragon. I am Holy Stone Border Guards Army 3rd Formation Commander Shivet. A battle is underway ahead, and we have locked down this area. Please go around. Just one second later, Streamlight received a reply. Jenny's cold voice sounded, and she only said two words. Give way. A tint of rage appeared on Shivet's face. This was his first time meeting such an outrageous passerby. Not only did they not want to go around, they even wanted the entire fleet to move away. Regardless, Floating Dragon had the right to be this way, and Shivet did not dare mess with them. Floating Dragon did not seem like it would stop at all. It approached in a straight line and would soon bump into the Holy Stone fleet formation. Shivet's face was terrible as he clenched his teeth and gave the order. All units spread out. Terminate the lockdown and give way to them. The Holy Stone spread out hastily and created a path. Floating Dragon passed through the formation and casually entered the battlefield. This was included in the news image, and Brimner's always smooth tone was stuck. She was stunned for a while before saying slowly, Air. As everyone can see, whole Holy Stone fleet gave way. It seems like the negotiation failed. Apparently, Floating Dragon does not care about the battle in front of them. We don't know what will happen next. The viewers were awed by how dominant Floating Dragon was but no one felt that Floating Dragon came just to interfere. At this time, the Alliance fleet still could not break through Darkstar's defenses. They contacted the mercenaries who were being chased, but they could not pick them up. They could only watch as the communication channels became silent one after another. Their organization members were being caught right in front of them, and the rage from that was expressed directly in the strength of the Alliance fleet's attacks. From just wanting to go around Darkstar at the start to now being on a killing spree, it was getting bloodier over time. Boom! 
a part of the planet's surface suddenly bulged. The ground cracked open, and a large ice pillar burrowed out and rose from the ground. Goa and her teammates came back to the surface on the ice pillar. Her white-blue mage robe was covered in dust and holes, and her face looked exhausted. She had been chased by the troops till she had nowhere to run, so she channeled her power and released it on this one hit to finally return to the surface. Looking up, the astonishing scenery reflected in her clear, blue eyes. In the dark blue, almost black outer space, countless fleets were fighting. Countless lasers and cannons were as bright as stars. On the lower heights, it was the Dark Star fleet that was going in circles and surrounding the area. They were rushing toward her, stirring up dust on their way and twisting the atmosphere with the heat from their thrusters. There's still no one to pick us up. It was like all the energy was being pulled out of Goa's body. She slowly kneeled down, and her magic staff fell from her white hands onto the ground. She looked up at, watching the powerless Alliance fleet who were supposed to be their saviors. The color of desperation painted her pupils. The three large armies were what made them struggle and resist because they knew that there would be fleets coming to the rescue. Everyone had gotten their hopes up. However, the reinforcements they had waited so long for could not save them. Their friends were captured one after another. Their last bit of toughness was gone. Who could save them in this situation? Hovering ships surrounded them. Goa and her teammates beside her gave up resisting and let go of their weapons. At this time, the floating dragon island entered the battlefield. The fleets of both sides hastily moved aside. It was like the pause button had been pressed for the heated battle. Sirota was shocked. Why is there still interference? Didn't Holy Stone and Black Raven lock the battlefield down? This is floating dragon. Both sides stopped. Floating dragon became the focus of everyone. Everyone, including Dark Star, the Mercenary Alliance fleet, Holy Stone, and Black Raven, waited for it to leave as soon as possible. They were fighting properly, and suddenly a passerby appeared. Plus, it was someone that they could not mess with. How were they going to continue fighting? However, Floating Dragon Island stopped in the middle of the battlefield. What's going on? Why did it stop? The captains of all the parties were shocked. Was Floating Dragon not just passing by? They already moved away and cleared its path, so why was it not leaving? This time, an extremely piercing alarm triggered on the detector of every battleship. Attention! Space Ripple appeared nearby. High energy reaction. Calculating energy rank. The accurate calculation failed. Area of effect is fluctuating. Cannot be displayed. A blue dot appeared above floating dragon and expanded quickly, turning into a spinning ring of light. Inside was a white fog that was only two to three meters large. It was nothing that people would pay attention to in the wide universe, but now it attracted everyone's attention. Frubnell.com High-grade secret spell. Physical entity teleportation door. Then, a snow-white long leg stepped out of the ring of light. Ames, who was in a black dress, walked out. Her black hair extended from behind her back right to her ankles. On her beautiful face was her careless expression as always, like those countless battleships could not even make her eyebrow move even the slightest bit. The commander's faces all changed. Dragon Emperor, why is she here? Just as everyone was stunned and guessing what Aim's motive was, it suddenly happened. Aim saw Darkstar, and without saying a word, a violent force field gushed out. The armor of the dozen or so Dark Star battleships nearby bent inward and exploded like fireworks. The entire process looked extremely easy. The battleships made from Dark Star technology were as weak as pieces of paper in her hands. She could turn them into paper balls in an instant. Sirota's face changed instantly, having not expected this at all. Why did the Dragon Emperor attack them? Everyone was shocked. Shivet suddenly realized and yelled, She's not passing by. She wants to help the mercenaries. The Alliance fleet was stunned, then became overjoyed. Their morale grew tremendously. Dragon Emperor is reinforcing us. Everyone, attack. Panic finally appeared on Sirota's face. The subordinates around all looked at him and anxiously waited for him to give an order. Info, inform everyone to retreat immediately. No wait, inform the fleets to protect the mothership. 
form a defense formation, cover the mothership to escape. Dragon Emperor's name was as impactful as thunder. When they met Ames, everything about the mission was thrown out of his head. Sirota only had one thought now. Minimize the damage and run for their life. As soon as he gave out the order, he left the commander room and ran to an escape pod. The Darkstar fleet contracted their formation, forming a shield formation and protecting the mothership like a wall, blocking the focus fire from the Alliance fleet. Behind layers and layers of protection, the exterior of the mothership started to fade away. It started to go into stealth and back away. Seeing this, Ames Force Field held onto the entire floating Dragon Island, then slammed it down. The floating Dragon Island covered in the Golden Shield was like a high-energy meteor. The Dark Star battleships were like tiny beans in front of it. The defense formation shattered straight away. Floating Dragon Island slammed into the mothership, unleashing burning sparks on the shield, and a small half of the entire mothership was shattered. The floating Dragon Island was Ames' territory, palace, and weapon. Everyone at the scene was dazed. Brimner opened her mouth wide and was speechless. She was supposed to report the situation, but no one blamed her for it. Everyone who was watching this had the same expression as her. Ames' name was known across the entire Shattered Star Ring, but the times that she had shown her destructive power were very few. The impact of seeing such unbelievably great power with one's own eyes was like a hammer knocking heavily on their heart. The Dragon Emperor had arrived. Chapter 401 New Dungeon Chapter 401 New Dungeon Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Boom! The broken pieces of the spaceships fell into the atmosphere of the planet, lit up from the air friction, like flaming meteors descending from the sky. Even without Sirota's retreat order, Ames' godly blow had already shattered Darkstar's mindset. With destructive power like this, destroying a mothership fleet would be a piece of cake. The other spaceships gave up the mothership and spread out to escape. All kinds of spaceships escaped from the planet and the mothership one after another, hovering ships, guarding ships, escape pods, and etc. The smaller spaceships were mostly in front, and behind were the larger battleships. The thick armor was initially the source of security for the people in the ship, but now it was a disadvantage they hated the most. The Alliance fleet did not stop their attacks. The battleships that lagged behind were being destroyed one after another, ending with short explosions. The air inside the cabins was burnt out very quickly, and the shattered parts became space trash. Ames only actually attacked two times, and it completely defeated Darkstar's mothership formation. Her target was only the most conspicuous mothership. After she broke the mothership, she was too lazy to attack again. You're reading on B. Oxnovel de Om, thanks. The mothership fell toward the ground like an enormous metal meteor. As the gravitational force was turned into speed, the impact it caused became more terrifying, and the sound of it penetrating the air became sharper. Looking up to the sky from the ground, it was like the sky was falling. Hong! Like a meteor landing on a star, the mothership created a large crater. The cracks spread out in all directions for tens of kilometers. The shockwave that it created stirred up dust that covered the sky. The world trembled like an earthquake. Even Goa and the others who were thousands of kilometers away felt the impact, and the world in their eyes was trembling. The entire mothership was injected into the planet's surface, and the surface and the underground space collapsed. The people hastily rushed out. Dong! Dong! The car ball flew out of the earth gap against the rain of rocks, then stopped at the planet's surface. The hatch opened, and Han Xiao jumped out, wiped off the dust on his face, and looked up. Magnificent. Luckily, Floating Dragon is hard enough and did not drop down together, or this planet would definitely have exploded. The Persing Darkstar troops had retreated long ago. The tide had turned, and Darkstar had become the ones running away with the Alliance fleet chasing close behind. Many Darkstar spaceships were going closer to Holy Stone and Black Raven's fleets. If they wanted to escape, they had to go through the formation of these two civilizations' border armies. Shivet was in a dilemma. At this time, the Black Raven army on the other side fired at the escaping Darkstar spaceships without hesitation. Shivet saw this and did not want to lag behind, so he gave the order right away. Aim at Darkstar. 
fire, the Dragon Emperor's arrival had changed his attitude. He initially wanted to control the situation and not mess with either side, but that was not impossible anymore. If they give up the encirclement and purposely let Darkstar get away, what would the Dragon Emperor think? Darkstar was an enemy that she would personally attack. If they let Darkstar get away, would that not mean that they were going against the Dragon Emperor? Darkstar was troublesome to deal with indeed, but Ames was someone who should not be messed with even more. This Darkstar fleet was already fleeing and could not form any organized counterattack. Holy Stone and Black Raven at least had the guts to attack someone who could not fight back. With attacks coming from both front and back, it was like capturing escaping fish. Darkstar spaceships exploded one after another. Who? A dozen or so mercenary spaceships landed, and mercenary teams walked out, entered what was left of the mothership, and rescued their comrades. As the mothership had crashed instead of exploded, there was still a chance that Serlini and the other captured mercenaries were still alive. The threat was resolved. Those mercenaries who were not captured gathered and rescued the captives. Luckily, the mothership was quite tough, and it even had interior shockproof construction. Although they crashed quite roughly, most of them were alive. Darkstar's warriors were no exception, and some of them were alive as well. Their resistance came to no result, and all of them were captured. Sirota did not make it to the escape pod and was among them as well. He was tied up with his subordinates, his face filled with hopelessness. The situation was decided. The Alliance fleet landed one after another, and thousands of mercenaries from various races walked out of the spaceships. They were all from well-known mercenary groups from the Shattered Star Ring. If the mercenary industry was to be split into three levels, low, medium, and high, the strength and size of Han Zhao's Black Star would only belong to the medium-low level, the three large armies would belong to the high level, and the other partners were at least around medium-high level. One deputy army commander arrived from each army, all grade A supers. At this time, the battle above finally ended, and Holy Stone and Black Raven's command ships stopped above the planet. Countless pairs of eyes were looking at the Dragon Emperor, who controlled her force field and slowly landed at the edge of the crowd. The noise suddenly stopped. Tens of thousands of people turned to look at Ames simultaneously. These well-known mercenaries lowered their heads a little, expressing their respect toward the Dragon Emperor. As the representatives, the three deputy army commander walked up quickly and welcomed Ames together in a very respectful way. Back when Ames needed mercenaries, they always helped for free, so they had some sort of connection. They thought that their actions had moved the Dragon Emperor and that Ames had come to help because of them. The mercenary groups at the side thought this way too and were all very jealous. Even Ames had to give face to the three large armies. Their influence was really growing stronger. Thank you very much for your help. Without you, our members would never be able to escape. The three of them were expressing their thanks with a solemn face, but Ames did not even look at them. She passed by the three of them without even pausing. Everyone was stunned for a moment, and their eyes followed Ames. Ames stopped in front of Han Xiao and the others and said, You're all fine. Seems like I arrived just in time. Only free after three days, you really are busy. Han Xiao narrowed his eyes. It had not been long since he joined the Floating Dragon faction, so Ames' impression of him was not strong, and now was a good opportunity to have more communication with Ames. It was very beneficial to have a good relationship with one of the strongest people in the Shattered Star Ring. Ames did not know Han Xiao very well, but the great mechanic Han knew her very well. Her personality was casual and easygoing, so he did not have to be too formal when speaking with her. Although he was temporarily her subordinate, he did not have to act too lowly in front of her. Furthermore, he was rather clear on what Ames liked and disliked. It was very easy to make conversation. They chatted back and forth very quickly. The others were ignored. The atmosphere was weirdly silent, and countless pairs of eyes filled with shock were staring at these two people having a casual chat. The three deputy army commander turned around stiffly with awkwardness on their faces. They had misunderstood. From Ames' actions, she obviously did not come for them but was called here by this stranger mercenary. Was he also one of the mercenaries being chased? Why is he so close to the Dragon Emperor? What's his name? Black Star? Never heard of this name before. What's his relationship with the Dragon Emperor? 
The members of all the mercenary groups were appalled, and they asked around about Han Zhao's history. The name of Black Star was very soon heard by everyone at the scene. After hearing that Han Xiao was a member of Floating Dragon, the way that everyone looked at him changed. The organization under the Dragon Emperor was superior to most, and Dragon Emperor was willing to go to such great lengths to save her subordinate. Black Star's size was not large on its own, but its background was too strong. It was as good as a representative of Dragon Emperor outside Floating Dragon, so no one dared to underestimate them. Black Star was immediately added to their list of people not to mess with. The news recorded this and played it live. Brimner did not speak anymore. She knew that the viewers preferred her to stay quiet at times like that. She held her breath and watched as things unfolded. Before this, be it Holy Stone, Black Raven, Dark Star, the mercenaries, or the viewers watching the news, no one thought that it would end this way. This conflict had lasted for three days, and in the end, the Dragon Emperor suddenly arrived. She defeated Dark Star in no time, and the one who called the Dragon Emperor there was one of the mercenaries. They had originally thought that in these mercenaries, the members of the three large armies were the important ones. They had subconsciously ignored the Black Star mercenary group, which was not as well known. They had thought that the Alliance fleet was the biggest reinforcement, but they had never expected this small mercenary group to call for help that was even stronger than the three large armies. Fewabnovel.com Inside Streamlight, Shivet's eyes were opened so wide that they almost dropped out. If there's nothing else, I will be leaving. Don't forget, help me to ask around about my teacher. After beating up Darkstar and saving them, Ames flew up the sky, went back to Floating Dragon Island, and left. Once Ames left, the tense atmosphere finally became more relaxed. Many people finally exhaled. The Dragon Emperor's existence was too terrifying, and they did not dare to act casually. At this time, the three deputy army commanders approached Han Xiao together, representing their armies and showing their friendliness. They were not the only ones. The other large mercenary groups that had initially ignored Han Xiao also sent representatives to express their will to work together. In a short time, about a hundred people gathered around Han Xiao, all commanders or deputy commanders. This is because of Ames. I'm benefiting from her influences. These mercenaries want to work with me, not because of my strength, but because I'm a member of Floating Dragon. This was the benefit of being in Ames faction. He revealed his background and made a name for himself. Furthermore, with protection from the Dragon Emperor, even Darkstar would not dare to mess with him easily. The great mechanic Han had never minded benefiting from the influence of others. He only cared about what effect it would have. The benefits were very clear, but there were disadvantages as well. Firstly, his name had grown too quickly, no longer matching his strength. Secondly, the Dragon Emperor's name would cover up Black Star's name, which would affect his growth in the future. It was not beneficial to make a name for himself if he kept using the Floating Dragon's name, and this effect would last quite a long time. Having a background was definitely good, but for Han Xiao, who wanted to have his own faction, too famous a background was an indirect chain. However, since Black Star had not been created for long, the pros definitely outweighed the cons. Furthermore, the Dragon Emperor had helped him once, and in return, Han Xiao did not mind helping her do some stuff. Not long after, dozens of communication numbers were added to Han Zhao's communicator, all parts of the industry. Only large mercenary groups on the three large armies level had this level of connection. At this time, a notification appeared on the interface. The mission was completed. Escape. Completed. Mission rating B. You have received 1,200,000 experience. You have received plus three renown. He had lasted for three days, so the rating was two grades higher than the lowest grade, and the reward had increased significantly. Han Xiao thought that it was quite okay. Not too much, but not too little either. In the case of the players, the few of them who lasted till the mission completed were all overjoyed. Following Black Phantom is always beneficial. This had become almost a rule in their minds. They received 1,200,000 experience from just one mission, and they almost did not know what to do with this outrageous amount of experience. The successful ones were few, as most players had failed the mission, now green with envy. Han Zhao's browsed through the interface. 
He opened the NPC interface and noticed something new. His eyes sparkled. This is a new dungeon? Chapter 402 Question Chapter 402 Question Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios As Han Shao entered the dungeon creating interface, there was a new option under Six Nations and Germinal Organization. Warfare Power of the Dragon Emperor Han Shao tried it out of curiosity. He realized that this was a different type of dungeon, not created by a main storyline. Six Nations and Germinal Organization was a series, and parts of it could be intercepted to create multiple dungeon crystals. In the case of the new dungeon, it was fixed. It could only create the scene during the three days from Darkstar's pursuit to Ames's arrival. It was a fixed dungeon. Only large events create series dungeons. The requirement for warfare dungeons should be quite versatile. Since the name is related to Ames, maybe it's because she has legendary characteristics, and that increased the influence of the event Han Shao guessed. The Germinal Organization event happened back in version 1.0 and could create a LVL-60 dungeon at most. Power of the Dragon Emperor would definitely at least match with version 2.0. Han Shao did not enter dungeons, so he could not check the details of the dungeon. However, from his experience, he knew that this new dungeon would be a painful journey for these LVL-60 players. Simply put, the players did not reach the lowest requirement for challenging new dungeons. The difference was at least one version. You're reading on B. Oxnovel de Om, thanks. Although there aren't any physical benefits at the moment, it will make the players feel a sense of freshness. This is the first dungeon that exceeds the version limit. After letting Ace Reporter Bun Hit Dog add some materials to it, it should gather some popularity. Also, as an NPC who's able to give out dungeons of higher levels, my standing will become higher too. Han Xiao blinked. Standing was like money, no one would say it was too much. After informing Han Xiao of their intention to work together, the dozens of commanders walked to the side and ordered their comrades to clean up the battlefield. The planet's surface was devastated. The mercenaries were recycling the parts and pieces of the mothership. Han Xiao had some free time, so he took the members of Black Star to the side. He did not have to worry about the players. The wounds of the Volga brothers were bandaged. Maple Moon had the pharmacist subclass, so she was counted as half a doctor. She was holding her tools and helping her lose treat his wound. Her lose was sitting on a rock, and his left shoulder was empty. The broken part felt like burnt wood when touched. He clenched his teeth and endured the pain as large beads of sweat rolled down his forehead. Han Xiao looked at the wound, frowned, and said, The bones and the flesh are no good. It was bad luck to meet Ember. I knew this day would come, but I never thought it would come so soon. Halu's forced a bitter smile. Many of the Sunil warriors were disabled. He had hardened his resolve long ago, just that when it actually happened, he still could not control the sadness and pain in his heart. Han Shao comforted and said, Old Halu's, you don't have to be too pessimistic about it. Many advanced civilizations have the technology to cure broken limbs, such as an incubation pod, nanotechnology repairs, or supers with healing powers. Right, about that, I know a pair of sisters that can even save someone after death, not to mention losing a limb. Really? Haluz was shocked. He had thought that he was going to lose his left arm forever. Now that he had heard there was a chance to recover, his morale immediately increased. They're people of my home planet. As you know, I left my mother planet to save a disaster of the future. Before I find the solution, I can't go back. Furthermore, the power of these sisters is not yet strong enough. You'll have to endure it for some time. I will build a mechanical prosthetic arm for you for now. After comforting her lose, he turned to look at Arosia. Arosia still looked like a human made of light. How are you feeling now? Han Shao asked curiously. My vision changed, my senses changed, and the control of my body changed. Apparently, I can extend them infinitely, without the limitations of physical forms. As she was saying, Arosia changed her shape many times and got used to the new changes very quickly. Usually, changing shape will change one's mind too. Do you have any special thoughts? No. Han Shao scratched his head. He suddenly recalled that when Arosia still had a physical body, she already did not have any desire or curiosity. 
which was similar to the characteristics of energy lives anyway. He never expected her to really be able to turn into an energy form. He had quite a number of guesses. Are you able to change back? Aroshia tried slowly. This ball of light kept changing shape for quite some time. Then suddenly, she seemed to have found the way. The light particles quickly contracted and condensed. Then the light started to disappear, and she turned back to what she looked like before. The expression on her almost perfect face changed a little. She was a bit curious about her new ability. The players who were watching this were stunned. Ultraman, Second Prince was dazed. Tiga, is that you? Von Hit Dog was shocked. Aroshia tried many abilities. She could turn individual parts of her body into an energy state, and she could also turn her entire body into an energy state. In her energy state, her form was no longer limited, but when she recovered to physical form, she was only able to turn back to what she looked like originally. If she was wounded in her physical form, it would disappear after she turned into her energy form and back to her physical form, but that would cost her some energy. As long as she had enough energy, she could recover no matter how heavily wounded she was. Han Xiao held on to Aroshia's wrist and said, The energy particles in your body is very active. Your super genes are activated. You're an esper. So turning into your energy form is the ability you have awakened. In his many guesses, the chance of Aroshia awakening as a super was the highest, and that was exactly the case. This power was her esper ability. Energize. This type of esper power was considered as shape-shifting, but it could also be considered as elemental controlling. For example, some flame or thunder esper powers could turn their user into a flame man or an electric man. However, when these shapeshifters took damage during their elemental state, they would not be able to recover from it. In the case of Aroshia's shapeshifting, it was more like a reconstruction of material structure and life form. When she turned into an energy form, she did not have lethal parts. As long as her energy was not used up, she would not die. Another difference was that Aroshia's shapeshifting was different from those of a single element. Although it looked like she turned into light energy, when she sent energy into the Carball energy core, it automatically changed into the compatible electric energy. This meant her energy form could change. Han Xiao was knowledgeable, so he realized Aroshia's potential very quickly. This was a walking battery and a universal energy source. Being able to change energy property meant that there was a chance for her to change into very high-level energy, such as particle energy or psionic energy. As for the strength, range, energy limit, and other matters, these would require her to train her power to increase. As soon as Aroshia awakened, her starting point was close to grade C, and her power potential was very high. Part of the reason for that was because her blood contained energy, and she had activated a small part of it. You're a super now. Although her Luz and I are not espers, we can still guide you on how to use your energy. With your potential, your strength should increase very quickly, Han Xiao said. He did not guide Aroshia to become stronger just because of the related mission requirement. It was also to have another person with combat power in the mercenary group. This time, Goa and Porter brought their teams along and walked over. Serlini was covered in bandages and was holding two crutches under his arms. He was limping toward Han Xiao with his subordinate support. If not for you calling the Dragon Emperor, the pickup teams would have been stalled from the start to the end, and none of us would have been able to escape. You saved us all. Please accept our appreciation, Goa said with a solemn tone. The hundreds of mercenaries were very thankful. When the Alliance fleet was being stalled, she had already lost all hope, but the Dragon Emperor had appeared and completely turned the tables. The support that Han Xiao had called for was the key. Sorry I did not listen to your suggestions back then. That's why I was captured by Darkstar. They tortured me for a very long time and asked me if I have seen a bead. It was very weird. If we were not saved, we definitely would have been killed, Serlini said with shame. He wanted to put down the crutches, ignore the dozens of fractures on his body, and hold Han Zhao's hand to express his appreciation but was stopped by Han Xiao. Han Xiao sized him up and praised him. Dark Star tortured you so badly, but you hung on. Good job. You mean these wounds? Serlini looked down at the bandages all over his body and said, You misunderstood. These are from the mothership's crash. Dot. Han Zhao's eyes twitched, speechless. 
By the way, about that, Goa intercepted and pointed at the sky. Because Holy Stone's fleet sent a fake message, that's why you were caught. What are you planning to do? You reminded me. They almost got me killed. Anger appeared on Serlini's face. He turned to his subordinate and yelled, Contact them. A mercenary took out his communicator and tried to contact Holy Stone's fleet. The other side picked up the request very quickly, and Shivet's face appeared on the screen. Shivet knew that his decision back then would bring blame, but he did not think that it was a bad decision. All he could say was that he made the wrong bet, so he had no choice but to deal with the consequences. After receiving the communication request from mercenaries, he told the operator to direct it to him immediately. He was prepared to personally give an explanation and fake some sincerity. He adjusted his shirt and introduced himself. Hello, I'm Holy Stone Border Guards Army 3rd Formation Commander Shiva. Before he finished introducing, Serlini yelled at the communicator, using his local language. After being translated through the translator, it was easily understood. You moron! Han Shao felt much livelier when he heard that. NPC cursing isn't muted. Nice. Chapter 403 Rocketing Renown Transferring to God Aura. Chapter 403 Rocketing Renown Transferring to God Aura. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios. Serlini was cursing like a machine gun. The words that he used were very descriptive and lively, including various positions. The nouns included Shivet's ancestors, parents, wife, descendants, and so on. Han Shao was enjoying listening to it on the side. He felt a sense of familiarity. Shivet was stunned by the curses. He could not even interject. His face was as black as the bottom of a pot, and his entire body was trembling furiously. I am the high-level commander of Holy Stone Civilization. Other than my boss and my wife, who dares to shame me like this? I will endure it. Seeing Han Shao at the side, Shivet pressed his rage down. This time, we have the moral low ground, so I will give you face. Porter's face was filled with surprise. He had thought that he was rough enough, but he had never expected Serlini, who was usually very sensible, to be grumpier than him. After he vented out his anger, Serlini took a break and asked, Why did you set us up? Frubnel.com Shivet was expressionless. He explained with a very stiff tone, You misunderstood. We did want to pick you up, but plans can't keep up with changes. Darkstar set up a blockade, and there was no chance to break through. That's why the pickup team did not arrive at the indicated location on time. This was an accident. When we wanted to contact you after arriving at the location, but you did not reply at all. How are you going to explain that? Darkstar forced our pickup team back. Seeing that the situation was not good, we did not fight them and retreated first. We initially wanted to contact you to change the pickup location, but Darkstar used the short-range communication signal disruptor on us and blocked the communication. It was to not let us inform you of the changes to the situation. Then, Darkstar used this message to capture you. It's not strange for you to misunderstand us. Shivet described it without blinking, as if it had really happened, which showed how experienced he was. With his position, he did not have to explain so much to a group of mercenaries, but Black Star was an exception. His background was too strong. Shivet only explained because of Han Shao. He faked his sincerity and said, Our mistake has led to a bad result. I am very sorry about that. No matter what, I have explained the truth, and hope you can understand. Serlini was about to say something, but Han Shao stepped forward and spoke first. He smiled and said, So, that's what happened. We really misunderstood you. This is a misunderstanding caused by intel difference. Don't have to apologize. This was not your fault. Shivet's eyes sparkled, and he said with a very pleased tone, It's really great that you can understand. Since the misunderstanding has been resolved, I shall not stay any longer. Do whatever you want with these Dark Star people. As Shivet finished his sentence, the Holy Stone fleet retreated, and Black Raven retreated from the other side as well. The fleets that covered the sky had left, and the exterior space of the planet became empty again. You didn't actually believe that, did you? That Shiva something commander is looking for excuses, Serlini said. Han Shao shrugged and said, 
a lie that can't be proved. How can I believe it? Goa walked forward and sighed. Don't hold a grudge for it. Even though we know it's clearly an excuse, we can't do anything to him. He's Holy Stone's border commander after all. Factions were different, and knifing each other back and forth was very normal. However, mercenaries believed peace was required to make money. The opponent represented a large civilization that was very strong, and he had just been affected by a shady play. It was not enough to make them enemies. At the same time, it was not worth doing. The higher-ups of the various armies would definitely not agree on that, and they could not take revenge personally. Everyone knew what the truth was, but they still acted peaceful toward each other and acted as if it did not happen. They were all quite upset, but they sighed and moved on. Han Xiao smiled and did not say anything. On the surface, he took a step back, but he secretly wrote Holy Stone Civilization's name on his notebook. He was not going to just forget it. Violence was not technical enough and not worth it since you did me dirty. It is only fair for me to do the same. Mm. When I'm free, I shall find an opportunity to kidnap their main character type of person. No one will know, and I'll get a new officer, two birds with one stone. Han Xiao rubbed his chin, and an evil smirk appeared on his face. Far away on streamlight, Shivet suddenly felt a chill up his spine just as he was being proud of himself. The cleaning for the battlefield was completed. The parts and broken pieces had been recycled by the mercenaries. Sirota and a few other Dark Star members were tied in one place, and a few deputy army commanders surrounded the captives and discussed quietly. Han Xiao walked over and asked, Are these all the captives? Hmm, all the escaping spaceships were destroyed, so these are the only ones alive. After taking a closer look, Han Xiao realized that Ember was not one of them. Looks like he exploded when in a spaceship, he should be dead. He felt that it was a pity. It was not easy to meet someone with legendary characteristics. Plus, that person's power was countered by him. If he could kill Ember with his own hands, he would most likely get a molding talent. Ember had died in someone else's hands, so Han Xiao did not receive any reward from it. What are you planning to do with them? It's best to transfer the Dark Star people to God Aura. We have contacted God Aura, and they are very happy to take over the captives. They are even willing to pay a reward for it. Sky Ring's deputy army commander said. It was actually more suitable to let Holy Stone or Black Raven take the captives, but neither of them wanted to be involved. Just now, Shivet acted as if letting them deal with the captives was an act of generosity, but he was actually just not wanting to take this hot potato. Sirota heard this and started to struggle violently. He growled with rage and said, Kill me! If the people of Darkstar ended up in the hands of God Aura, there would only be one place for them to go, to be imprisoned in Rainbow Prison for life. Rainbow Prison only imprisoned captured Darkstar members. The inside of the prison was very mysterious. All the Darkstar members who were locked in there for some time would lose their faith for Darkstar, turning their loyalty to God Aura. Darkstar thought that this prison was brainwashing its prisoners continuously, twisting their minds and turning them into betrayers, making them Ghidorah's dogs and tools. The organization was rather fearful of the Rainbow Prison. Rumor had it that the reason for God Aura not executing Darkstar's war prisoners was that they wanted to make Darkstar's people fight and kill each other through brainwashing. It was an extremely vicious intent. Sirota was not afraid of spending his life in prison, but he was afraid of having his mind twisted. If he had to betray his belief, he would rather die. A mercenary kicked Sirota on the back of his head and knocked him out silencing him. I'm going to Ghidorah's colony as well. It's along the way, so how about giving me a ride? Han Xiao said. Ha ha. No problem. The mercenaries tidied the place up for a few hours, recycled everything valuable. Then the fleet took off. The Alliance fleet left and headed toward the neighboring Garden Galaxy. The incident had ended. Peace was restored on this planet. Only the devastated planet's surface reminded people that a tragic battle had once happened there. The things that had happened there were all detailed in Shattered Star Ring Express News. One day later, the other news stations used Shattered Star Ring Express News material and did another report. The impact of this event was gradually fermenting. The most compelling part was, of course, the scene in which the Dragon Emperor showed her power. It was repeated many times on various channels. 
The one who received the second most attention was Han Shao. He attracted more attention than the fact that Darkstar had suffered a huge loss in this incident. Countless viewers came to know of the mercenary called Black Star. He was the only team under the Floating Dragon faction that was acting outside Floating Dragon Island, which meant that he was the executor of the Dragon Emperor's thoughts, which had a much higher influence than himself. The name Black Star and his data was rapidly spread among various large organizations in Shattered Star Ring, becoming one of the targets that they paid attention to. Everywhere around the Shattered Star Ring, regardless of race, as long as they watched the news, they all remembered Black Star's name. Naturally, all kinds of rumors spread out. Someone passed out a new message. The three large armies and their partners actively requested to form a partnership with Black Star. Black Star, who was previously unknown, was suddenly famous in the mercenary industry, and the number of connections and the size of the network that he had made a lot of mercenaries envious. In a few days, Black Star's name became renowned. In these few days, notifications of renown increasing kept popping up on Han Zhao's interface. It increased across various areas, covering many star clusters in Shattered Star Ring. In terms of raw numbers, it grew by a total of 37 points, and it was still growing. He was a little surprised by this, till he saw the galactical news. No wonder his renown rocketed after that. It turned out that he was on television. This fame was a bonus benefit brought by AIM's influence, and it at least saved him a lot of time that would have been spent grinding his renown. This was very important for the growth of a faction, because of this, his starting point was higher than others. A few days later, in Garten Galaxy, the Alliance fleet stopped at Ghidorah's colony planet, Golden Palace. Ghidorah's structures had beautiful styles. They liked curves and arcs. Curved surfaces and fan shapes could be seen everywhere. The color theme was mostly gold and white, beautiful and pure. Goderans did not like the tight feeling of having too many tall buildings, nor did they like the seriousness of symmetry. The city was made up of short, curved, and more ancient buildings. The only tall buildings were the Mage Tower, the Tower of Gal, the Government Building, and the Army Stations. There were no metal transport tools on the road. Instead, there were magic tunnels covered in streams of light. The people walking on it would have increased speed, not any slower than cars, and there would be no traffic jams or anything of the sort. Other than that, some people rode on weird-looking mounts which were more expensive and rarer. The flying carriers had something to do with magic as well. There was a facility called Flying Emblem Station, where one could spend some money and rent a magic item with several fixed flying magics. There were quite a number of people flying on the sky. With one flap from the translucent wings behind their backs, they would be able to fly a very far distance. The people on the street wore many kinds of robes. Most of them were Goderans whose skin looked like they were covered in gold powder. A city's pace could be seen from how fast the people on the street were walking. Goderans walked slowly. Their life was relaxing and casual, adhering to the style of ancient Godora. Usually, magic civilizations would not develop as fast as technological civilizations, and that affected the pace of their lives, the shape of their society, their aesthetics, and their culture. Han Xiao walked on the street alone. He had gone to Golden Palace to find that master of identification to open the secret message bead. He wanted to see what was inside it that was so important to Darkstar. The spaceship was still waiting at the dock. Han Xiao did not waste any time and headed directly toward the target. Chapter 404 Triple Trigger Origins of Large Events Chapter 404 Triple Trigger Origins of Large Events Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios the identification mage was staying at a small villa far away from the city. Han Xiao found the place easily and pressed on the doorbell. After a while, the door opened. An old Goderan walked out and looked at Han Xiao puzzled. Who are you? Hello, Master Angleton. I have come to you for help after hearing about you. I hope that you can help me open an item with magic security measures. Han Xiao recognized this person as the target, so he went straight to the point. To his surprise, Angleton was confused. It has only been three months since I moved here. I did not notify anyone yet. How did you find me? Han Xiao was stunned for a second. Then he realized. At this period, the players in his previous life were still in their novice planets. He was too ahead of time. 
Luckily, Angleton had moved here this early, or it would have been awkward if he could not find him. Angleton could not figure out why but did not dwell on it. He invited Han Shao into his house and said while he was walking, You're the first customer after I moved house. It has commemorative significance. I think I should write this day in my diary. Uninvited surprise guest. What do I call you? Call me Han Shao. Today is the official opening. To celebrate my first business. I will help you as much as I can. Angleton smiled. The inside of the villa was very luxurious. The two of them came to the basement, and there were many magic tools here. Quite a number of magic arrays were embedded on the wall and the floor. There were also many precise instruments to research and analyze magics. After Han Shao paid the fees, Angleton placed the secret message bead inside the analytical magic array, flipped open his thick magic book, and started channeling. Ding! The seal of the secret message bead appeared in the air. Angleton wore his reading glasses, narrowed his eyes, and observed it. He drew magic lines on the array from time to time, solving it bit by bit, just like opening a lock. The mage class and mechanic class were known as the vastest and complicated classes. There were many types of machinery, ranging from nanotechnology to battleships, from nuclear weapons to psionic cannons, from internet technology to artificial intelligence. It was very versatile and mostly about technology. The branches of the mage class were very complicated as well. There was elemental, secret sorcery, blessing, space-time, shape manipulation, summoning, curse, and so on. Mages could learn spells from multiple branches. It had no limitations. They could use ice and fire at the same time if they wanted to. Like mechanics spending experience to gamble on blueprints, mages had to spend experience to learn spells as well. As long as they had enough experience, they could learn as many as they wanted. However, to players, there were differences between these two. For a mage to learn a spell, the spell was divided into different stages. For example, learning fire blast required three stages, and every stage cost experience. The higher the stage, the more it would cost. If a certain stage failed, one had to use experience and try to learn that stage again. When all the stages were completed, the mage would officially be able to use that spell, meaning the mage would get a new ability. The success rate of learning spells depended on intelligence and mystic. The higher the spell grade, the more stages it has. It was also very experience-consuming. It was relatively easier for higher-level mages to learn low-level spells, and it would be very difficult the other way around. Plus, high-level spells usually had prerequisites, such as learning a certain low-level spell or attributes reaching a certain value. The differences between spell branches were like the differences between machinery types, which was a difference in ability choices. In terms of class focus, the mechanic class had cannon master, mechanical pugilist, mechanic, and so on. The mage class also had different focuses. The class difference in the mechanic class was decided afterward, but in the case of the mage class, it was decided beforehand. The method of awakening decided their path. The first method was awakening super genes of a mage normally. Those people are born with magic power or those able to activate their magic power through meditation would become official mages. These were the talented ones. The second method was for those that could not activate magic power or even had no mage talent at all. Through planting magic circuitry in their body, there was a chance to generate magic power, granting them the qualifications to be a mage. This was similar to the Esper class, in which some espers could self-awaken and some needed gene awakening elixir. The magic circuitry planted into their bodies was the source of magic power. It required continuous enhancement and strengthening. The biggest difference between circuit mages and talented mages was that circuit mages were unable to learn all spells, as circuits usually had certain tendencies. They could only be specialized mages, as the foundation could not be changed once it was planted, so there was only one chance to choose a circuit. Of course, as the saying goes, knowing one thing very well is better than knowing many things a little. Specialized mages were not weak. Instead, they were the majority. After all, one's energy was limited, so it was better to focus on one instead of not focusing on everything. In fact, there were even some talented mages who planted circuit in themselves and became specialized mages afterward. As circuit was equivalent to an enhancement to that certain type of magic, it meant to give up all-round capabilities in exchange for strong spell powers. 
Goa, for example, was a specialized mage, a pure ice mage. There was another special type of mage called the magic net mage. Their magic power did not belong to themselves. Rather, it was borrowed through religion, praying, ceremony, and all kinds of strange methods to come in contact with magic entities of other dimensions, usually of unspeakable appearance. They would then form a contract or deed. They could not learn spells. They could only use spells given by that magic entity. Most of these spells did not cost mana but had a limit to how many times they could be used per day. In other words, they had a cooldown but had no mana cost. The way for them to become stronger was to enhance their connection with the magic entity or to create contracts with more magic entities, granting them more spells and higher usages. The great mechanic Han played a mage class in his previous life before. It required very high skills, emphasizing on creating combos by using all kinds of spells, and it had countless combinations. It was the complete opposite of the simple and brutal pugilist class. When battling other players, one had to pay attention to details and make a lot of calculations. It was very suitable for technical players with good brains. Oh, that was except for fire blast style and summoning style, these two were more brainless than pugilist. There was no need for any analysis or whatsoever, they just have to finish their mana bar, and there would barely be anyone standing. With a cup of magic coconut tea in his hands, Han Shao sat at the side and waited for many hours. He almost fell asleep. Clank. In midair, the magic seal array was finally cracked as it shattered like a mirror. It's done. Angleton took off his glasses. Let me see what on earth is inside. Han Shao took back the secret message bead, took a deep breath, and slowly turned it. Without the seal, the secret message bead was easily split in half. A mini vacuum glass cabinet was fixed to each side. These two things both had a shrinking spell on them which was why they could fit in such a small bead. Unknown item identified. You have received secret message bead X1. You have opened secret message bead. You have received seventh generation mutation source X1. You have received super gene extractor test version X1. Holy, it's these two things. Han Zhao's breathing stopped for a moment. His eyes were fixed on these things. He finally understood why Darkstar had spent so much effort in tracking this down. The significance of these two things was beyond ordinary. He had almost snatched Darkstar's lifeblood away. These two things were connected to two huge conspiracies of Darkstar. They were the origin of two big events. One of them was Planet Aquamarine's main storyline in version 2.0, Mutation Disaster. He had a flash of insight and connected the dots. Darkstar bought these items from another organization. The seller is outside Shattered Star Ring, so they chose to send one of their subordinates to deliver the goods, who happened to be a silver. He followed a tourist group here and planned to deliver the goods secretly. However, just as the silvers were having a tour, they were suddenly robbed by slavers. The carrier was unlucky as hell, and that forced Darkstar to come and find the goods. Then, coincidentally, the other silvers hired us. They did not know about the deal behind this. Everything that happened was because of the first accident. Han Shao was astonished. Through many coincidences, he had ruined Darkstar's secret deal and robbed them of the goods that they had spent an outrageous amount of money to buy. Secret organizations selling this kind of product were like arms dealers. Darkstar itself did not have the technology to research new weapons. They could only buy them. The mutation source was already Generation 7, so it had definitely been tested in another place before. As these thoughts flashed through his mind, more than one notification of triggering a new mission popped up in the interface. You have triggered a ranked main storyline mission, Mutation Disaster. Mission Introduction You accidentally ruined Darkstar's private deal and discovered the source of the Mutation Disaster. Darkstar has secretly planted mutation sources in many mother planets of civilizations. When the virus enters its mature stage, a terrifying disaster will arrive. Defending against the disaster is every life's responsibility. Mission requirements. Clean up the mutation disaster virus and protect the planets where a disaster is going to happen. Planet Aquamarine Progress. 0-30000000. Planet Barifos, Progress, 0-21-000000, 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 Planet Barifos, Progress, 
Planet Dawn Progress 0 slash 19000000 Success Requirements Successfully protect any planet mentioned above before the mutation virus reach its mature stage. Failure Condition All planets are defeated and all survivors are forced to leave their planet. Reward Depends on contribution. Remarks Even if the virus spreads and causes the overall progress to decrease, Individually earned progress will still be calculated into reward rating. Mission status. Frozen. The main storyline mission of the next version. Han Zhao's eyes sparkled in surprise. He did not expect to trigger the main storyline of version 2.0 in advance. The main storyline mission of the mutation disaster was not an individual mission but a mission carried out by all players. Planet Aquamarine needed 30 million progress points and every player's actions would be added into the progress. There were many stages of the mutation disaster, and the virus would grow, causing the progress to drop by large portions. The mission requirement was to complete the requirements before the virus grew into its unstoppable mature stage. It required all players to work together. This mission is different from the one players would receive. I remember that the player's mission is just to protect Planet Aquamarine, but my target includes other planets as well. Is it because I got the mutation source? Han Xiao was a little surprised. This was a good thing. It gave him more choices. Of course, he was definitely going to protect planet Aquamarine first. Not only was it his home, but it was also for the players of the next version. The status of the mission at this moment was frozen. Only when the timeline reached version 2.0 and the disaster broke out would the mission start. What he was thinking was how to make full use of the mutation source in his hands in order to achieve the biggest impact. The key component of solving the mutation disaster is God Aura. In my previous life, God Aura took a very long time to invent the cure. If I give them the mutation source, they will be able to invent the cure earlier. Han Xiao contemplated on the issue. This was probably the best way to maximize the use of the mutation source. However, he had to think of when he should give it to God Aura. If he gave it to them too early, the contribution points would not be counted into the mission, and he would be suspected too. He searched through his memories and had a rough plan. The details had to be improved, but he let it aside for the moment. He looked at the other two new missions. You have triggered a ranked mission, Ghidorah's ally. You have triggered S-ranked mission, Bloodline. Chapter 405 Throwing the Blame 1. Chapter 405. Throwing the Blame 1. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios. Ghidorah's Ally. Mission Introduction. You caused Dark Star's failure. God Aura will reward any actions against Dark Star. Reminder. This is a faction series mission. You can complete below mentioned requirements during this mission. Capture I. Transfer 100 Dark Star captives to God Aura regardless of strength. Reward, 500,000 experience, plus 100 God Aura favorability. Capture 2. Transfer 10 Dark Star Elite Warriors to God Aura, grade C and above. Reward, 700,000 experience, plus 150 God Aura favorability. 24 targets in total. Expand slash collapse. When the mission ends, the rating will be given based on the number of targets completed. Bonus reward will be given. This A ranked mission had more than 20 targets, the easiest one being Capture Eye, which required him to capture some Dark Star members. Even the cleaners would count. The more difficult targets were destroying a certain number of battleships or even a Dark Star mothership. The most difficult ones were capturing or killing a certain high ranking individual. These mission targets depended on Ghidorah's actual reward for capturing Dark Star members. If there was a new threat, the mission list would refresh as well, adding new targets. Han Xiao did a count, and the mission rewards were very rich. Not mentioning the easier missions, the experience reward for those high-difficulty targets was at least 6 million, together with money and faction favorability. Completing some very difficult targets would also give the reward of a random reward, which might give something good. Those single-target missions had the richest reward, such as the target's unique ability or item. This is the subsequent events after the mutation disaster main storyline. The player's choices will cause them to enter different sides. 
God Aura and Dark Star are considered guides into the galaxy. The players entering the galaxy will be divided into two sides and unlock faction battles. I captured Dark Star's men, so I'm a member of the God Aura faction by default, thus triggering the God Aura series missions. The opposite mission will be Dark Star's ally. One is a lawful faction, and the other is an evil faction. The mutation disaster main storyline was not that easy. Dark Star was not just going to plant the virus and do nothing else. Triggering the disasters was just their way of completing their plan. It was not their final target. The players were a double-edged sword. Some were willing to unite, and some preferred chaos. Where there was unity, there would be division. As he was familiar with this mission, Han Shao was not surprised. Instead, the other S-ranked mission bloodline was the more interesting mission even though he had only heard of it before in his previous life. Bloodline was not a hidden mission, but it was very difficult to trigger. The normal method of triggering required a prerequisite of faction relationship with Dark Star or God Aura reaching reverence, which was 6,000 favorability. He had obviously triggered it through a different method. Although the prerequisite was quite high, many players triggered the mission nonetheless. However, no one had ever completed it. The difficulty of S-ranked missions was something on another level. They all had the same obvious characteristic. The mission introduction was extremely brief. Bloodline, S mission requirement was just one very vague target. Solve the Goderan's bloodline conflict. Other than that, there was nothing else. Not even the reward was written. The players could not get intel from the mission introduction, so they had no idea on the steps and methods required to complete the mission. They could only use their brains and collect information from countless NPCs, but it was like searching for a needle in a haystack. The universe was so huge. The high freedom of choice became an obstacle for the mission, and the players were like headless chickens. In his previous life, the players who accepted the mission worked together, walked down countless wrong paths, and were finally able to find the seemingly right path. This mission actually had hidden stages, and the completion of a certain stage was signified by causing a subversive change in the bloodline problem and receiving a rich stage reward. With this as the lead, only then were the players able to move forward slowly while stumbling. Still, even though the clues online could fill a hundred pages, no one could find a way to complete the final target. This mission was also listed in articles with titles like Those Missions That Made You Vomit Blood, Posts like these that recorded the history of the older versions of Galaxy were ways for newer players to know about the events that happened before. They were nicknamed Galaxy Chronicles. The progress of every novice planet had its own chapter. Countless players added on to it and created an enormous chapter. The great mechanic Han had been addicted to this before. He had read it like a novel, and it was a very good way to kill time while he set up stores, farmed gold, and boosted accounts. At least I know how to complete the earlier stages, so at least I will get something. And about the final result, I'll let fate decide. Bloodline could not be completed by any player back then, so Han Shao could not guarantee that he could complete it as well. However, he was not concerned about it. These three missions all had very rich rewards. Han Shao preferred this kind of developing missions that could last him a long time, and most of them were against Dark Star, which made him very motivated. Looks like I have quite a few things to do. He, Dark Star. Han Shao smiled. Other than these three missions, the Super Gene Extractor did not trigger the related event. Han Shao guessed that it was probably because he had only gotten the test version, or Dark Star had yet to start this plan. Without the additional mission, he paid attention to the effect of the extractor itself. Its effect was to extract the power genes of supers, which could then be stored or given to others. However, it was not permanent, it had a time limit. As the gene compatibility could not reach 1%, the genes would continuously die out after being planted into someone else, which meant that the power would gradually become weaker until it disappeared. The supers whose powers were taken away would also not lose their power forever. Their super genes were taken, but they could recover slowly, generating new genes, and their power would come back. The extraction strength could be adjusted as well. If it was only a little, the target's power would only be weakened temporarily. The good thing was that the extraction process could be repeated. Therefore, even without searching through his memories, Han Shao could guess what Darkstar would do with this. The extractor's effect is quite good. 
but what's its use to me? I'm not evil and I can't capture people and use them as supplies. Also, I can't use it on my people. Wait, this thing is a test version, so its effect is definitely not as strong as the final version. Plus, it's unstable. I should find a chance to test it. These thoughts raced through Han Zhao's head as he put the secret message beat away. Suddenly, he had a thought and asked, Master Angleton, can the magic seal be recovered? Angleton nodded and said with a smile, This secret message bead used an Amev 6 layer lock structure and had three mixed magic arrays embedded into it. Normal mages wouldn't be able to crack it. Luckily, you found me. I am specialized in analytics and identifying, so it's not difficult for me. I did not crack it the rough way. I left a lock clasp. So even an identification apprentice can recover the seal. Han Zhao's eyes sparkled. And he said, Then can you write the recover spell into a one-time use scroll? No problem, but there's an extra charge. Just 100 anas. Han Zhao's face twitched. This reminded him of the tragic experience of him going bankrupt. Angleton's kind smile suddenly became fraudulent in his eyes. Mages were indeed all profiteers. Angleton pulled out a magic scroll made from some kind of rare beast skin, then completed the scroll within one minute. After getting the scroll, Han Xiao paid the money and left without wasting any time. On the way toward the dock, Han Xiao found a hidden corner, took out the mutation source and extractor, then opened the magic scroll toward the secret message bead. Hum! With a flash of light, the secret message bead could not be twisted open anymore. It returned to its original state. The only difference was that Han Xiao had taken what was inside. Then, Han Xiao took out his communicator and contacted Will Sander. What's the matter, Black Star? Is Floating Dragon Island still in Fawn Galaxy? Currently making a stop at a planet to collect gaseous fuel. Not far from Holy Stone, right? Nearby the battlefield of that time, why ask? He he he. I want to ask you for a favor. After he finished the call, Han Xiao returned to the dock but did not continue to take the ship. He brought all his members along and exited the ship, expressing his intention of going somewhere else. The mercenaries were going to Ghidorah's mother planet to transfer the captives. So there was no need for him to follow. He was not the one that captured the captives, so it would not be calculated into his mission progress. Furthermore, after getting the mutation source, he was not in a hurry to come into contact with Godora. The three large armies did not have any objections. Goa, Porter, Serlini, and the others said their sincere goodbyes and told Han Xiao that they would work together again if there were opportunities in the future. Who? The Alliance fleet took off. The Black Star mercenary group stayed at the dock of Golden Palace, watching as the spaceships disappeared out of their sights, one after another. Haluz turned around and asked, Captain, what are we going to do now? Old Haluz, you take everyone back to you, Bayerly Hub. It was a tiring journey, so you guys should have a good rest. I have to make a trip back to Floating Dragon Island. With such a dependable officer, he did not have to bring the players alongside him all the time. The Golden Palace was very prosperous, and it had many docks. Han Xiao easily found a galactic travel agency and told Haluz to take the players, Arosia, and the Volga brothers and return to Uberly Hub. He found another travel agency and headed toward Floating Dragon Island. A few days later, the Alliance fleet arrived at the Ghadora mothership and received a warm welcome from the officials. Ghadoran senior officials personally came to welcome the mercenary fleets at the dock. The entire process was videoed and played on the Galactical Channel, announcing to all the star clusters that as long as someone damaged Dark Star, they would definitely reward them handsomely. After the routine welcome ceremony, Sirota and the other captives were transferred to Ghadora's military then sent to the Rainbow Prison. The officials realized that Han Xiao was not in the team and were uncertain. Why is Black Star not here? They left in advance to settle some stuff, hearing that this Godern official was a little sad. The higher-ups paid a lot of attention to this person that had made the Dragon Emperor create such a huge scene. He was thinking of using this opportunity to make some connection with Black Star, but Black Star was not here. The official told his men to send the reward to the mercenaries and emphasized, a part of this belongs to Black Star Mercenary Group. Please help to transfer. The three large armies would not take Han Zhao's part of the reward. 
so they naturally agreed. Also, they told Godora that Darkstar attacked them to find a black bead. Serlini and the mercenaries that had been captured were all asked this question during their interrogation, so Darkstar's target was obvious. Hence, the three large armies told Godora about this. As these two parties were in contact, Han Shao returned to Floating Dragon. Chapter 406 Throwing the Blame 2 Chapter 406 Throwing the Blame 2 Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Floating Dragon Island was floating above a huge gaseous planet. Numerous small unmanned harvesters were going back and forth, harvesting gaseous fuel for Floating Dragon like hardworking bees. In the guard's base, Han Shao met with Will Sander. This guy had bandages on his head, and he was still bleeding. The moment that he saw Han Shao, he immediately rushed over enthusiastically, placed his arm on Han Zhao's shoulder, and pulled him to the side. Then he said softly with a face full of excitement, the plan you mentioned, I think it's quite interesting. I told Jenny about it and she agreed. Did you bring the stuff? Han Shao took out the secret message bead and passed it to Will Sander, then said, do as we discussed. By the way, you know how to act, right? I can teach you if you don't. Do you think I need you to teach me? Will Sander said with disgust. How do you think I cleared my name to join Floating Dragon? Just wait for my good news. He then took the secret message bead with a smirk, gathered his subordinates, and took off in a spaceship. The spaceship drew an arc, then headed toward Holy Stone's direction. With a flash of light, it disappeared and jumped. Why is this guy more in a hurry than me? Han Xiao shook his head, unsure whether he should laugh or cry. What he did not know was that every day Will Sander was in Floating Dragon. He was either catching small thieves or maintaining order. And now that he could go out and stir up some trouble, no matter whose trouble, he was as happy as going on a vacation. As an ex-galactic pirate and a hybrid demon, chaos was in his blood. The fact that he could endure the boredom and stay in Floating Dragon was all because of love. Numerous space stations were fixed at the Holy Stone border like anchors. A large metal stronghold was floating in space. It was the third formation that was on duty. Holy Stone's fleet patrolled the area. In the Streamlight command room, Shivet was half lying down on his commander's seat, and his two legs were placed on the control panel, his hands behind his head. He was having a snooze, relaxing as he was having a sunbathe. This time, a subordinate reported, Commander, a spaceship is approaching. They've sent a contact request. Without even opening his eyes, Shivet asked lazily, Who is it? Air, one of the Dragon Guard trio, Guard Captain Red Wings Will Sander. Plop. The people in the room saw their commander fall straight off his seat. Shivet hastily helped himself up with the chair. His face was stiff. Whenever he heard the name Floating Dragon, he would have a feeling something bad was going to happen. The other party was Floating Dragon's Guard Captain. After seeing the Dragon Emperor's astonishing strength a few days ago, Shivet did not dare to not give face to them. The request was quickly approved. Streamlight came to the border, and an opening appeared on the side of the battleship. A mechanical magnetic tentacle extended out and sucked onto the spaceship. Will Sander boarded Streamlight, and Shivet brought his men along to welcome him. They met on the bridge. Are you Holy Stone's commander? Will Sander said with an expressionless face. Shivet nodded. Holy Stone Border Guards Army 3rd Formation Commander Shivet. May I know why you've come? Yes, here's the reason. A member of Floating Dragon was chased by Darkstar some time ago, and the Dragon Emperor personally attacked and defeated Darkstar. The mercenaries that were rescued exposed the fact that Darkstar's target was a black bead. Blackstar reported this to me, and I ordered my subordinates to search for it on the Floating Dragon Island just in case. To my surprise, the bead was really on Floating Dragon Island, and it turns out that one of my guards found it. He turned the bead in, and we planned to give it to Godora. Since your territory is nearby, I would like to ask you to help give it to Godora so that we don't have to waste time to travel. Will Sander said with a solemn tone as if these things had really happened. He took out the secret message bead and placed it in Shivet's hand while he was still stunned. Take this. What? I, I wait. Shivet was completely lost and could not form a complete sentence. The item has been delivered. 
I'll get going now. Will Sander turned around in a cool manner. He came quickly and left quickly, leaving a hot potato behind. To shive it, this was a disaster that fell from the sky, and he could not even reject it. Although this was a sensitive matter, it required little effort to help out, so there was no need to not give Floating Dragon Face. When the image of Floating Dragon Island crashing into the Dark Star mothership, his legs would turn wobbly. Floating Dragon Island was an entity that he could did not dare disrespect. Shivet reported this to the superiors immediately. After they had a discussion, they decided not to swallow the secret message bead themselves. Floating Dragon knew about this, so there was no way they could hide the fact that they took it. Furthermore, keeping the secret message bead would lead to Darkstar's hostility. Darkstar was very clear in how important this was to them. They wondered what was inside. Currently, Holy Stone was faced with a choice. Should they open the secret message bead and take a look? The answer was a definite yes. Since it passed by their hands, even if they did not take it, at least they had to take a peek and know what was going on. Anyway, the seal could be recovered, so there was no reason to be afraid. Holy Stone quickly dispatched an identification mage, who spent a day opening the secret message bead. However, the result left them dumbfounded. It was empty. How could it be empty? What did Darkstar want with this? Or was there a hidden message in it? This made Holy Stone realize what would happen if they gave it to Godora. The secret message bead was empty, and Godora would be suspicious, thinking that they had taken what was inside, and they could not even prove they did not. Holy Stone was frustrated, but a thought appeared in their mind. Did Floating Dragon take what was inside? Was passing it to Holy Stone just to frame them? But was there even a need for Floating Dragon to do this? Dark Star would not mess with them anyway. Holy Stone initially wanted to hide the fact that they opened the seal. Now they had no choice but to contact Godora and tell them the truth, that there was nothing inside from the start and that they did not take it. It was empty when Floating Dragon gave it to them. Floating Dragon probably took it long ago. Ghidorah's reaction was straightforward. Do you think I believe that? How dare you, Holy Stone? Not only did you steal what was inside, but you also want us to misunderstand Floating Dragon and cause trouble for us. How vicious! Holy Stone had no way to explain themselves or prove what they said. They could only firmly state that they did not take anything. They suspected and doubted each other, but the item still had to be delivered. After some discussion, they decided to meet up secretly. On Floating Dragon Island, Han Xiao heaved a sigh of relief after hearing from Will Sander. The blame has finally been thrown to someone else. Although Darkstar failed once, they would not give up so easily. They would still track the secret message bead, and the mercenaries and himself were the top targets. This was a hidden danger. Han Xiao had done this to clear his suspicion and divert the attention so that he and the other mercenaries would be safe. Goderin and Holy Stone would most likely keep it a secret. However, the next step of the plan was to have Will Sander accidentally leak the information. When that happened, for the sake of not being targeted by Darkstar, Holy Stone would definitely emphasize the fact that they gave the secret message bead to Godora. Darkstar would then have no need to guess where the secret message bead was and target Godora directly, not affecting others anymore. This would mean that the hidden danger was resolved, and that was very important to Han Xiao. Godora and Darkstar were enemies to start with, so they would not care, but Holy Stone was the unluckiest. They had gotten involved and dragged down out of nowhere, and they became suspected by Godora. Han Xiao had actually made targets that he could choose from, but he had chosen Holy Stone because they set him up once, so now it was his turn. You don't want any trouble? No problem, we will give you some. The secret message beat arrived in Ghidorah's hands, which meant that Darkstar basically could not take it back anymore. Only Holy Stone and Godora knew that it was empty. Darkstar had no idea. Even if Darkstar knew about it from other sources, they would think that Godora or Holy Stone took what was inside and would at most suspect that mysterious force that had also been tracing the secret message bead back then. On paper, the first party to have discovered the secret message bead was Floating Dragon Island. Han Xiao had been hidden in the dark all along, and now he pulled himself out of the equation. Regardless, he and the other mercenaries that had been chased before were now safe. This way, the risk should be minimized. Although I have Floating Dragon as my background, it is not me who they fear and respect. 
My strength is far from strong enough, and it's not suitable for me to face Darkstar head-on. I need to accumulate more strength. Maintaining stable growth is more important. The problem was finally resolved. Han Shao felt that his entire body was lighter. His identity on Floating Dragon Island was a field operative so he could move freely. Now that his goal had been achieved, he did not stay longer. A few days later, Han Shao took a travel agency and returned to Yubeerli Hub. Herluz had already taken the group back and was standing by and resting in the station. The three large armies had sent them the reward from Godora two days ago. It was quite a lot, 30,000 anas. Including this money, Han Shao had more than 70,000 anas in his account, reaching a new height. This was just the direct income. He had yet to count in the amount in the players' hands. This mission was not very dangerous for the players. The intel that they had was too little, so they did not know what was happening the entire time. With Han Shao doing the work secretly, they had made a huge fortune. Han Shao was pleased, too. His effort did not go to waste, and it would translate directly to the player's purchasing power. Unexpectedly, the hiring mission that was supposed to be simple turned out to be this complicated. Han Shao had taken quite a number of risks throughout the mission. He initially did this mission for compression technology, but he had benefited much more from it, and the value of the reward was much higher than he expected. Profit was accompanied by risk. Luckily, he was able to get out of the storm safely. After so long, Han Shao finally had the time to digest his reward. With the compression technology learned, my combat mode can be evolved to a large extent. I finally won't have to fight everything myself. Inside the machinery modification room, Han Shao rubbed his hands in anticipation. Chapter 407 Thoughts About a New Style Chapter 407 Thoughts About a New Style Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios The first step is modifying all my current machinery into a compressed form so that there will be no need to worry about not having enough backup machinery. Modifying all the current weapons was a large process. New structures needed to be added after these weapons were dismantled. Luckily, Han Zhao's current building speed was much faster than before. After being in solitude for two days, he had already finished this step. Even after staying up for two consecutive nights, Han Zhao was still wide awake. More than ten small metal orbs were laid out before him side by side. They were only the size of half of a palm, and their surface was covered in markings like matrixes. It had a very strong mechanic feeling. He lifted up a small orb and placed it flat on his palm. It hardly had any weight. There were two modes of compression. One could be opened by pressing a button, and the other could be activated by energy. The difference was the user's choice. The former meant that anyone could use it, and the latter required the magnetic energy of a mechanic to be activated, which meant that it could only be used by mechanics. These weapons were for his own use. Of course, he chose the latter mode. Bus. Electric light flashed past as Han Shao injected his energy into it. Clank. It was the sound of machinery components moving. The compressed metal orb quickly expanded, turning from palm-sized into the one-man-tall amphiptera mechanical suit. The expanding process was very quick. It took one to two seconds to complete. The front armor of amphiptera opened up like two leaves. Han Shao stepped in, and the armor closed. Amphiptera's tactical goggles lit up as the armor activated. Han Shao reached out and released magnetic energy toward the other small orbs. The energy quickly connected all the orbs together like a fork of lightning. A concentrated sound of machinery came out from these orbs, and in an instant they all expanded into all kinds of weapons, guns, cannons, scythes, bat wings, flying device, and so on. They attached to Han Zhao's body in a flash making him fully armed within a few seconds. Quite a good expanding speed, able to enter combat mode anytime. This way, there's no need to carry such bulky equipment everywhere. Han Shao was quite satisfied. He turned the machinery back to the compressed state. Modifying the original weapons was the first step. The biggest advantage was that the large increase in the number of weapons that he could possess. As for what kind of machinery he was going to add on, he was still thinking about it. The compression technology was called the Watershed of Mechanic Class. Once a mechanic gained that technology, they could change their combat style anytime and combo them with each other. 
With this ability came many advanced mechanic class combat styles. Originally, my combat style could adapt to all of close, mid, and long-range combat. The core of that was my mechanical suit. Technically, it was still a single-unit combat style. Among the combat styles compression technology can adapt to, the army style is the most widely known. There is also a more detailed segregation between army styles. When different machinery combinations are used, the focus point of the army style will be different as well. However, that's way too expensive. I can't afford it yet with my current financial power. It's not impossible to do if I want to force it, but it's not worth it. Another requirement of forming the army style was mass productions from an assembly line, which he could neither afford nor had the knowledge for. Most importantly, he had too few robot blueprints that could keep up with his current level. The army style had to consist of different combinations of machine types, like a strategic game. The number of robot types that he could build was not high enough, and there was no strong robot that could play a huge role in combat. The technology used in Rangers could not keep up with his current level. It was still good for bullying those who had a low level, but when it came to fighting with someone around the same level, they would be dismantled in no time. Regardless, he had a rather clear plan. There are a few goals that I need to achieve for now. First, get rid of single unit combat, build allies that can fight individually and steal the enemies. Second, enhance my own area attack capabilities and attack range. Third, build a defense barrier around me using machines, viable for both attack and defense. Fourth, mobility. So that I can retreat from the battlefield when the situation goes bad, I need to build disruptive and lure devices, as well as machinery to assist in my retreat. Fifth, since I now have the compression technology and basic machinery construction, I can build a huge weapon, dismantle it into parts compressed into small orbs, spend some time during combat to build it up, and make it my trump card. Furthermore, it will work very well with my flaming will. Also, if the enemy is able to close the distance between us, I will also need combat abilities to protect myself. That will require many mechanical pugilist-style melee or mid-range weapons. This way, he would change his style from singled-out kiting style to outnumbering the enemy with his machinery. Han Shao wrote down these key elements, then started to recall the suitable machinery. After biting his pen for a while, a plan quickly formed in his head. There are four styles that are most suitable for me now. Multi-turret firepower coverage style, giant war cannon style, landmine planting trap style, and hound style. These styles were the comparatively simpler styles to outnumber enemies. Other than the giant war cannon style, the other styles only needed low-level machinery, using quantity to make up for quality, cheap and affordable. Although it was a little humble, it was practical regardless. The multi-turret firepower coverage style would solve the firepower problem. The giant war cannon style would serve as a trump card. The trap style would act as a barrier. And the hound style could prevent enemies from getting too close. In the case of mobility, the mechanical suit could already solve it, or he could build a small single-person transportation tool. The original single-unit combat mode already ensured his personal combat ability. He just had to update his mechanical suit. With the Void Dragon Bone and mini nuclear reaction furnace that he had gotten from Floating Dragon, he just happened to be able to build a new series mechanical suit. After completing the plan, Han Shao opened the interface and started to combine blueprints. He needed a large number of low-level blueprints this time. He had one. Five billion experience left, a number that the players at the current stage could not even imagine. The reason that the mechanic class was the most difficult class was because of the blueprint gambling system. It was a bottomless hole of experience, and with every repeated use of the same combination, the experience required would double. For players, they would usually only use the same combination five or six times. If they were still unable to get the machinery that they wanted after that, they would normally give up because the risk would be way too high. If they spent hundreds of thousands of experience and took the gamble but only combined a useless blueprint or a low-level machinery, their mindset would be completely slanted. Regardless, it is exciting indeed. If a mechanic could not get the blueprint that they wanted, and the other blueprints would be useless after their level increased, it would mean that they would never be able to build that machinery. Therefore, the difference between mechanic players was quite large. After all, not everyone could splurge like Han Shao no matter the cost. Ding ding ding.
the interface notification kept ringing. Dozens of low-level machinery blueprints were finally all created after spending more than 30 million experience, and this was the expense of using just the basic knowledges. If he did not know the various combinations clearly, it would have cost 30 to 40 percent more. Han Zhao's ability list became very long and dazzling. After counting, Han Xiao received a total of six types of artillery, four types of robots, eight types of mechanical traps, eleven types of firearms, seven types of close-range mechanic weapon, and some other random blueprints. Although there were multiple low-level machinery of the same category, they all had different functions. Now that my blueprint inventory is richer, I have many more choices, Han Xiao nodded. This was not his only target. With these low-level blueprints, there's more material to invent blueprints. By combining the advantages of the blueprints of the same category and inventing a new blueprint, I will then create equipment of my own. It will be top-notch machinery in the same level and category, and its power might exceed its level. To combine the advantages of multiple blueprints and create his own blueprints. This was the reason he combined so many low-level machines. Han Xiao left the modification room and headed to the market area to purchase materials. He had more than 70,000 anas in his account. Taking out a small part of it would be sufficient for him to buy a large number of low-level parts. He just had to wait for them to be delivered. Before that, he had promised to lose to build a mechanic prosthetic. In the machinery modification room, Herluz took off the bandages and exposed his empty left shoulder, on which was a very neat wound. He was a little nervous. What do I need to do? Han Xiao was measuring and recording the size of Herluz's wound, and without even looking up, he replied, Just don't scream too loud. Will? Will it hurt a lot? I will have to cut open your wound and connect the mechanic arm with your nerves, so the pain level should be the same as cutting your arm off again, then putting a piece of metal in your open flesh. Double the pain, buy one, get one free. Halu's face became stiff. Can I take anesthetics? Do you not have an idea of your physical capabilities? Han Xiao took out a small orb expressionlessly, and it expanded into a large hammer. Do you want me to give you a physical anesthetic? Never mind. If I wake up midway, I would have taken the beating for nothing. Haluz swallowed his saliva. Wait a while first. After Han Xiao finished measuring, he took out the materials and started building on the workbench. His movements were extremely fast and dazzling. Herluz sat at the side very nervously, and seconds felt like years. Not long after, a mechanical arm was crafted. It had a silver alloy armor, various power output structures, a small shield fixed onto the back of the hand and the forearm, and many tiny nerve connection ports where it connected to the body. Han Xiao had the nerves connection knowledge, so he had combined a prosthetic mechanical arm blueprint before coming. He took out a small knife and slashed open the scab on the wound. Her lose shivered instantly. Then, Han Xiao picked open the flesh with a small plier, lifted up the mechanical arm, aimed at the wound, and pressed it down. Hum! The mechanical arm booted up, and many thin, long needles extended out from the connection port and drilled into Herlu's bones to connect to the nerves. TSSS. Herlu's body tightened immediately, and large beads of sweat rolled down his body. He clenched his teeth, but a muted scream still came out between his teeth. After more than ten minutes, the pain finally started to fade. Through the pain, Herlu's regained the senses of his left arm. He tried moving his arm. The mechanical arm moved as he willed through the nerve connection with a buzzing sound. It was practically as swift and lively as a normal arm. So, this is what prosthetics feel like, Herlu said. Then, he waved his arm, slammed his fist on the ground. Boom! He created a shallow pit on the metal floor. This is the S-30 prosthetic shield arm, strong power, thick armor, a rather good model used for pure physical combat. Use this for the time being, Han Xiao said. Haluz nodded. The prosthetic mechanical arm could not generate energy, so his strength as a pugilist was somewhat weakened, but at the very least, it was much better than not having a left arm. Haluz hated Ember, who had turned him into a disabled, but he feared him more. He never wants to meet Ember again. Luckily, that horrifying guy was already dead. Besides, the disability was just temporary. Black Star had said that he had a chance to recover 
so her lose could not help but look forward to it. By the way, two days ago, the other Sunil warriors contacted me. They said that they want to discuss something with you. Haluz suddenly recalled. What do they want to discuss with me? To borrow money? Tell them don't even think about it. Not that. Haluz coughed, and he was a little embarrassed. Actually, they want to join Black Star Mercenary Group. Because of what had happened with the Dragon Emperor, Han Shao had become a nouveau riche in the mercenary industry. From what Haluz felt, the goal of joining Black Star at this juncture was very clear. They wanted to benefit from Han Zhao's identity and fame. By using Black Star's rocketing connections in the industry, they would be able to get better treatment, which would, in turn, help them earn more money. Therefore, it was a little bit embarrassing for Haluz to say. However, life for these warriors was not easy. So he could only agree to help the mercenaries of his race say a few words. He was nervously waiting for Han Zhao's response. Chapter 408 Expansion Chapter 408 Expansion Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Han Zhao's eyes sparkled. Due to the Dragon Emperor's influence, Black Star's name was now well known. Making more connections in the mercenary industry would equate to more hiring opportunities, plus higher rewards. Those that chose to become a mercenary mostly did so for money, and this was very attractive to normal mercenaries. If I make an announcement and send out recruitment notices, there will be thousands of bottom-level mercenaries who respond. Although expanding is beneficial for me now, there's no need to hurry it. I have the foundation now, what I need to do is strengthen Black Star's position. There's no need to expand quickly. Stable growth is more important. Outsiders were not dependable, and his name was on the line. Han Zhao's target was the future players. He was now just waiting for the next version to start, and then he would be able to recruit thousands of players. His size would then reach the level of the three large armies. He was not short of manpower, so there was no need to expand in a hurry. Regardless, Sunils are a very high-quality combat power. Ever since their split, their already bad situation became worse, so their desire to earn money is stronger. How many want to come? Han Xiao asked. About a hundred or so. They saw the news, so they reached out to me, expressing their desire to join Black Star. A hundred was just a small part of all the Sunil warriors. They saw the Shattered Star Ring express news and recalled that the Grade B Super Haluz of their race was in Black Star. So, someone suggested the idea, gathered about a hundred other Sunil mercenaries, and came to join Han Shao. Let me talk to them personally, Han Shao said. Haluz contacted them. A familiar face appeared on the communicator screen. It was Lurton, whom Han Shao had met before. As he knew Han Shao personally, he had been chosen as the representative. We meet again, Black Star, Lurden said. Han Shao nodded and went straight to the point. You guys want to join my mercenary group? Yes, what we mean is to carry out Black Star's missions under your name. And for that, we are willing to turn in 15% of our commission, Lurden said. Although they had to give a certain amount of their commission with Black Star's connections, they would receive better treatment and be safer. They would only end up earning more. So, that's the joining tactic? Han Zhao's eyes spun. He provided resources and the Sunils provided the labor, both taking what they want. Plus, the more officers in the faction, the better. These were all NPC resources. Naturally, the Sunils did not know what Han Xiao was thinking. From their perspective, they benefited more from this deal. Therefore, at this moment, both Herluz and Lurden were looking at Han Xiao nervously. Han Xiao put on a pondering face, kept silent for a while, glanced at the nervous face of these two, and then pointed two fingers. I want twenty percent. Seeing that Han Xiao had given his terms, Lurden heaved a sigh of relief and agreed. After some discussion, they decided on the cooperation plans. These hundred or so Sunil mercenaries joined Black Star and formed a team on their own. An application request popped up on the mercenary group panel in the communicator. Soon after, about a hundred more names appeared on the member list. Han Xiao glanced at them one by one. These Sunils were all experienced mercenaries with very long mission resumes. These Sunil mercenaries are quite capable. They are quite a force now that they are gathered together. He nodded in his mind. This team was Black Star's first detachment, the Sunil Division. 
The highly skilled players and himself were the direct members. The size of the mercenary group multiplied by two to three times instantly. The Sunil division was like the employees, and Han Shao just had to receive the money. It's indeed much more comfortable being a boss. With connections and resources, there will indeed be people who will willingly work for you. Han Shao opened up the Black Star Mercenary Group page. Its information had already been updated. Black Star Mercenary Group. Credibility. 198. Scale. 173 members. Grade D, 41. Grade C, 52. Grade B, 2. Hires completed, 2. Main activity area. Garten Galaxy. Records. Sunil Defense Battle. Expand slash collapse. Silver Rescue Operation. Expand slash collapse. Creator. Black Star Han Shao. Creation date. Galaxy Calendar Year 688. October 2nd. Summary. Small medium sized mercenary group. Has a good name. Has a partnership with Sky Ring, Blades, Purple Gold, and other large mercenary groups. This mercenary group belongs to the Dragon Emperor. As expected, the Mercenary Alliance wrote in the information about me being a member of Floating Dragon, Han Shao thought. This was a label that he would not be able to get rid of in a short period of time. The news brought him many points of renown in several areas of Shattered Star Ring. The total renown of his faction was 67, many times of what he previously had. Although the total was not little when counted individually, his renown in other star zones was actually just one to two points. To most people in the galaxy, they had only heard of Black Star. The good thing was, the faction interface only counted the total renown. If he wanted to get to this number through the normal method, he would have to take at least one to two hires at each of these areas. This had saved him from needing to do 20 to 30 hires. Han Shao talked to Lurden for a while and told the Sunil warriors to gather at Uberli Hub. Haluz was overjoyed. From what he saw, Black Star willingness to accept his people was him giving them a helping hand in their tough times. How righteous! After getting rid of Haluz, Han Shao opened the player forums, which he had not visited for a very long time. Countless posts had appeared. The time between these posts being posted was very short, which meant it was very active. He glimpsed through. There were all kinds of posts such as showing off equipment, discussing duels, selling things, asking to team up, arguing, telling stories, and many more. The earliest batches of players were already familiar with the game. They had started to go deeper into the storyline and train their skills. Other than Planet Aquamarine, the main storylines of other novice planets were still going. The other planet did not have someone like him who stirred up everything, so their game experience was very normal. Also, many new players had joined the game recently, so there were many posts from these new players on the forums asking for help. Coordinates Planet Winterfrost Pond of Bones. Need a pro to carry Frost Baptism Dungeon. Price is to be discussed. This was from someone who was willing to pay. Planet Lasting Song Villager here. Please help me farm Bandit Canyon. I can last hit and shout. Well played. This was from a noob player. Female with a cute voice, soft body, and 8 out of 10 face looking for a male mentor. Need to be thoughtful, handsome, gentle, caring, in possession of a magnetic voice, experienced in providing comfort. No chauvinists or hideous men. Thanks. This was one of a kind. Without context, people would think that this was an online dating personal profile. It had been almost three months since Han Shao left Planet Aquamarine. Many new players had joined the game. The situation on Planet Aquamarine did not change much, and Sanctuary 3 had become one of the default gathering places of players. The prefix Black Phantom on Sanctuary 3 had sparked curiosity in some new players. They had asked around about who Han Shao was, which gave the old players opportunities to show off their seniority, explaining Han Zhao's past with a lot of emotion, telling the new players that there was this legendary person. Han Zhao's name became more well-known. There are more and more players now, but it's still very far from Galaxy's Peak in my previous life. Anyway, this is only the first version. These players will become the most senior players in a few versions. As the versions are upgraded, the level limit of the players will increase, and the environment will become more dangerous. However, this is a double-edged sword, 
as long as I always maintain the lead with the help from the players, I will be able to strengthen my position in the universe. Speaking of which, time will not be synced during version updates, and players will disappear too. In just over a year, the first version update will arrive. It had been some time since he had last visited the forums. As his current activity area basically had nothing to do with the players, he did not pay much attention to the status of players as a whole. Conversely, the players paid a lot of attention to his actions. Bunhitdog's videos were the only source of information on the galaxy, so every release of an episode was extremely popular. Bunhitdog edited his videos to look like a drama show. The first episode was when they came to Uberly Hub and created the Mercenary Group. The second episode was the Sunil Defense Battle. The latest was the third episode, which was about Black Star joining Floating Dragon. Ember had yet to make an appearance, it was mainly introducing the three large armies and floating dragon, as well as the dock scrimmage to rescue the silver captives, followed by the highly skilled players catching thieves in the guards after joining floating dragon. Compared to the two previous episodes, the popularity of this episode created a new high once again. Han Xiao had yet to watch it. He clicked open the video, and the introduction was covered in countless comments. He gave a closer look and realized that these comments were all very similar. 47 colon 35. The screen is covered in long legs. Ah, please marry me. Ms. Dragon Emperor. Ames is mine. Draw your sword. Han Zhao's mouth twitched. He finally understood why this episode was so popular. At least half of the audience came to look at Ames. Chapter 409, Black Star Series. Episode 3. Chapter 409, Black Star Series, Episode 3, Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios. Han Xiao liked to watch Bun Hit Dog's videos. It was a way for him to relax and have fun. At the start of every episode, Bun Hit Dog always did a summary of the previous episode, making it similar to a drama. The third episode was connected to the previous episode. This time, the background displayed before the players was much larger, and there were the space battles, the river of stars, and many more, giving the players a clearer knowledge of more details of the galaxy. More and more forces appeared, silvers from another star field, three large mercenary armies, the floating dragon island, and so on. The video was made from Bun Hit Dog's third-person perspective. It started from the silver recruitment to arriving at the colorful and dangerous floating dragon island where large mercenary teams roamed. There were thousands of strange species and equipment. The viewers felt a sense of immersion, which sparked their interest. The comments was full of envy. Sigh. How I envy these god-tier players. Able to enter the space. They are strong after all. Don't you guys remember what happened last time? Only true men can last 30 seconds with Black Phantom. He he only the god-tiers players of our country have been up to the sky. I heard that the professional clubs of other countries are feeling very stressed. Their players are working overtime every day just to do more missions. The clubs were preparing for the National League in nine months' time. These pro players following Han Xiao had the perfect opportunity to develop, which made the other competing players very stressed. Bun Hit Dog's cuts between scenes were very straightforward. The next event came very soon. The mercenary group had locked onto the target and the dock scrimmage started in an instant. It was a scrimmage involving hundreds of people. There were countless abilities used, forming colorful lights and explosions, almost deafening to the ears. There were pirate groups shooting lasers simultaneously, pugilists crashing into each other head-on, and many more. The viewers were dazzled. They felt like they were in the battlefield themselves, like a boat in the midst of a storm. Following Bun Hit Dog's perspective behind Han Xiao and charging forward, breaking through everything before them. From the perspective in the video, the audience could see Han Zhao's battle very clearly. Han Xiao was in a complex and black mechanical suit. A pair of mechanical turbo bat wings extended behind his back, and his scythe was covered in electric sparks, like a god of death. Then, the heavy attachments fell from the sky automatically attaching themselves onto Han Zhao's body through magnetic connections, changing into siege mode in a blink of an eye. The four-meter-tall mechanical exoskeleton giant waved his hand like an iron sphere, crushing the enemies. Han Xiao was unstoppable. These metal parts look so cool. 
I wonder if he can transform and roll out one. Ah, these angular lines. Ah, this complex structure. This is the beauty of machinery. Beauty is all mechanic class has. It's really trash when it comes to fighting. Us pugilists rank first in professional PKs. What do you think? All you pugilists do is punching and kicking. There's zero technicality to it. What's the fun in playing that? You have no idea how fun the mechanic class is. The excitement of gambling blueprints. The sense of achievement of finally building a piece of machinery after collecting materials. The fun in combining styles. And then, the machinery that you spent so much effort building is turned into waste with a few punches from us. Ha 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 ha. Well, aren't you arrogant? If you're so good, why don't you look for Frenzied Sword? Do you think his title of top mechanical pugilist in China is just for show? Also, have you seen the video of North America's top mechanic during his competition? How many pugilists did he defeat with ease with his dazzling machinery combos? Well said, I choose Esper. The mechanic class is really too costly. Can't top up enough. All of you are trash. My spells will make you feel sorry. Other than these arguing comments, there were also people who discussed normally. Black Phantom is stronger than before. Was he always this strong, or was he slowly getting stronger? The planet Aquamarine players are smiling silently. Didn't the Galaxy Times mention that this kind of NPC is a main character, and they are very strong? I think, since Black Phantom said that a disaster will happen in planet Aquamarine, and he went to space to look for a solution, he will definitely play a part in the next version's Planet Aquamarine storyline. Think about it, space is the future, and something will definitely happen that helps us go from our planets into space. I'll bet 50 cents that he'll have something to do with it, waiting for analysts to get slapped on the face. Tisk, Floating Dragon's culture is so savage. Other than discussions, there were also show-off comments. From a time I started to have senses. First, a small piece of metal, then more parts were birthed. My world was filled with darkness. I can't see, but I could feel someone was creating my body. As time passed, I started to have more senses. One day, I suddenly felt pain. A pain that gradually made my mind clearer. Finally, I had eyes. I tried opening them, and I saw a dense number of data streams in my vision. What are these? I was curious. A warm stream of light landed on me, and the colors of the world appeared before my eyes. I looked down and I saw a small mechanical spider. Is this my body? I thought. This time, I heard someone's voice above me. It's finally complete. He sounded happy. I looked up following the voice. A man looked at me from above, his eyes filled with love, smiling. I had never seen a smile before, and it turns out they're so pure and gentle. He is my creator. A sense of connection appeared from the bottom of my heart. But, why do I have a heart? Why do I have emotions? I'm just a machine. Have you gifted these to me, my creator? The man reached out his hand and stroked my body, his temperature passing through my cold armor. It turns out that is what warmth feels like. It's so comfortable. I couldn't help but rub against his hand. He smiled and said, Looks like the artificial senses are very successful. The artificial nerves are working perfectly. Hmm. Let's put this on standby first. Suddenly, my body stood straight up on its own, and I couldn't move anymore. At this moment, I understood. Although I have sensed, although I can feel temperature, although I can feel pain, what's really controlling me is an artificial intelligence program. I'm just a machine. I can't even be counted as a life. The meaning of my existence is to follow the programmed orders. But the effort you put in gave me senses. They let me feel this world. Feel life. That's fair. Isn't it? It's all right. I'm willing to be trapped in this body and watch you silently. Thank you for creating me. Holy. A master appeared. That was some passage right there. Literature master. Do you want an orange? Han Xiao enjoyed reading such works. The players had really rich creativity. Other than those normal comments, the rest were all regular spam comments from the fans of pro players. Boss Lee Ge's handsome face belongs to Lee Go Fan Club. I, Hao Tian, don't agree. Fight me. Old Wong, King Admiral. 
is looking at you second-rate contestants fight with a smile. Black Phantom Engineering Team is here in the comment section to do construction. Irrelevant people stay back. What he did not expect was that there were players who sent spam messages with his name. This made his eyes sparkle. Being turned into a meme was one of the signs of becoming a renowned character, so he did not expect himself to have fans. The video was still playing, and the comments were chaotic. However, when Ames appeared, these different comments all disappeared. They all became rampaging comments of praise. Ames appeared at the dock, sitting on her dragon bone throne. She wore a high-cut black dress, showing a huge portion of white on her think, long legs. She was beautiful and stylish, surrounded by a mysterious aura. Combined with her astonishing strength, her attractiveness multiplied. The viewers could not take it. Holy sh asterisk t. Top level beauty. All of you, go away. I'm gonna lick the screen till it explodes. Dragon Emperor Ames, one of the four beyond grade A supers in the Shattered Star Ring. Damn, she is way too sexy. Quickly, pass some tissues to me. Don't misunderstand. I need them to wipe off the blood from my nose. Oh, how dominant. I'm a female, yet I was seduced. Quick, screenshot. I want to use it as wallpaper. Such a shame her chest is flat. What the hell do you know? What need does such a dominant beauty have for a chest? Let me introduce you. This is my new wife. I hereby announce that the Ames Guards is created at this very moment. Ames' time of appearance was not long. It ended quickly, and the video went into the following events. The video ended at the pro players catching the thieves as members of the Dragon Guards. There were some pro players' interactions with each other played afterward as bloopers. However, ever since Ames appeared, the comments were stuck on her and could not get out. Her screen time was too short. I want to continue watching her long legs. Who the hell wants to watch these pro players? Go away. I have betrayed my belief. Give my Ames back to me. Han Xiao closed the video and did not know whether to laugh or to cry. Beautiful females were always popular. After all, most of the people who played games were males, females were very rare. Ames appeared out of nowhere, so her popularity rocketed, almost surpassing his popularity, which he took so long to build. She was strong, sexy, and her position was superior to most, which was very attractive. Her conditions were way too much better than Han Xiao. There was nothing that Han Xiao could do about it. He was frustrated, too. In order for male characters to be popular, there had to be something unique, either a strange person, a real man, or extremely strength. He was confident that being handsome was not something that he was short of, but the other factors were not high enough at the moment. Anyway, the more popular Ames is among the players, the more I will benefit from it. I am currently under the Dragon Emperor, and as long as the players know about that, I can share her popularity and increase the attractiveness of my faction. This was just something extra for Han Xiao. According to his original blueprint, even without Ames influence, he would also be able to make a large number of Planet Aquamarines players join him willingly. Regardless, the higher the influence, the better. He did not have a problem with it. In two days, the materials I ordered will arrive. The number of machines that I have to build this time is very large, so I'll probably have to build in solitude for quite some time. It's best to first give those players something to do and make sure they're not too bored, or they will cause trouble. Freeabnovel.com Bon Hit Dog had been very troubled lately. Although the third episode reached a new level of popularity because of Ames, made him well known, and gave him a lot of fans, it also gave Bun Hit Dog trouble. The Dragon Emperor was too popular. Many viewers sent him private messages requesting him to put in more scene, including with Ames in them. Of course, Bun Hit Dog was very willing to do so. He had even already thought of the content of episode 4. It would connect to episode 3 including the twists and turns that came after, finally saving the silvers, adding on new members, all the way to being chased by Darkstar and the Dragon Emperor's arrival, creating a sensation. But the problem was, he did not have the recording of this part. When they were chased by the Darkstar fleet, during the times when he was not doing anything in the spaceship, he was hiding underground, so he had no chance to record at all, and he even missed the part where Ames completely destroyed Darkstar's fleet. This had made him truly regretful. It was such a majestic scene filled with explosive material, and he did not record it. 
What a dereliction of duty. Therefore, he had always been frowning lately. No matter how hard he thought, he could not think of a way to make up for this part of the content. At this time, Han Xiao entered the resting hall of the stronghold and looked around. Most players were there. They saw him walk in, and all eyes turned to him, flashing with anticipation. In the eyes of these players, Black Star Mercenary Group was a growing faction of which they could drive the growth. They were looking forward to what items would be updated in the faction store after this higher mission. Chapter 410 The Beginning of Suffering Chapter 410 The Beginning of Suffering Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios After glancing over the player's anticipation-filled eyes, Han Xiao opened the faction panel and put in Sunil NCO class armor along with some low-level machinery blueprints that he had combined earlier and did not need anymore. Blueprints were only usable for mechanics. The main seller was the NCO class armor. He earned the extra repairing fees and enhancing fees from the player's enlistee class armor last time. Now that he had introduced the NCO class armor, those players with money in their pockets would not be petty. There were three types of Sunil armor defense, offense, and scouting. The NCO class armor was enhanced in all three types. On average, their armor durability was three times higher than the enlistee class armor, the total attributes bonus was 15 points greater, and the melee damage was increased by 20 points. There were also new parts. The scouting style armor could move very fast. It had spring mechanics in its legs which allowed the user to jump higher and further, and chain blades could be ejected out of the arm, which meant that it would not be afraid of close distance combat. The defense style armor was equipped with heavy firepower. Weighted toward long-range combat, it had a handheld high-caliber cannon with armor-piercing bullets, and the cannon could be folded. After expanding it, the cannon was about one man size. With every shot, the flame from the cannon was like a cloud of thick smoke from an explosion, and the bullet shot out was like a mini flaming meteor. Its fire rate was very high, its bullet magazine capacity was 250, and there were many backup magazines. The offense style had the advantages of both of the other styles, it was well-rounded. Some time ago, Li Gu had exchanged an NCO class armor for the secret message bead. It was a scouting style armor. Because of this, the others knew about the attributes of the armor and were all envious. Once they saw that the faction store had updated, they were all excited. There was no need for introduction, they all bought it as fast as possible. The price he set was 1,400 anas, and he also set a reputation cost which was 1,000 reputation points. He had set that between 0 to 1,000 favorability, 50 anas could exchange for 100 faction reputation. The players had spent 500 reputation points last time when they bought the enlistee class armor and spent all their reputation points. After this mission, Han Xiao had rewarded them another 300 points. Such a scheme meant that the real cost of buying an NCO class armor was 1,750 anas. The players received about 5,000 anas from the silver as a reward, and this would cost them more than a third of that. However, the players did not hesitate at all. The pro players earned money for the sake of buying equipment to increase their strength as much as they could. There were seven NCO class armors in stock, the rest were all pre-orders. The players were used to it, and they did not doubt the faction's credibility at all. The first seven people to purchase got the physical item. It was made of gray metal, thick, tough, and angular. It was uniquely attractive. Frenzied Sword got one. He wore it quickly and put on the helmet. His vision became overlapped with the analytical vision from the helmet. Every item that he saw had a database tag on it. A mechanical mixed voice appeared in the helmet. Welcome to Black Star. Your serial number is HA0001. Carrying out auto check. Check complete. Armor status. 100%. Liquid power. Intact. Weapon system. Intact. Spring system. Intact. User vital signs. Normal. Frenzied Sword tried moving his arms and legs, creating the clankings of mechanical parts moving, adding power to his movements. His punches made whooshes in the air. This armor is so much stronger than the enlistee class armor. I bought the scouting type so it's very mobile which works very nicely with heavy weapons, decreasing the effect of the bulkiness. I will be able to battle very swiftly, 
frenzied sword happily thought. As a mechanical pugilist, he used melee weapons most of the time. The NCO class armor gave him the most benefits as compared to others. The mechanic class was the class with the highest armor bonuses. The players of other classes could use them too, and its effect was pretty decent. It gave them extra protection and firepower as well as more health. Mostly, they needed the various functions of the armor. For example, the very paper one mages could wear a protective armor, then stand still and only do damage output. This kind of mixed style was very strange and funny. The enlistee class and NCO class armors were uniform armors. The stronger commander class was for supers, and it had even stronger attributes. Han Shao had yet to learn how to build it. As always, Han Shao held back when building the armor, leaving room for enhancements. Other than armor, the few mechanic players in the faction liked the newly added blueprints more. They were afraid and careful every time they gambled on blueprints, and now they could directly learn quite a few blueprints from Han Shao. They were overjoyed. The blueprints that Han Shao put in were, of course, types that were not important but were still useful regardless. He kept the important blueprints for himself and sold the not-so-important ones. It was more effective this way. Maple Moon's eyes were shining, and her cute face was filled with joy. Optical confusion trap, this is not bad. Wait, that scattered shot turret is quite good as well. Even though Maple Moon was considered as a quite casual girl, the mechanic class had still made her develop a habit to control her spending very tightly. One blueprint only cost 300 to 400 anas, much cheaper than gambling blueprints. She used her fingers to press one time after another, buying again and again. Han Xiao paid more attention to the mechanic players. Not only because they were of the same class as him and it was easier to earn their money, but also because they could become his helpers once they grew stronger, which might help him to enter the next stage of the mechanic class in advance. Of course, the other pro players did not care about these blueprints. Only the NCO class armor suited their taste. Selling things was not Han Zhao's main goal. He gave out a number of faction missions, which he had prepared long ago, and their rewards were all dungeon crystals. He had intercepted some later parts of Germinal Organization storyline and created level 60 dungeons, as well as the recent Warfare, Power of the Dragon Emperor. Dungeon crystals could only act as a mission reward and could not be sold directly, but rules were dead and inflexible. He planned to make these missions that rewarded Dungeon Crystal's repeatable missions, and the only requirement to complete that mission was to increase a certain amount of faction reputation after accepting the missions. Frubnell.com. He purposely set it as increase and not reach a certain amount. For example, after accepting the mission and increasing reputation by 500 points, the mission for Warfare, Power of the Dragon Emperor would be complete, and that Dungeon Crystal would be rewarded. At the same time, the other dungeon missions with lower numbers would be completed as well, making the players feel they took a shortcut. This way, more players would be attracted to spend money to buy reputation. Once they spent money to purchase reputation, they would have to spend it one way or another. The faction reputation could only be used with Han Shao, so this would, in turn, encourage expenditure. Also, once above 1,000 favorability, the cost of buying reputation would increase. If the players wanted more dungeon crystals, they would have to repeat the process of buy reputation, spend money, buy reputation again. Although, sometimes, there was no new product, he had many extra services, such as repairing and enhancing. If the player wanted to buy something initially, this kind of mission would become a bonus reward. It would work as a promotion. If the player just wanted the dungeon crystal, it would attract spending. Anyway, there was only one service belief. Don't ever have to worry about not being able to spend your money here. Han Shao was very bad. He only gave out this mission after the players bought the armor. Wow, new missions and the rewards are dungeon crystals. The requirement is to increase reputation. How sad. If there was this mission earlier, it would already be completed. Actually, it doesn't matter. We still need to enhance armor and whatnot anyway. Furthermore, there will definitely be chances to use Black Star's reputation in the future. Hey, there's a new dungeon here, Power of the Dragon Emperor. Isn't this the event that we experienced a few days ago? So, not only does the faction update the store, it also turns our experiences into dungeons. They were surprised. 
The benefit of a growing faction was really so good. This was a pleasant surprise. After they followed Black Star into space, they had yet to meet a dungeon. They did not expect that this faction had dungeon of its own. After they experienced more hires, new events would be turned into new dungeons as well, which meant that they could choose it themselves. Seeing this, Han Xiao thought, that's right, if a faction can stably provide dungeons, it's another type of attractiveness. The people were most curious about the Dragon Emperor dungeon. This was a new dungeon that they had never seen before. In the crowd, Bun Hit Dog saw warfare, power of the Dragon Emperor S mission. Suddenly, his heart started beating faster, and his eyes became brighter. This dungeon, the scene back then might be displayed again. His heart was pumping fast. He immediately bought 500 reputation. With excitement, he touched the dungeon crystal, and a message popped up on the interface. LV-90 Dungeon Crystal Warfare Power of the Dragon Emperor Introduction At the border crossing of Colton Star Cluster's Holy Stone Civilization and Black Raven Civilization, a mercenary group was chased by the Dark Star Fleet. At the most urgent time, Dragon Emperor Ames arrived. This will be your test. Dungeon Type Backward Time Travel Dungeon Player Limit 10 Player Completion Count 0 Highest Dungeon Completion Rate None Record Holders None The people extended their head to this direction and saw the item introduction, and they were all shocked by it. Level 90 Dungeon this had exceeded their level limit. The level on Dungeon Crystal did not represent the required level to enter, but the suggested level to complete it. Even a level 1 player could enter a level 60 dungeon, but of course, the result of that would be obvious, that player would not be able to do anything inside. Even if the level 1 player found a team of boosters because of the large difference between them and the dungeon enemies, there will be a very high experience penalty and rating penalty. Dungeons could be used to farm experience and train skills, but the equipment inside could not be taken back out. However, if the rating was high after completing the dungeon, one could be rewarded with the chance to draw items and equipment from inside. These were the benefits of dungeons. Dungeon had a challenge time limit, which would be refreshed every certain period. In order to receive top-tier weapons in the dungeons, if one could not get the highest rating, it would be a dream. Till now, the players from various planets had challenged many dungeons, but the number of dungeons that rewarded good equipment or items was very low, not to mention the difficulty. Regardless, players had never seen a level 90 dungeon before. They were all shocked by the fact that Black Star Mercenary Group could give out such a high-level dungeon. Han Xiao smiled in his mind, turned around, and left. NCO-class armor, blueprints, and dungeon missions a total of 98,000 anus profit, close to 100,000. Including the money I already have before this, the balance in my account is already more than 130,000, which is at least enough for three class advancement knowledges. Han Xiao was very satisfied and felt fulfilled. After he left, the players in the stronghold could not wait to team up. They wanted to see what a level 90 dungeon felt like. Bun Hit Dog teamed up with Frenzied Sword, Maple Moon, and how Tion, who were his friends, plus players from Long Sky and other clubs, making up ten players. He crushed the dungeon crystal. A fog flew out and covered everyone, bringing them into the dungeon. The world in their eyes changed. Suddenly, Bun Hit Dog and the rest could not control their bodies. The angle of their vision became higher, and they looked down at a very familiar planet, Fawn 122 planet, where the pursuit took place. The silver spaceship took off and rose up through the sky, then was suddenly destroyed. Right after, the Dark Star mothership appeared, sending out a large number of hovering ships to chase the three mercenary spaceships. This was indeed the event that they experienced, but back then, they were all on the spaceships. Now they were watching the process with a third-person perspective. It was a brand new experience. This is the cut scene, how Tion was experienced. Quite a number of dungeons had cutscenes, so they were not surprised. They all could not take their eyes off. The enormous Dark Star fleet, the chase of countless hovering ships, and the crazy escape of the three mercenary spaceships. The scenes were very impactful. Then, they saw the Sky Ring spaceship suddenly speed up, and its movements became extremely swift and unpredictable. 
the hovering ship fleet behind was running around like dogs being walked. Wow, this is even stronger than drunk driving. I remember Black Phantom was the one piloting that time. No wonder the people on the ship were this dizzy. Fear still lingered in Frenzied Sword's heart. The cutscene was about three minutes long. This was a copy-pasted scene made by the dungeon, not the real scene. The event progress was compressed and modified. The mercenary spaceships went underground at the same time as when the Alliance fleet's reinforcements arrived. The cutscene ended there. As the captain, Hao Tian received a message. The dungeon is about to begin. Please choose a faction. Remarks. Faction chosen will affect the dungeon's completion targets and difficulty. Escaping mercenaries. Your mission is to run from the pursuit and last until the Dragon Emperor's arrival. Dark Star Chasers. Your mission is to capture a certain number of mercenaries before the Dragon Emperor arrives. Reinforcements. Your mission is to fight against the chasers, protect the target mercenaries from being captured, as well as pick them up, all before the Dragon Emperor arrives. Chapter 411 Level Jumping is not something you can just do. Chapter 411 Level Jumping is not something you can just do. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios There are three different factions to choose from. Apparently, there are a lot of processes in this dungeon. The missions are different for different sides too, so will it only count as officially completed after completing the dungeon for all three factions? Stop talking about these useless things. Which one do we choose? Twinkle Fried Rice said. This is a level 90 dungeon. We probably won't be able to complete it, How Tion said with a low voice. Since it's pioneering, let's first familiarize ourselves with the dungeon. It's best to choose a faction we're familiar with, the escaping mercenaries. Ah. Escaping again, the others complained. Running away was not as fun as chasing people at all. Nonetheless, most of these players were pro players. Even though they clearly knew that it was very difficult to clear a level 90 dungeon, they would not back away. Although they were escaping underground, it was very likely that they would not be able to see Dragon Emperor's attack just like before. Bun Hit Dog did not know the details of this dungeon, so he did not say anything. How Tion chose the escaping mercenaries faction. White starlight appeared at the edge of the player's vision. Their vision was dragged by an unknown force and fell down into the planet. The fleets of different colors, the clouds, the sky, and the environment around them flashed past. They moved right toward the stone ground, and their vision passed through it the next moment, entering the dark underground and regaining their vision. In front of them was the dark underground filled with twists and turns. Their bodies shook as they recovered control of their movement. Looking down, their bodies were complete and nothing was missing. This time, a small virtual column appeared in the vision of these ten people. It was the mission list. The players could customize and have some of the information in their interface always shown before them. Currently, the dungeon missions were shown and could not be hidden. They hovered at the top right of their vision. You are an escaping mercenary. The underground is filled with Dark Star hover ships and groups of warriors. You know very well that if you are caught, you will face torture worse than death. Enemies are everywhere, and there is almost no chance to escape. However, the reinforcements ignited your will to live. Dungeon Target Escape from the pursuit until the Dragon Emperor arrives. Countdown 12 hours. Completion reward, 6 million experience. Failure condition, everyone being caught. Punishment, 10% decrease in total reward for every player caught. Optional mission I, kill 100 Dark Star troops. Reward, 400,000 experience. Optional mission 2, destroy 10 hovering ships. Reward, 700,000 experience. Optional mission 3, Protect six mercenaries who are being chased. Reward, one million experience. Challenge mission I. Not triggering any alarms. Reward, two million experience. Challenge mission two. Get rid of pursuers five times without any deaths. Reward, three million five hundred thousand experience. Random events. In the process of escaping, you have a chance to meet random events. Complete two random events. Reward 3 million experience. The number of side missions completed affects the dungeon completion rating. Remarks. 
When coming into contact with the main characters of the event, the dungeon target and difficulty will change. When a main character is within the range of one kilometer from you, you will receive a notification. Please select carefully whether to change the route. After the mission appeared, a 12-hour countdown clock appeared in the top left corner of their vision. So much information, Frenzied Sword looked at them carefully and said, the final target of the escaping mercenaries is to not be caught. If we want to raise the reward, we have to act dangerously yet not get caught. They looked at the mission carefully, how Tion frowned and shared what he had analyzed from it. Twelve hours, which is shorter than our actual experience. Also, if one member fails, the total reward will decrease. Therefore, in order to get a high rating, all members must be alive and not captured till the end, ideally by working together. Furthermore, with this kind of system, it should mean we can betray our teammates. Ahem, but there's a price to pay. The optional missions are only useful when we meet enemies, which conflicts with the challenge mission. In the two challenge missions, one is to be stealthy, and the other is to find trouble, so it means that we have to choose one of them. Hmm, seeing the difference in reward, finding trouble will be much more difficult. The random events should be the accidental element. This dungeon is very complex. Also, the main character is mentioned at the end, which means we will not follow Black Phantom as we did before. We will be alone instead. I, before he finished analyzing, the sound of hovering ship flying appeared in front of them, and an anxious voice came from their headsets. Attention all mercenaries, for hovering ships are searching the area. Don't stay in one place. Leave right now. As soon as the sentence ended, the light of a searchlight appeared at the tunnel ahead. Their face changed. There was no time to discuss, so they hastily turned around and sprinted away. The start of this dungeon is so quick. It's only been two to three minutes, and the enemies are already here. Sleepy Winter was worried. The dungeon pace is too fast. If the enemies are too close to each other, it will be very difficult to last twelve hours. They ran for a while, and the hovering ship behind them moved forward like they had yet to be discovered. Nonetheless, they were not slow at all. They ran till their stamina fell very quickly, but still, they could not increase their distance with the hovering ship behind. Most importantly, there was only one route in this tunnel. They had yet to find a different path. This was a level 90 dungeon. Its difficulty could be seen everywhere. They were just level 60 and could not even get rid of these enemies. Let's stop running. We should turn back and see how strong the enemies are, Frenzied Sword suggested. That works as well. Adjust your position. Mechanics stand at the back line to do damage output. Espers lure and divert attention. Pugilists go aggressive directly. How Tion was very decisive. He commanded the others and formed a simple cooperative formation. The searchlight approached quickly, and a hovering ship just a few meters long appeared, noticed them, then immediately flew toward them at a high speed. The mini laser cannon shot out a long green laser. Boom, boom, boom. Laser cannon explosions did not create smoke, but pebbles splashed from the wall and the floor where it hit. They charged forward with wide strides and surrounded the hovering ship, and the battle broke out immediately. At the same time, the frame of the countdown clock in everyone's vision suddenly turned red as a notification popped up. You have triggered a level 1 alarm. The enemy's reinforcements will arrive in 10 minutes. Quick! Finish the battle within 10 minutes. With the time limit, their faces changed a little. Their eyes became more serious. They increased their attack speed and strength. Boom, boom, boom. All kinds of high-power attacks were thrown at the hovering ship, but the hovering ship's shield was not just for decoration. It blocked a large number of attacks. The power of the mini lasers was not small. One shot would take away 200 to 300 HP from them. Although it looked like its damage was not high, its attack speed was fast. For a grade B super, dealing with a hovering ship would be much easier, but they were just level 60 grade C supers. Plus, the players had very few talents and did not have molding talents at all, so they were not at an advantage in terms of attributes. Level 60 players were at the bottom of grade C supers. Furthermore, even when the players reached level 90 in version 2.0, they would only be grade C+. The level difference between grades increased from lower grades to higher grades. 
To them, the hovering ship that was supposed to be an elite monster was basically a boss. As time passed, their attacks became more urgent, and it was easier to make mistakes. Finally, after paying a price of three deaths, they were able to destroy this hovering ship, and it exploded with a bang. The rest of the people were breathing heavily, their HP decreased by more than half. It's too difficult. The side mission requires us to destroy ten hovering ships, but just one is already this hard to deal with. Three of us even died. The level difference is too huge, Twinkle Fried Rice said. Three people died, so the total reward was decreased by 30% directly. This was just around 10 minutes into the dungeon, and they had already suffered such a high loss. They realized that with their current level, they were looking for a beating by entering. Plus, the monsters in the dungeons were all adjusted and enhanced. Earlier, when the hovering ship exploded, the Dark Star soldiers inside used energy escape. These people were supposed to be ordinary people or low grade supers, but their levels were all question marks, which meant that they were above level 60. Luckily, the hovering ship's explosion made the Dark Star soldiers lose more than half of their health, or the players would have failed the dungeon already. The alarm was still on, so they started running immediately. However, the reinforcements came too quickly. The players were exhausted from running away and had no choice but to sell out teammates to make sure the rest lived. However, that was just a desperate measure. Not long after, the last player, Hao Tian, was attacked by two hovering ships, beaten to the brink of death, and captured. Everyone failed, and the countdown clock froze. From start till now, only 30 minutes had passed. With a flash before their eyes, they were kicked out of the dungeon and returned to the stronghold. Half an hour and we've already failed. How do we even play it? Sleepy Winter was speechless. This time, the other teamed-up players were all kicked out and wailing. They were all beaten up. They exchanged experiences and asked around. Everyone had chosen the escaping mercenaries faction, all looking to go the steady way. King Admiral's team had the best results. They had lasted 50 minutes. The most tragic was fried eggplants with Fish's team. They met the first hovering ship and were not able to finish the enemy within 10 minutes. Then they were surrounded by the two hovering ships that came as reinforcements, failing straight away. However, no one was frustrated. After all, the dungeon introduction was very clear. They were jumping levels to challenge it, so they had been very mentally prepared. Furthermore, if they did not fail a few times, how could it be called pioneering? Top tier, professional players always liked a difficult challenge, and these players were never beaten down by obstacles. They excitedly entered the dungeon again. The same dungeon had a limit to how many times one could enter, which would refresh every six days in game time. The players also had some germinal organization warfare dungeons that they had gotten from Hanshao, but they decided to use up the number of times for warfare, power of the Dragon Emperor first. How Tian and the others entered the dungeon again. It was the same cutscene, then the faction selection interface. Now, Bun Hit Dog could not hold it in anymore and said, The escaping mercenaries faction is too difficult. It's almost impossible to clear. The other factions should be easier. Staying alive while chasing is easier than running. Also, there's the reinforcements faction. We should try changing the faction. The first time that they entered, Bun Hit Dog had recorded the process, which could be used as material for his videos. However, he was most concerned about the scene where the Dragon Emperor showed her power. It would be good enough even if it was just a cut scene. Clearing the dungeon was not his target, recording was. His only target was waiting for the countdown to end and watching the cutscene. The bunch of them were rather close to each other, and seeing that he had made the suggestion, Frenzied Sword and Hao Tian agreed. The others did not have any objections either. The faction that they chose this time was the Dark Star Pursuers. After getting beaten up so badly the last time, they felt that choosing the Dark Star faction would be better. This time, after entering the dungeon, they realized that they had become a group of ground troops following a hovering ship. There was also a countdown, but the Dark Star faction's countdown was only three hours. The mission, of course, was different from the escaping mercenaries. This time, it was to capture a certain number of mercenaries within the time limit. The optional missions included protecting the hovering ship that they were following and helping other Dark Star allies surround targets. 
the challenge missions were to capture a certain target. Dark Star's faction had a specialty. They were the ground troops and had to follow the hovering ship. They could not leave freely, or the dungeon would be determined as failed. So, combat would definitely happen. It should be safe now. Turning from prey to hunter, they felt relieved. They followed the hovering ship and very soon discovered a group of mercenaries. The attack order was given, and they charged forward immediately. Then they noticed a tragic truth. The mercenaries were fighting back, and they were damn strong. The hovering ship that they had spent so much effort to defend was destroyed by these mercenaries with question mark levels in no time. Then, these mercenaries chased to kill them so that the alarm would be cancelled. They were in dire danger once again, and their mindset fell from the sky right into hell. Who is actually the hunter? If you people can fight so well, why did you even run? The reminder appeared, saying that the reinforcements would arrive if they could last ten minutes. They became the ones running away instead of chasing. There was danger in both factions. The Dark Star had a lot of reinforcements, and the mercenaries had very strong individual fighting capabilities. No matter which one they chose, they had to face the advantages of the other side. However, there was one good thing about choosing the Dark Star faction. As long as they ran away a certain distance, the mercenaries would not dare follow anymore. Bun Hit Dog ran immediately at an extremely high speed, decisively selling out his teammates. The others had no choice but to follow after him and run for their lives. After running for a while and leaving two people behind, the mercenaries finally retreated. The survivors placed their hands on their hips and breathed heavily. Bun Hit Dog ran the fastest, yet he was in the best state. He had no strengths other than being fast when running away. I, I feel that, since the hovering ship exploded, we should wait here and wait for the dungeon to end. Before he even finished the sentence, a new order came from their headsets, deploying them to follow another hovering ship. As always, not following the order would be deemed as a mission failure, so there were no shortcuts. Frustration appeared on their faces. Just as they wanted to start moving, a new notification appeared. Ding, ding, ding. The notification sound echoes in their ears. The border of their vision flashed continuously in red light, and it seemed to be very urgent. Tension. You have reached within one kilometer of a main character. Please carefully select whether to change route. How Tion's pupils constricted, and he said in a low voice, it's impossible for us to complete the mission through normal methods. How about we try to make contact with a main character? I'm guessing that the main characters will also be from different factions. If we can meet one from the same faction, the dungeon difficulty should decrease. If we meet one from the enemy side, then it might be a sure death scenario. This is a gamble. He was experienced and gave a very sensible analysis. The others thought that it made sense, so they exchanged looks. Then let's wait. The red light flashed more rapidly, meaning that the main character was getting closer. Their hearts were in their throats. Boom! A vague sound of trembling came out of the wall. It became louder and louder, conveying that the target was approaching. This sound. Frenzied Sword suddenly opened his eyes wide as he realized something. He panicked and yelled, Run! But it was too late. Boom! The next moment, the wall beside them collapsed. A round car ball broke through the wall and rolled over. They happened to be standing in the way. It was an instant team kill. Inside the stronghold, how Tion and the others' bodies appeared again. They were all dazed as if they had yet to recover from the instant kill. They looked at Frenzied Sword. Frustration appeared on Frenzied Sword's face. That's Black Phantom's transportation tool. I sat inside that ball and escaped together with them. We have no chance to survive if we meet him. This, we were unlucky. Bun Hit Dog's face twitched, and his mindset completely collapsed. I just want to record some materials. Why are you doing this to me? Frubovel.cm The players of Black Star started their journey of suffering. They were beaten up badly again and again, yet they did not grow tired of it. They were feeling pain and happiness together. Bun Hit Dog was the most upset. He did not have the spirit of facing obstacles like pro players. He was getting beaten up so badly that his mind was almost breaking. However, for the sake of video materials, he had to force himself to continue suffering. 
It was very tragic and courageous. The dungeon that Han Xiao gave out was to keep the players busy for a while. The materials that he had ordered would all arrive the next day. He locked himself in the machinery modification room and spent his time accompanied by metal and the workbench, building up his new combat style. Time passed day by day. In the neighboring Fawn Galaxy, a stealthy mini spaceship visited Fawn 122 Planet. Chapter 412 Survivor. Chapter 412 Survivor. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios. Who? An old style small spaceship slowly landed on the devastated gray surface of Fawn 122. The airstream blew out from the bottom of it, stirring up rings of airwaves. The engine produced a buzzing noise from its plain and simple thruster. Its speed, noise reduction, and shock reduction were all very low performance, considered as technology that was going to be eliminated very soon. In the galactic trade markets, only poor people with very shallow pockets would buy such simple spaceships. Yet, this antique was equipped with top-level stealth devices, optical invisibility, sound reflection, gravitational force penetration, quantum network shield, and many more. A few Dark Star members disguised as travelers got off the spaceship and placed a special signal spreader on the ground. The invisible electric wave passed through the gaps on the surface of this planet at an unbelievable speed and entered the underground. It continuously went deeper along the twists and turns in the gap. Inside a dark and narrow space, a pair of long-asleep eyes suddenly opened. The back of his palm was giving off a dim light. A microchip was planted inside, which received the signal and vibrated softly. The vibration happened in the vessels and bones, awakening this person from his sleep. Finally, after a while, the wait for the spaceships on the surface finally ended. Their target had appeared. In the fissure far away, a man climbed out and slowly walked over. It was an esper indeed. He looked terrible and his face was bony. He was the only survivor of the Sirota fleet. Before the Dragon Emperor arrived, Sirota had given the retreat order. However, when Esper knew the enemy was Ames, he knew that the mothership would most likely not be able to escape, so he had taken a risk. He had decided to stay underground. In a deep cave, he had formed a carbon structure with his power and sealed himself, controlling his heartbeat and blood flow, entering a fake death state. As he expected, these allies that boarded the fleet to retreat were all killed by the mercenary fleet, Holy Stone and Black Raven, turning into fireworks in space and becoming dust. After Sirota's fleet was demolished, the mercenaries had caught the mothership's highest commander, Sirota. Therefore, they did not bother to search the entire planet for a possible survivor. This Dark Star team had been completely defeated, so there was no need to waste more time. Therefore, Ember had survived. Important officers like him all had a location microchip planted in them. After everyone left this planet, a rescue spaceship came to pick him up. At that time, Han Xiao was also more inclined to believe Ember died, although he still had a small doubt in his heart. After all, characters with legendary characteristics should not die that easily. However, he had no way to search the entire planet. The other mercenaries had been in a hurry to head to God Aura and would not help. With his manpower, God only knew how long it would have taken him to search the entire planet. There was no need for that. Plus, it was not worth it from a probability perspective. Hence, he did not think too much about it. Regardless of whether Ember was dead or alive, Han Xiao could accept it. The Dark Star warriors wanted to support him, but they were swept away by Ember. He did not need anyone to support him. With a cold face, he said in a low voice, Tell me, what's the situation now? Did Sirota and the rest all die? Ames slammed Sirota's mothership down. We received attacks from both Holy Stone and Black Raven, and the fleet was completely defeated. A part of the members of the ship survived, including Sirota. They were transferred to God Aura. This was just reported by the Colton News. They were all sent to the Rainbow Prison. Every mothership was a moving stronghold of Dark Star, and losing any of them was a heavy blow. Ember clenched his teeth and said, What about the secret message bead? We heart that the secret message bead was picked up by a floating dragon guard, then given to the Holy Stone civilization which then gave it to God Aura. Ember's body shook, and he growled in a low voice, So, you're saying, 
our sacrifices were completely meaningless and did not make any impact at all. We suffered such a catastrophic loss. How can it just be over? Even if we cannot beat the Dragon Emperor, she has to pay the price. She attacked us to save Black Star. So we shall find an opportunity to kill Black Star. Showing her that we're not easy to mess with, this time, a heavy and powerful yell stopped Ember's words. In important times like this, it's unwise to mess with a strong enemy. Remember, God Aura is our true enemy. A hologram appeared in front of Ember. It was a hybrid Godoran with light gold skin. On his skin were some strange scales and beast hide like wrinkles. His forehead was covered in markings of a mysterious pattern, extending down to his eye bags and nose, like the war paint of savages. This man was rather old, but his eyes were very sharp, and he gave off a steady aura like the mountains. The anger in Ember's eyes was suppressed as soon as he saw this man. He lowered his head and said respectfully, Teacher, the other Dark Star members beside him also lowered their heads in fear and said, Your Excellency Anner. Anner was the mentor that developed the potential of Ember's power and guided his path. He was a high-ranked officer in Dark Star, one of the few grade-A individuals in the organization. His position was above all and only below the leader. He looked down at Ember and said in a low voice, I can see you're resentful. Tell me, who is the source of your anger? Black Star. He's a mercenary group captain under the Dragon Emperor. I failed against him twice. No, thrice. Ever since I started working for the organization officially, these are the only three failures I've ever experienced. He's caused me great shame, and he has special abilities that counter my power. Only his death can brush away my shame. Anner intercepted and said coldly, Childish. Narrow-minded, the organization has spent an enormous amount of resources on you and raised you to be a strong warrior, not to let you fight irrelevant people. The organization has a lot of hope for you. The responsibilities that you bear are beyond your imagination. A small mercenary is not someone that you should concern yourself with. Focusing your thoughts on him is a waste of time. After a pause, he added, Furthermore, Black Star is under the Dragon Emperor. Now is not the time to provoke them. When the bigger matters are dealt with, you can settle such issues. Freewebnovel.com Ember lowered his head and asked, What should I do? Anger has affected your sanity. This is an unforgivable mistake. For the next year, you're not allowed to carry out any missions. Stay in the base. Focus on training and self-reflection. Understood. Ember nodded. He respected Anner a lot. His mind calmed down and he accepted the arrangement. The hostility toward Black Star was pressed down to the bottom of his heart. His teacher was right. He was destined to be an ace of the organization. What they planned for was much bigger. He should not spend energy on irrelevant people. After pondering, Ember asked the last question. Teacher, what about the secret message bead? Godora has the secret message bead. Sooner or later, they will know what's inside. The newest 7th generation mutation source is in Ghidorah's hands, and the organization's plan faces the risk of being exposed. This matter needs to be discussed again. In a few days' time, the leader will host a high-ranking meeting to discuss this. The strategic planning afterward will all have to consider this as a factor, and we will need to make some adjustments. Having received the answer, Ember did not waste any more time. He boarded the plane and took off. Ten days passed in no time. The players were standing by in the stronghold and had nothing to do. They spent most of their time in the dungeons. They tried warfare. Power of the Dragon Emperor many times, discussed and exchanged experiences, and found a possible way to clear the dungeon. Firstly, they had to choose the reinforcement faction. The countdown clock was the same as the Dark Star faction, three hours. Between the three factions, this was the easiest choice. Then, they had to get lucky and meet a main character, specifically Goa of the Sky Ring Army, within the first 20 minutes and follow her for two hours without doing any side missions. Next, they had to pay close attention to the time and leave before meeting the next enemy that would cause the players to be wiped out. This way, two hours and 20 minutes would have already passed. The difficult part was the last 40 minutes. If everything went well up to this point, there should be at least six to eight players left. 
By using the method of leaving teammates behind one by one, there was a chance for the last person to clear the dungeon. Doing this would cause the reward to be reduced by 90%, but at least it could be cleared. However, although there was a theoretical method, most of it relied on luck. So far, no one had succeeded. Initially, these pro players thought that if they chose the mercenary faction and met Han Shao, they would be able to live. However, this was just what they thought. No matter what faction they chose, it was certain death once they met Han Shao. Not mentioning the Dark Star faction, in the case of the mercenary faction or the reinforcement faction, after meeting Han Shao, they would be able to pass a long time safely, but they would definitely meet Ember in the end. When that happened, everyone would be killed in an instant. Even if they left Han Shao in advance, they would still meet Ember. The pro players placed their focus back on the level 60 germinal organization dungeon. Its level was suitable and much easier. No matter how rich the level 90 dungeon's rewards were, they could only look at them for now. With this failure, Bun Hit Dog was not able to record materials about the Dragon Emperor. He had no choice but to do another episode about the past. He recorded parts of the level 60 germinal organization dungeon and continued on the previous Black Phantom series. This series had yet to arrive at its ending, and most of the players had only heard of Han Zhao's past but never seen it. Bun Hit Dog's video included the dungeon process. The germinal organization dungeon was a large team dungeon extending from Han Zhao's infiltration into the germinal organization headquarters to the end of the germinal organization. The story built up very well and was very interesting. Initially, Bun Hit Dog just wanted to use this episode as a filler, but the response after he posted the video far exceeded his expectations. It was just as popular as the Black Star series, which really surprised him. Through the influence of the Black Star series, more players from other planets came to learn who Han Shao was and knew that he was the first NPC to bring the players off their planet. The players from other areas were very curious about his history, and the Black Phantom series happened to be Han Zhao's origin story. Many new viewers were attracted by it. Chapter 413 New Combat Style 1 Chapter 413 New Combat Style 1 Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios No matter how popular Ames was, it was impossible for Han Zhao's place to be threatened. After all, she was just a newly introduced character, whereas everyone was very familiar with Han Shao. His image would not be impacted by this. The Dragon Emperor being beautiful was one thing, but Han Shao gave a lot of rewards. What was the point of just being beautiful? An NPC was only good when could make the player's money. Furthermore, according to the progress of Bun Hit Dog's Black Star series Episode 3, Han Shao and the Dragon Emperor belonged to the same faction. The influence of these two was combined, which made the players have more anticipation. As Bun Hit Dog used the drama style to edit his Black Star series videos, Han Shao and the Black Star mercenary group were the audience's first-person perspective, which gave them a sense of immersion. They felt like they were part of Black Star, and seeing the faction made them feel happy. This episode was the latest episode of Black Phantom series, the end of Germinal Organization. Han Shao stole intel from the Germinal Organization headquarters, escaped in battle over hundreds of miles, met with the reinforcements from the Six Nations, and fought his last battle in the encirclement. The convoy rode across the yellow desert, stirring up dust and sand. The sky was dyed yellow, and it was filled with the murderous intent from both sides. Bullets and cannons rained down like a metal storm, while the thunderous sound of explosions swept across the sand. The video followed Bun Hit Dog's perspective, taking part in the battlefield recreated by the dungeon. In order to show a stronger impact, he chose the germinal organization side. From the video, the audience could see Han Shao dashing across the battlefield in an unstoppable way, moving like lightning. One moment, he was demolishing a few germinal organization executive officers. The next, he would be hundreds of meters away, flipping vehicles over with his shoulder. In Bun Hit Dog's video, Han Shao was like a boss. The germinal organization's leader fought him head on. Every time they clashed, the ground shook, and the sound wave trembled in the air. The impact was almost overflowing from the screen, as if the screen would shatter like a mirror at any second. Their fight was like a flying dragon that extended across the entire battlefield. 
just the aftershock from their battle was able to send the soldiers and vehicles in their path flying. The viewers could not take their eyes off. It was like they were there themselves. They were nervously holding their breath. Boom! With the last thunderous hit, the image trembled. The viewers finally took a deep breath. Blood splashed out from the germinal organization leader's mouth as he was blown away, flying backward, rolling on the sand for almost a hundred meters, and leaving a marking behind. He fell onto the floor and vomited blood nonstop. On the other side, Han Shao stood in the middle of the shattered mechanical suit pieces on the ground, unveiling his face. Bun Hit Dog was blown onto the floor by the shockwave, and he was looking up. The dust and sand settled, like a yellow curtain being pulled open. Han Shao stood under the scorching sun, above the yellow sand and between the cannons and bullets, covered in twisting bolts of lightning, expressionless. At this moment, his coolness level was at the max. Even for planet aquamarine players who knew that Han Shao was powerful, they could not help but feel emotional. This was perhaps the first time that the players from other planets had seen Han Zhao's performance, and it happened to be his most impactful scene. They were immediately stunned with excitement and trembling. Wow! This man is so powerful! So, he had this kind of past. Every novice planet had main characters. In comparison, Han Shao received the most attention. Many new viewers attracted by the Black Star series were shocked and more interested. They wanted to find Bun Hit Dog's previous videos and find out more about Han Zhao's past. The video continued. The last scene was the cut scene of the nuclear explosion in the Germinal Organization headquarters. A mushroom cloud rose from the ground, and the dark red light in the thick smoke was like the boiling lava from hell. The world trembled, just as the viewers were stunned by the image. The noise from the explosion suddenly disappeared. Only the image of the nuclear explosion remained. At the same time, a man's voice appeared in the background. The clouds of war obscured the blue skies like the wings of death, and the scars of the previous war have been torn open again before they could even heal. At the end of the video, Bun Hit Dog had the genius idea of putting in Han Zhao's speech from before. The image was the end of germinal organization. The Six Nations launched a nuclear missile to end the war. The background was Han Zhao's speech when he created the sanctuary. The image of the nuclear explosion complemented and explained the content of the speech. The Six Nations started a war for their own benefit, and the sanctuary was built to save the tinder of civilization. When putting everything together, the contrast was very strong, and it felt completely different. After the video ended, the viewers could not have enough of it. It was like they had watched a short legendary drama. Thinking back to the storyline on Planet Aquamarine as a whole, they were feeling sentimental. Although Han Shao did not speak throughout the entire video, with the speech that Bun Hit Dog added at the end, the level of class that he had was off the charts. Some audiences imagined his thoughts and analyzed his actions. When this event happened in real time back then, there had been players who did a similar thing. Now, the topic became heated up once again. Real men don't talk, they use actions. Black Phantom cares about the world and fights for the weak, so he wanted to destroy the evil germinal organization. Not bad, he's my husband after all. Black Phantom. Bullsh asterisk T. I just wanted to run away with girls. Do you think my nickname, Women Lover Great Mechanic Han, has no meaning? The players made full use of their creativity and discussed excitedly. Although this video was rushed, Bun Hit Dog did a very good job, and it received a very positive response. Han Zhao's sense of presence and influence was increased largely. Originally, Han Xiao had already given the players a rich impression. Now, with this video about the end of the germinal organization, his impression in the player's mind evolved and became clearer. He became legendary, and his unique characteristics started to shine through which differentiated him from all the other characters. He was the one and only. This was exactly why Han Shao had brought Bun Hit Dog along, and from the current situation, Bun Hit Dog was doing very well. In between building machinery, Han Shao took a break and watched the video. He was very satisfied. A few days later, in the machinery modification room, the air was filled with a certain stench. The results of these few days' work, hundreds of small orbs, were arranged neatly on the table. It's finally done. 
a little earlier than I expected. This was the new machinery that he had created by taking the advantages of the same type of low-level blueprints. Their performance and attributes were far superior. Before he started building, he had spent two to three million experience and leveled up these blueprints to the max level. The more he built, the more familiar he was with them, and the faster he built. Han Xiao took off the protective suit and counted the numbers. He then separated the small mechanical orbs into different types. A method was needed to use the compressed small orbs as well. Usually, mechanics would carry a portable small bag and store these small orbs inside, or they might make these small orbs into jewelry, such as a necklace, bracelet, or earrings. Sometimes, they might also tie them at the end of their hair like the God Aura Observer or place them into the combat suit. As the compressed structure was very tight, there could not be any extra parts in them. Therefore, compressing a compressed orb into another one would not work, or it would have been able to be expanded infinitely. Only a complete machine or an individual part could form a compressed orb. Han Xiao compressed the mechanical suit so in normal daily life, he used a black tactical belt to store the compressed orbs. This had originally been designed to store magazines. It had a metal button in the middle, and the belt was split into two and formed an X shape. It was slotted on his waist to increase the number of items that he could bring. Inside this belt were weapons that were relatively less important. For core machinery such as the mechanical suit, it was made into jewelry. Han Xiao wore a necklace made from three compressed orbs, bracelets on both his wrists, and two small orbs as his earrings on both his ears. His hair now was rather long, so it could be tied and let down behind him. At the end of it were some compressed orbs as well. Han Xiao walked over to the mirror and looked at himself. He was entertained by his new look. TSK. What a unique style I have. Chapter 414, New Combat Style, 2. Chapter 414, New Combat Style, 2. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios. Han Xiao appeared satisfied with it. When practicality was concerned, he did not care much about the look. Although being handsome was an eternal thing for him, he chose to be strong. Other than the belts and the jewelry, there were also some compressed orbs in his clothes. Usually, this was what he looked like. Once he entered a battle, he would then activate the mechanical combat suit. He had added slots in the mechanical suit to store and release compressed orbs. Once he equipped the mechanical suit, the magnetic connection would suck the compressed orbs on him into these slots like reloading bullets. These compressed orbs could be shot out any time, making it more convenient to expand his machinery. There were hundreds of compressed orbs, and part of them were backup equipment. After arranging the results of his hard work, Han Xiao pushed the door open and walked out of the machinery modification room. Haluz was waiting at the door. When he saw Han Xiao come out and approach him, he said, Captain Lurden and the others arrived at Uberly Hub two days ago. They're waiting to meet you. Lead the way. Han Xiao adjusted his clothes. The two of them left the stronghold, boarded the hub center's hovering carriers, and mixed among the others. After a while, they landed on the middle level of a building at the end of the hub center. All the rooms on this level were resting rooms, and one of them was the temporary mini stronghold that the Sunil mercenaries had rented. It was at the corner and had a very narrow space, the cheapest room. They were money-saving as always. Ding dong. The bell was pressed, and the silver alloy door slid open. The two of them walked in. Inside the tight and narrow room, more than fifty people had somehow squeezed in. The people there made up half the number. The other half were in the room next door. They heard the news and came over as well. Han Xiao saw that it was too cramped, so he asked everyone to talk outside on the public rooftop. The rooftop also acted as a parking area for flying carriers, like a mini dock. At the back of it was the city-like hub center, filled with tall buildings. Flying carriers were everywhere in the sky, landing and taking off from buildings from time to time. A warm wind blew across the rooftop, a product of the air coming from the carriers. Black Star, Captain, the Sunil mercenaries greeted Han Xiao. Lurden was sent out as the representative to express their appreciation. Han Xiao sized these people up. Many Sunil mercenaries were disabled and had mechanic prosthetics. He had read the resumes of these mercenaries earlier, 
more than half of them were grade C supers, and a small portion were grade D. It was not suitable for grade D supers to become mercenaries, it was simply too dangerous. However, the Sunils were facing very tough times, and they needed every bit of help they could get. So, they had no choice but to let stronger mercenaries help the weaker ones. Here's what's going to happen. I will choose missions that are suitable for you, then you can decide whether or not to accept them. Since you have joined me, you have to listen to orders. Let's be clear about one thing first. You can have objections to my orders, and we can make negotiations. However, if you disobey my orders behind my back, I will stop working with you immediately. Of course, I don't wish for that to happen. You're facing a tough time, and I understand it. After all, I was there for the recent Sunil catastrophe. You don't have to worry about me giving you missions that are impossible for you to complete. Since he was the leader of the faction, he had to ensure his absolute control. Although the Sunil mercenaries were valuable to him, Han Shao was not going to completely compromise for them. The Sunil mercenaries nodded and agreed without any objection. In their eyes, Han Shao being willing to share his influence with them was already a huge help. Han Shao opened the mercenary panel and picked out a few missions to let them choose. These hiring missions were not open hires given by the alliance that were available to everyone. These were private requests from other partners that had very rich rewards. The difference was that when normal mercenaries requested missions, they were the one making the request, and they were the ones being picked. However, the private hires that he got were requests from others, inviting him to work together. This was the benefit that the Black Star Mercenary Group received after making a name. The partners were all large mercenary groups, so they might not really need help, but they were willing to share the profits, which was actually to build a better relationship, mainly because of his identity as part of Floating Dragon. Most of the Sunil mercenaries operated individually. They had to go through life and death situations only to get very small rewards. They had never seen missions that were safe yet had such rich rewards. Naturally, they were overjoyed. Although there were only a few missions to choose from, they still took their time choosing. After quite a long discussion, they finally chose to accept the cooperation request sent by Sky Ring Army to escort a resource scouting team to an unpopulated planet in the north of the Garden Galaxy. When they were picking, Han Shao did not speak. He leaned against the glass panel on the rooftop and played with a compressed orb in his hands. After they made their choice, he then said, Although this is quite an easy mission, I need to test your combat abilities just in case. Let's go to the battle simulation room. The Sunil mercenaries thought that this was unnecessary, but they could only obey the captain. They left the rooftop and came to the battle simulation room. Han Shao rented a large room, walked in, and stood opposite everyone. The Sunil mercenaries exchanged looks. Lurden coughed, took a step forward, and said, I shall be the first one to test then. No need all of you together. Saves time, Han Shao said. The people were stunned. We have a hundred people here, and you want us to attack together? Isn't that too arrogant even for a grade B super? A sense of anger surfaced in their hearts. They felt they were being underestimated. Although we are here to work for you, you'll regret taking us lightly. With anger on their faces, the Sunil mercenaries spread out and drew their weapons, preparing for battle. The team of a hundred men slanted forward slightly, ready to charge forward. Their united presence was like a lion that was about to attack its prey. Opposing them, Han Shao looked so solitary. Only if they were taken seriously would they get better treatment. They decided to go all out and showcase their full power. Since you want to be beaten up, we will give you a good beating. Her lose turned on the stimulation room. The white room turned into a flat, stone plain, very wide and spacious. He looked at the warriors of his race and shook his head. Over the past few days, Han Shao would call him to test the power of his weapons from time to time. He knew full well how powerful Han Shao was. He was just hoping that his friends would not get beaten too tragically. Han Shao moved his shoulder and felt the compressed orbs on his belt. At this moment, he suddenly felt a sense of deja vu, like he had gone back to the first time that he used the mechanic class to shine in the arena and demolished kids from everywhere. From that time, his path as a booster had started and he had never looked back. This was not just to test the Sunil mercenaries, he was also testing his actual strength and earn their respect. 
The Sunil mercenaries had joined him purely for his influence. They actually did not look up to him for his strength. Most of the mercenaries now looked at the Black Star mercenary group this way. Many people were jealous, they felt like Black Star had become related to Dragon Emperor out of pure luck, otherwise they would just be a third-tier group. They would be able to do it too if they were that lucky. This was a disadvantage of becoming popular too quickly. People doubted his strength. Han Shao had expected this from the start, but when comparing the pros and cons, what he was doing now was definitely more beneficial. It was normal to have some side effects. Mercenaries always respected the strong, and he did this to beat them face to face so that they would respect him. The corners of his mouth rose, and the desire of battle appeared on his face. Come. Boom, boom, boom. The Sunil mercenaries took a step forward and started charging forward right away. The ranged warriors fired cannons and lasers that approached very quickly. Han Shao stood on the spot without moving. A flash of lightning appeared on his body. The two earring orbs flew up into the air and quickly turned into two hovering shield shuttles, forming two purple-blue shields, blocking above his head and before him. All the ranged attacks exploded on the thin and mirror-like energy shields, causing ripples. Buzz! The sound was continuous. Compressed orbs flew out of his belt one after another and floated around him. Magnetic energy activated immediately, and these compressed orbs were spread out by the energy and hit the ground as fast as bullets with a clank, expanding instantly. The setup was complete in an instant. The next second, 22 ground artilleries and 14 hovering artilleries appeared, firing at the hundred opponents simultaneously. 22222. The flashes from the muzzle were one meter long. Some of them were high caliber gunpowder artillery that used special magazines and some were electromagnetic artillery. The firepower coverage of 36 artilleries did not have a blind spot. The formation of the Sunil mercenaries was broken immediately. Their speed decreased, and they had difficulty dodging the hail of bullets. The artilleries were located beside or behind Han Shao. The area within about a hundred meters outside was covered in mechanical traps and obstacles, limiting his movements and preventing enemies from getting too close. Every trap was one to two meters tall, and their triggering range was much larger than their size. Electric sparks were flashing on these traps, dissuading people from daring to even step on them. In the blink of an eye, a formation expanded right beside him. The Sunil mercenaries had trouble taking a single step, and they were immediately disadvantaged and struggling. On the other hand, Han Shao was standing still with hands in his pockets and a calm face like the extremely violent explosions happening at that moment had nothing to do with him. Chapter 415, New Combat Style, 3 Chapter 415, New Combat Style, 3 Fruinovel.com Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios After gaining the compression technology, both the depth and breadth of a mechanic's combat abilities would drastically increase. They would gain the ability to take control of the situation or even turn the tables immediately. The focus was to deploy the machinery as fast as possible and the right combination of machinery at the right place. The speed of deploying that machinery would have a very large impact on the outcome of the battle. After the version of mechanics rising, the method that other supers used was mostly striking and charging before the mechanic could deploy their machinery fully. If a mechanic was allowed to deploy their weapons freely, the situation would be irreversible, and the enemy would slide down the abyss of failure. Of course, this was in the case of normal situations, not considering some special abilities or items. In the case of battle tempo, mechanics always had the upper hand. The enemies were forced to follow it and stop mechanics from deploying their machinery. This was a very big advantage. Furthermore, even if the mechanics' tempo was broken temporarily, and they did not have the time to deploy the machinery fully, the enemies could not let their guard down. If the mechanic caught their breath and deployed the machinery afterward, the tables would turn in an instant, and the enemy's effort before would all go to waste. Han Zhao's mechanic class was now beginning to take shape and possessed this tough ability. He was also very experienced, so it was impossible for his speed of deploying the machinery to be slow. This time, cannons and fire covered the entire place so the Sunil mercenaries inevitably fell one after another. 
This was just a spar, so the Sunil mercenaries who fell onto the ground were dragged off the battlefield by Herluz, who stood on the side. Ever since the battle started, he had been kept busy by doing this continuously. He had never been given a chance to even rest. A pugilist mercenary flexed his legs, then jumped up into the air, drawing a parabola in the air, wanting to jump over the floor filled with traps and reach Han Shao. At this time, a metal trap that he jumped over was suddenly triggered. A grenade shot up into the air and exploded with a bang. A blue, net-shaped current extended out from the center of the explosion. This was a capturing trap formed by long, thin metal cables with a high voltage running through it. It shrouded the pugilist mercenary who was still in midair. Buzz! This guy screamed in agony as his skin was burnt black by the current. Then he fell down to another repulsion trap. An invisible force pushed this guy up into the air again, and a few artilleries turned toward him and focus fired. The bullets pushed him out of the area. He fell to the ground, unconscious. This stopped the other mercenaries from wanting to jump up. It's not so easy to jump across all that. Han Shao smiled. There were landmines in the traps, and there were also traps that could sense objects above them and attack accordingly to prevent enemies from getting close in midair. Within the range of his mechanical force, any machinery received bonuses from him. Some artillery was placed beside him, and its power was enhanced multiple times. Whoever was at the front would face the most violent and heaviest attacks. Because of this, the mercenaries spread out and charged from all directions, diverting the firepower from the artillery. Lurden was covered in a green shield that was flickering under the rain of bullets as he charged forward. In other directions, there was quite a number of mercenaries who were equipped with shield generators. The colorful shields charged through the cannons and traps, approaching quickly. Han Shao formed a hook with his fingers. Another batch of compressed orbs flew out and dropped beside him, expanding into twenty or so beast-shaped robots. Their size was about the same as medium-sized dog breeds, but they were covered in black armor and had a streamlined body like cheetahs, like armored panthers. There was an opening on both of their shoulders, exposing the triple-mounted gun barrels from the machine guns inside. Their tails were very swift and looked like a scorpion tail, at the end of which was a sharp alloy blade. Han Shao had prepared three combos. One was the multi-turret firepower coverage style, which did not require any technicality. Another was the trap style, which required a little bit of control, mainly regarding where to place which traps and whether these traps could protect him and limit the enemy's movement. The last was the hound style. The hound style was controlling a group of small mechanic beasts, entangling, harassing, and culling the enemies like hounds. As the basic machinery that formed this style was called mechanical hounds, hence the name. This blueprint was rather easy to obtain. Han Shao was using an enhanced version of Mechanical Beasts. Black Panther, Combat Mechanic Beast, was a new blueprint that he had created after combining numerous low-level Mechanical Beast blueprints. One Black Panther had 2,700 points of armor, and the basic Mechanical Hound only had 1,500. His attack was also increased by around 70%. It had more functions and better performance. Of course, it possessed the essential self-destruction ability. Go, Han Shao said. The twenty or so mechanical Black Panthers dashed out extremely quickly as the barrels on their shoulders opened fire. They swiftly moved across the battlefield between the gaps of the traps, attacking from the rear and the sides of the enemies. These were the weak points of their defense, and their speed was immediately slowed down. As soon as any mercenary got close to the mechanical Black Panther, it would jump away, always keeping its distance and only going closer to the enemy when attacking. Sometimes, three or four mechanic Black Panthers would cooperate with each other, diverting the enemy's attention from different directions while one of them attacked from the back, slashing with its tail and dealing quite an amount of damage. Mechanical Black Panthers were equipped with smart chips, and four of them formed a group. They could only carry out some simple tactical strategies in fours. Han Zhao's ability to build chips was still at the basic level, so the mechanic Black Panther's combat ability was not independent enough. The number of orders that they could recognize and carry out was limited, so they could only be used to harass. With the combination of artilleries, traps, and mechanical beasts, it was as if the Sunil mercenaries were walking in a quagmire. 
every step forward was difficult. Han Xiao observed the effect and nodded. This combination is not afraid of being outnumbered and can easily crush supers that are weaker than me. Even when used against supers of the same grade, it can also restrain and harass. Of course, it will be heavily damaged as well. Bang! As he was thinking, a mechanical Black Panther was blown away and smashed into an artillery, bending its barrels. Han Xiao looked over. Finally, someone passed through the lockdown. Lurden was covered in a green light. Having finally arrived before Han Xiao, he growled, and the green light turned into a spear in his hands, which he strongly thrust forward. Clank! In the blink of an eye, the compressed orb on Han Zhao's necklace expanded, and a white mechanical suit covered him instantly. The spear stabbed at his chest but was unable to move even an inch forward through the bone-white mechanical suit. Without saying anything, Han Xiao raised his hand and slapped down. Boom! Lurden was smashed onto the floor by the slap, facing downward. His face was planted into the ground instantly, no match for Han Xiao at all. The people's faces changed. Han Zhao's appearance had changed. He was in a white combat suit. The armor texture looked like bones, yet it was unbelievably strong and hard. It looked like a knight's armor made of bone. The shape was gorgeous. The shoulders were carved to look like dragon heads, and the chest and the waist pieces were had highly flexible joints to allow swifter movement, complementing the streamlined body shape. Not knowing if it was an illusion, the people present felt that this mechanical suit was giving out a very mysterious aura. Void Dragon Single Unit Mechanical Suit Compared to the Snake Series mechanical suits such as Python and Amphiptera, this Dragon Series mechanical suit had stronger capabilities. It was not because it involved more advanced technologies, but because its material was rare. It was made from the Void Dragon bone that he had obtained on Floating Dragon Island. It was light yet durable, and it had special energy within. This mechanical suit did not have that many weapons. It was used specifically for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Its armor was a horrifying amount of more than 30,000 points. Furthermore, the Void Dragon Bone granted the mechanical suit extra abilities. Han Xiao had three compressed orbs on his necklace, and all of them were mechanical suits. One was Void Dragon, and the other two were the backup amphipteries. Whether a mechanic was strong or not depended on the number and attributes of their equipment. He had both the number and the attributes, and that was because he had enough money. Seeing this, the other mercenaries stopped moving forward and said with a bitter smile, We admit our loss. The difference in strength was too vast. They had battled through all the obstacles and finally gotten close only to realize that Han Xiao himself was stronger than all his machinery. It was a completely impossible battle to win. There were around a hundred of them, so originally they had thought that Han Xiao was outnumbered, but now they felt that they were the ones that were outnumbered. They clearly surrounded Han Xiao, yet it felt like Han Xiao surrounded all of them by himself. Han Xiao had yet to finish testing all his weapons, so there was still a huge cannon that he did not deploy. He wanted to continue, but seeing that the mercenaries had given up, he could only collect all his machinery disappointed. After cleaning up the battlefield, these Sunil mercenaries gathered in front of Han Xiao. They were only lightly injured. Their eyes were now filled with respect and fear. The strong is always respected. Han Xiao said a few words, mostly saying that they had passed his test and that their ability was not bad. Then he got rid of the Sunils and told them to start doing their missions. Han Xiao returned to the stronghold alone and went to the machinery modification room. He pondered and concluded his experience. According to the current effect, the strategy that I planned is now mostly ready. My level 95 class advancement requirement is rather difficult, so I might be stuck at this level for quite some time. This combination of styles is very strong at the current stage, so it can be used as a filler before class advancement. Plus, there are many ways to enhance it. He took out the weapons that he had recently built and observed the item attributes on the interface once again. The variety of artilleries and traps was very rich, mostly made out of new blueprints that he had obtained from combining several blueprints, and their various performances were all 25% to 40% better in comparison. He looked at Void Dragon's data. Amphiptera was a very well-rounded mechanical suit, so he did not build another one of the same style. Void Dragon was focused on melee battles. 
as its material was rare, it had very strong additional abilities. Void Dragon. Type. Single Unit Light Mechanical Combat Suit. Grade Purple. Requirements. LV90. Mechanic Class. Greater than 4000 Energy. Greater than 200 END. Basic Attributes. Armor. 30400-30400. Defense. 375. Power level 1360. Energy, 9000. Height, 1.91 meters. Weight, 143 pounds. Control method, low class smart chip plus nerves connection, extra plus 10DX. Power source, portable stable mini nuclear reaction furnace, self charge. Recovers energy at 120 per minute. Energy conversion rate from user. 30 colon 55. Stationary mode energy usage. 25 per minute. Combat mode energy usage. 48 per minute. Core power capacity. 775 of 1200. Skeleton module. TM 1.50 nanobiological muscle fillings. Enhances the power of movements and body capabilities. Plus 57 STR. Plus 45 DEX. Power output, 150. Muscles can be enhanced by energy. Energy cost, 40 per minute. Effect, all attributes plus 33%. Armor module, void dragon bone, pink rare material, plus 28,000 armor, plus 320 defense. Hand module, vibration converter, purple, generates vibration, 11% of melee damage is counted as armor-piercing damage. Power output, 50. Wrist module, wrist force enhancer, plus 10 STR. Power output, 30. Leg module, pressure enhancement circuit, plus 8 dex. Power output, 30. Thrusting module, mini maneuvering equipment, purple, X12. Total power output, 240. Survival module, body signs monitor, thermostat life support system, oxygen filtering, gravity stabilizer, first aid injection device, high pressure resistance device, total power output, 150. Chip module, damage detection, database analysis, trajectory prediction, remote control, combat assistance, neuronal signal transformation, total power output, 110. Subsidiary module. Electromagnetic pulse controller. Purple. Applies. Excitement. All attributes plus 7%. Duration. 15 minutes. Energy cost. 5 per use. Power output. 15. Subsidiary module. Compressed orb storage and ejection pipes. Additional ability. Strong capability. During combat, distributes energy to biological muscle, increasing power. Effect, plus 45 STR, plus 35 DEX. Additional ability, indestructible toughness. Void dragon bones have unbelievable durability. Effect, minus 20% physical damage received, minus 18% magical damage received. When armor is lower than 40%, this effect is doubled. After getting out of combat, armor recovers at 3% per minute. Additional ability. Mysterious power. Void dragon bones possess mysterious powers. Effect. Plus 15 STR. Plus 11 DEX. Plus 34 melee damage. Plus 16% attack speed. 40% of melee damage will be dealt as splash damage. Energy cost. 60 per use. Duration 1 minute. Cooldown, 75S. Additional ability, Void Jet Spray. Void Dragon Bones possess extraordinary magic. After it dies, Void Magic precipitates inside its bones. This equipment is able to convert energy into Void Jet Spray. Damage, 278 to 1,790. Energy cost, 50 to 300. Controllable. Cooldown, 0. If used again in the next 10 seconds, the energy cost will increase by 30%.
If not used in 10 seconds, the energy cost will reset. Side effect. This equipment is enhanced by void energy. It has a very high load. When equipped, minus 3,000 health limit. Remarks. When you stare at this mechanical suit, you can almost feel the remaining soul inside. Chapter 416, Conclusion and the Next Stage of the Plan Chapter 416, Conclusion and the Next Stage of the Plan Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios The requirements are rather high. It's very difficult for normal level 90 mechanics to have 200 points of endurance, and even if they do, it just converts into 8,000 health points. Wearing this and losing 3,000 health points will be losing almost half of their health. Plus, psychic abilities can easily go through the armor. But for me, that's only one-fifth of my health, so I'll still be very tanky when I'm wearing this. 3,000 health for 30,000 armor is completely worth it. Han Xiao nodded. Void Dragon was the strongest combat suit that he could build at this moment. All the materials for it were used up, so he could not build another one. Be it toughness or damage output, it was top-notch in its level. The two core additional abilities were indestructible toughness and void jet spray. The former increased its durability and gave it the ability to self-recover, while the latter had a very strong explosive damage and came from the precipitated magic inside the void dragon bone. Although Han Xiao was a mechanic, due to the uniqueness of the material, the void dragon mechanic suit that he had built could be considered half magic and half mechanic equipment. There were quite a few ways to build self-recovering equipment through mechanic methods, such as nanotechnology repair robots, which required the high-class knowledge of the energy branch nanoenergy, or to build it with shape memory alloys, which required the arm branch ability high-end material technology. Speaking of magic, Han Zhao's eyes sparkled. He called the three Volga brothers. These three looked very similar, and they were hard to differentiate. Usually, the oldest brother would speak for the three of them. Captain, what is the reason for calling us? What kind of spells do you guys know? Han Xiao looked at the oldest Volga brother. I'm a specialized mage in water spells, the oldest Volga said. My second youngest brother is good at shape manipulation spells and enhancing auras. My youngest brother is a psychic. Actually, when the three of us were younger, we applied for the Phil Mage Academy, and only my youngest brother was rejected. I still remember that recruitment instructor said this to him. Give up on magic, your talent is not suitable for it. To you, magic is like the Verisal Mountain. You will never be able to climb it. Do you know the Verisal Mountain? That's the tallest mountain on our home planet. The eldest brother was very talkative and could not stop talking. He diverted from the topic in the blink of an eye. Han Xiao was only dazed for two seconds, and the topic was already on how their first childhood pet died. Stop! Han Xiao hastily stopped the oldest Volga brother, coughed and said, I called you here to enchant some weapons. He pointed at the machinery on the table as he spoke. The three of them had no objections to the captain's request, but their faces turned bitter when they turned and saw the machinery. So many machineries. The workload was way too large. I wrote the specific requirements on paper, and it's on the table. You can do it slowly when you don't have missions. Han Xiao waved and walked out with big steps leaving the three of them there looking at each other. The youngest Volga brother was very happy. He was not a mage, so it had nothing to do with him. He looked at the two older brothers with glee in his eyes and left joyfully. The other two looked at his cheerful departing figure and almost wanted to gift him a magic beam. Theoretically, most inanimate objects could be enchanted, including machinery, of course. Enchanting was also a career that the mage class players had by default. In his previous life, most of the mages provided enchanting services to earn some extra money. Water-type enchantment increased physical damage reduction, and shape manipulation type usually gave bonus damage. Han Zhao's ability to enhance weapons through his mechanic methods was already at his limit, so he sought new ways to enhance. Since there were mages in his team, he might as well make full use of them. I'm now level 95, five levels away from the level 100 promotion limit. However, the mechanic main class is stuck at the class advancement requirement, which requires me to learn two high-end knowledges. Sai, so I have yet to even finish learning all the advanced knowledges. Han Xiao shook his head in frustration. 
His main class was at the fifth stage, which made up 65 levels. When players had such a high level in their main class, it would already be long past version 2.0, and the next class advancement would only be possible to complete in version 3.0, as that was when they could get their hands on high-end knowledges. Even in version 3.0, the cost of learning high-end knowledge was still very high. They would basically only be exchangeable in faction stores, and the players would have to spend a lot of time farming favorability and money for them. The class advancement that he had received randomly was quite difficult. Just advanced knowledge already cost him so much effort to obtain. High-end knowledge was even harder to get. The Area Exchange Center in Garten Galaxy only had one high-end knowledge for sale, and it was a rather unimportant knowledge. Even so, its price was a hundred times more expensive than advanced knowledges. He had about a hundred thousand anas in his account, but he would still not be able to afford it. There were two difficulties with this class advancement requirement. One was money and the other was channels. The former required time and effort to earn, and the latter required him to look through various galaxies in the Shattered Star Ring to find a seller. Very few mechanics were willing to share their knowledges. Therefore, Han Shao felt that he would not be able to advance class in a short time, even with his floating dragon faction background. There will be more promotion requirements once I reach level 100. I might as well find a new subclass first, level up to level 100, and take a look at the promotion requirements. If convenient, I can complete both of them together. The secret message be triggered three large missions for me, all related to Godora and Darkstar. I need to plan it slowly. It's better not to make any moves before the next version. Wait, counting in the hidden mission from Erosia, I have four high difficulty missions. Erosia was very mysterious. She had awakened her Esper power to turn into energy, and it seemed like it made her curious about Esper powers. Han Shao had told her Luz to teach her how to use her energy, and he also guided her himself sometimes. He realized that Erosia was very talented and improved extremely quickly. She had extraordinary potential inside her like a sleeping treasure. Her power received fertilizer from her potential and became stronger very quickly. Han Shao estimated that she would officially reach grade C within a month. He opened the forums and browsed through what the players were up to as usual. He saw that among the Black Star Mercenary Group players, someone had posted the process and difficulties of the level 90 dungeon. This was the first time that any players had seen a dungeon that exceeded the level limit of the current version. This post sparked very heated discussion. Han Shao looked through, and only then did he know about what it was like inside the dungeon. He estimated in his mind, and from his experience, level 60 players should have a chance at slipping through the dungeon and completing it with a very low rating. Bun Hit Dog released a new video again. He noticed Bun Hit Dog's new video, the fourth episode of the Black Star series. Han Shao was surprised. He opened the video and glimpsed through. This episode continued from the last episode, the second half of the hiring incident. From Floating Dragon Island to Dark Star's chase to the Dragon Emperor appearing. Bun Hit Dog still had yet to beat. Warfare. Power of the Dragon Emperor. He had given up and drawn this image himself. Hence, what the viewers saw was a slideshow of a kindergarten child's drawings. That, accompanied by Bun Hit Dog's rich and emotional description, felt like a salesperson trying to sell a piece of CR asterisk P while insisting that it was a treasure. Darkstar's mothership saw that the situation was very, very bad. They yelled, we've got to run, then started running immediately. Aim stared at Darkstar and yelled, hey, no running. She then activated her power and grabbed Floating Dragon Island like it was nothing, then threw it at the Darkstar mothership. The sky trembled as the two of them clashed and like an egg smashing against a rock, the mothership crashed down to the ground. 1. Bun Hit Dog's description was full of ups and downs like he was on steroids. His tone was more excited than a salesperson, like he was casting a fight of the century. However, the image was extremely humble and poor. It was a black stick man throwing a golden ball that dragged a dotted line behind to represent its movement. The ball then hit onto a big patch of black which represented the Dark Star Mothership. A bang then appeared beside the image, in bold and red. This guy really is a genius. Han Zhao's mouth twitched. As he expected, the comments during this scene were like a rampage, 
and the audience's desire to mock it was at its maximum. Luckily, other than this scene, the images after this went back to recordings. The video ended when they returned to Uberly Hub, and the incident ended. The players only saw what was on the surface, so they did not know about the conspiracy Darkstar had. Only Han Xiao did. Other than the images emphasizing the Dragon Emperor's powers, another focus of the video was Black Star Mercenary Group's new officer, Arosia. Compared to her, the Volga brothers became transparent and were completely ignored. Following the craze brought by Ames last time, Arosia stirred up another frenzy. Her looks were superior to Ames and were almost perfect. Although she did not possess the strength, power, temperament, and other bonuses that Ames boasted, she had her own charm. Her amnesia made her pitiful and mysterious, and most importantly, she had breasts, very big breasts. Unsurprisingly, the war between the flat chest faction and huge breast faction broke out once again. The Dragon Emperor is very strong, beautiful, and has long legs. But she's flat. Pale skin covers ugliness. Flat chests destroy everything. Sorry. My love now belongs to someone else. I don't want to say this, but you people are really terrible. Your brains are filled with breasts. What's so good about being big? Big is beauty. These people were split between the Ames faction and Arosia faction. Han Xiao was happy to see this. The more they argued, the more popular the topic would be. As a male, he would never get dragged into the argument anyway. After closing the forums, Han Xiao started to think of the next step of the plan. I have gone through quite a few big events this time and have been dragged into battles of a higher level, entering Darkstar sites. It'll be best to keep a low profile from now for some time, accepting requests peacefully and stabilizing my current position. At the same time, I'll save some money as well. He had been through quite a lot this time for the compression technology, so temporarily he was not going to take risks. He had made a name for himself, increased his abilities, and also formed some connections. The partners provided many rewarding missions, so he decided to finish these requests one by one. There was no need to hurry. Furthermore, the players played a huge role in his growth too. It was now only version 1.0, so the players' abilities were very limited. When the players grew again in the next version, the benefits that he would be able to obtain from the players would multiply many times over. He returned to the Stronghold Hall. All the players were there. They saw that Han Xiao had appeared and all surrounded him. Black Star, when will we be going for the next mission? Frenzied Sword asked. These players were fighting dungeons all the time, so they were extremely bored in the Stronghold. Their faces were filled with anticipation. Pack up, we will leave today. On the way there, Han Xiao had accepted the hiring requests from his partner allies. The missions were not difficult, and their rewards were quite handsome. Before the next version came, he was preparing to only accept such missions in order to earn some wealth, strengthen his position, and grow in a low profile. After such a huge event, they had to rest for some time. The players were immediately revitalized. They picked up their things very quickly. Fifty armored warriors stood before Han Xiao neatly. Han Xiao glanced at them, turned around, and walked outside with big steps. The players followed right after. Let's go. Han Xiao had decided on the plan, accept requests from partners one after another. They were active in various star systems in the Shattered Star Ring. After the heat from the Floating Dragon incident cooled down, the position and name of the mercenary group were slowly being built up in missions after missions. Their resume gradually became richer. The Black Star mercenary group was busy accepting one mission after another, and nine months passed in no time. Chapter 417 Nine Months Later Planet Dawn. Chapter 417. Nine months later. Planet Dawn. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios. In the ancient city ruins of the South Territory on Planet Dawn, an alliance of various tribes had gathered. 3,000 Blue Shield Knights of the Vane Kingdom, 5,000 Savage Berserkers of the Howling Barbarians Tribe, 1,000 Alchemist Bombardiers of the Earth Tribe, 500 Beast Riders of the Child of Voices, and the mixed army of the Southland City and the Principality. There was a total of 15,000 people camping in the green field outside the ancient city ruins, their flags swaying with the wind. There was not a single cloud in the sky. 
The sky there was the color of dusk, turning everything into a darker shade. The sun hanging high up in the sky looked tiny as it was very far from the planet. The Imperator was having a meeting in the tent with the commanders of the various armies, and they were having a heated discussion. Only one tall blue-skinned man did not speak at all. He was the Blue Shield Knight's captain, Rex, the war hero of the Vane Kingdom. He had turned from a civilian into the commander of the Ace Army of the Biggest Kingdom on Planet Dawn. His deeds were praised by all the people on Planet Dawn. When the others were almost done talking, only then did Rex open his mouth. The commanders of the other tribes all respected him very much, so they stopped their argument and listened to his words. Rizar and his believers are currently hiding under the ruins, preparing the ceremony of polluting the origin water. We have about two and a half hours' time. There's about 800 high-level Mojo puppet colossuses, which he spent 20 years building, sleeping in the ruins. He's installed complex magic arrays, so the path toward the ceremony altar will only open if all the Mojo puppets are destroyed. This means that we have to break through the lockdown of the Mojo puppets in a short time, find their position, and stop the ceremony. If not, the origin water of more than half of the Southland Territory will lose its vitality, and hundreds of thousands of people will die. Another commander sighed. The scouting troops have sent back a message. Every mojo puppet is more than seven meters high. They are extremely hard and are even blessed by prayers. Even our ray steel swords broke from slashing it and could only leave a white mark. This intel cost us six elite troops. Also, Rizar's sect has 100 polluters who can corrode our weapons and bodies. No elite warriors can withstand the corrosive spell. This situation is too tough. It's very difficult for the 15,000 of us to break through in a short time. Sai, Rizar prepared in darkness for 20 years. If we had discovered his conspiracy 10 days, no, even just three days earlier, we would not be in such a situation. This is everyone that we could gather in such a short time. This affects the purity of the origin water and the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. We cannot fail, Rex said with a deep voice. The Kingdom Tribune mages have contacted the Ascenders from the Higher Worlds. The Ascenders have hired warriors from the Higher Worlds who will help us in combat. Rex then looked at the corner of the tent. A human in a red battle suit was sitting there, looking completely different from the others who were wearing chain armor. He stood up and said, I'm the Red Horn Mercenary Group's captain, Lin Gu. The people of your race have paid the gratuity, so we will help you to our best ability. Captain Lin Gu, are you confident? Rex asked. Lin Gu shook his head and said with a bitter smile, Frankly, the situation here is much worse than the information that we received when we accepted the mission suggested. Our strength is limited, and we aren't able to deal with missions of this level. The details have already been reported to the employer, and the second batch of external reinforcements is on the way. If we're lucky, they should be able to reach us within two hours. Frowning, Rex's face turned grave, and he said, Time is too scarce. Are the reinforcements dependable? Don't worry, the mercenary group in the second batch of reinforcements is much stronger than us. As long as they arrive in time, solving the incident here will be a piece of cake. Their stronghold happened to be in the star system. If not for that, they would not even have bothered to take on small incidents like this. I hope so. Rex was worried, but Lin Gu was confident. Planet Dawn was located in the Garten star system, Ghidorah's territory. This planet was very far from the fixed star, so it was at dawn even in the day, hence its name. There was no moon at night too, only darkness. There was no difference in seasons. Every day was cold. Theoretically, this should have been a frozen planet that was unable to birth life forms. Its vitality came from the river running through the surface and underground. The natural water on planet Dawn contained magic energy. It had warmth in it that diminished the coldness of the entire planet and gave birth to plants and lives. It was called Origin Water by the inhabitants of planet Dawn. The Origin Water was the most important resource on the entire planet. Civilizations on Planet Dawn was built on origin water. The changes and wars between nations throughout history were mostly because of origin water. The long-term consumption of origin water gave people strong physiques. The light, blue-skinned Venerians were the main race. 
The ancient Vane Kingdom was the strongest kingdom on this planet. The existence of Origin Water determined Planet Dawn to be a magic civilization. Its technological development was slow, and it focused on individual capabilities. Its social construct had very obvious characteristics of magic civilizations, such as the ones who could control magic all had higher positions in society. Although this was a surface civilization as it was focused on magic just like God Aura, it had a connection with the galaxy. Once someone reached a certain level of strength, they could request Ghidorah's help and enter the higher world, which was the galaxy. These people were called the Ascenders. There had been hundreds of Ascenders throughout history. Some completely disappeared, but some returned from time to time and left communicators. This was also the Kingdom Tribune Mage's holy relic, used to contact the Ascenders. Not long ago, the Vane Kingdom had discovered the conspiracy of the notorious Pollution Mage, Rizar. He wanted to use some kind of large magic ceremony to divert the Origin Water from more than half of the Southland Territory, giving himself an incomparable amount of magic power. Originally, the magic in the Origin Water would perish. Even if they were used, it would also be recovered through natural cycles. But this ceremony would strip all the magic from the Origin Water in a certain area, and that Origin Water would need hundreds of years to recover. The density of the entire planet's Origin Water magic would decrease because of this, which would lead to the planet's temperature decreasing. Even if Origin Water would still cycle, it required time to do so. That area would lose its protection and be covered in ice within a month, turning into a place of death causing hundreds of thousands of people to lose their homes or even die. In the ancient age 1,000 years earlier, someone had carried out the same ceremony, and that was the cause of the North Wasteland in Planet Dawn, which had yet to recover. Back then, all the tribes had formed an alliance and killed the culprit after a tragic war. The knowledge of this ceremony had been destroyed at that time, yet 1,000 years later, the ceremony appeared again. Hence, the Vane Kingdom Emergency gathered troops, contacted other nations, and formed an alliance, heading directly to the place where Rizar was hosting the ceremony, preventing Planet Dawn from repeating the past. Furthermore, the southern soil was very fertile. If this place was frozen, the production of food would largely decrease. Thousands of people would starve to death afterward. Lin Ji's Red Horn Mercenary Group had accepted the mission from the ascenders of Planet Dawn and arrived here a few days ago to solve the problem. However, the number of Mojo puppets exceeded their expectations, so they had no choice but to request external reinforcement. To their surprise, an unexpectedly strong mercenary group was willing to help. This mercenary group was very well known in the industry and had a very strong background. People like the Red Horn Mercenary Group would not even have the opportunity to form any connections to them under normal circumstances. Lin Gu was very relieved. This mission was not a problem with them coming to help. Time was scarce. Rex could not wait any more and issued the order. The alliance started to march. Boom! Footsteps and beast hooves formed a tsunami of sound. The army charged forward and quickly approached the ancient city ruins. Even from afar, they could see the dark green magic colossuses inside the ruins. They had for arms, held a huge axe, and were flickering in magic light. Their texture was like stone but also like metal. The army could see that they were hard with just one look. Blue shield knights, charge, Rex pulled down his visor and clipped his legs. The mounts of the knights were called ravening beasts. They had a snake head and a horse body. With a growl, the ravening beast charged forward. Three thousand blue shield knights followed right behind. Facing the magic colossuses, which were more than three times their height, Every single one of the knights had absolutely no fear in their eyes. The magic colossuses were controlled by someone. They formed a formation quickly and collided with the charging knights. Bang, bang, bang. People fell down, and beasts flipped over. The scene turned very chaotic very quickly. The other tribes joined the battle as well. Blades and claws slashed against the magic colossuses and clanked. Their growling louder than the explosions. The berserkers and the knights were at the front, but regardless, the magic colossuses smashed the bones of the warriors with their huge strength one after another. The place was filled with screams of agony. The enemy, polluters, hid behind the colossuses and cast corrosive spells at the warriors. 
the spell array could only be opened when all the magic colossuses were destroyed. Often, they had to pay the price of 13 to 18 elite warriors just to destroy one magic colossus. Even though the Red Horn mercenary group helped with their firearms and abilities, they were not killing the magic colossuses fast enough. There were more magic colossuses than the estimated 800. It was like a wall of desperation. Blood slowly spread out on the green field, and the dawn in the sky witnessed this bloodbath. Continue charging forward. Don't stop. The knights led by Rex had already lost a quarter of their members. At the same time, they had killed the most magic colossuses too. His face will resolute, and he went out of the battlefield and charged back in again. His spear stabbed into a magic colossus's leg. An explosion occurred on the spear tip enchanted with an explosive spell, shattering a small part of the magic colossus's body. One magic colossus could wipe out hundreds of normal troops. The Blue Shield Knights were the elite troops of the Vane Kingdom, so every one of them was a warrior who had magic powers. They were far stronger than ordinary people. Such heavy battle damage was already very tragic. At the same time, at a strangely shaped huge altar inside a man-made space under the ancient city ruins, countless believers in black were praying softly, sending magic into the magic array on the altar. In the heart of the altar was an old Venerian in a gorgeous bright red robe, Rizar. A golden framed mirror was floating beside him. It possessed the clairvoyance spell, and the image in the mirror was a reflection of the war above him from an aerial view. These fools, they fell for your scheme as expected. These magic colossuses are used to fight with them specifically. Our magic array is hidden under the field. Blood from above is directed into this place. The ceremony can only be activated with enough blood as its fuel. He he he, your idea of tying the magic array with the magic colossuses is really brilliant, leaving them with no choice but to fight head-on with the magic colossuses. A superior believer under the altar said in a flattering tone. Razar nodded and asked coldly, How much more blood is needed? The fuel to activate the altar will be enough in one hour if they continue fighting. You will become the Lord of Magic, the strongest mage in history, the superior believer said with a fanatical face. Strongest? Razar looked at him pitifully. He shook his head and mumbled, Twenty years of preparation. I'm finally close to success. I've been stuck at this stage for so many years, and this is the limit of my talent. As long as I cross this step, I will be able to go to the higher world. The battle on the surface lasted almost an hour. In order to save time, the army almost completely gave up its defenses and attacked crazily. Half of the magic colossuses were destroyed, and all the polluters were dead. However, the warriors had suffered heavy losses as well. Blood turned into a river. The rest of the people were exhausted. The casualties were increasing at a very high speed. Hold on. According to the speed, we can stop the ceremony in time. Rex yelled loudly to boost morale. At this time, he felt a chill above his head. A magic colossus was near him and slashed down its huge axe. Boom! Rex pounced forward hurriedly. The ravening beast was split in half, and the axe slashed right into the ground. The blood and intestines of the ravening beast spilled all over the floor. If he did not dodge it, this would have been him. He did not even have the time to be glad. This colossus was already walking toward him with the axe in its hands. A shadow loomed over Rex's head as the axe was raised up high in the air. Rex's felt a sudden pain in his legs, having been hit just now. He was covered in sweat and wanted to stand up with all his might. In the blink of an eye, he suddenly realized that the shadow under his feet seemed to have expanded, followed by the sonic boom that became louder and louder. Bang! An alloy airdrop cabin fell down to the ground right beside this magic colossus, and the impact blew both the magic colossus and Rex away. Dong! Dong! Then there were more sounds of these cabins falling onto the ground. Many airdrop cabins fell onto the ground nearby. Whoosh! The hatch opened, and a group of warriors in heavy metal armor gushed out. The leader was a human man in a black windbreaker wearing many spherical jewelries. He was looking left and right with curiosity. Are they the new reinforcements from the higher world? Despite having a very rational personality, Rex could not help but be surprised. 
at this time that magic colossus charged toward this human man, and its axe slashed down. Rex subconsciously wanted to yell and remind him, but what happened next made him swallow his words. This man raised his hand and easily grabbed the axe that was more than enough to slash a ravening beast open. The impact from the axe only made his wrist sink a negligible amount of distance. He raised his eyebrows and said, TSK, the way this planet welcomes its guest is really passionate. We came right on time. Stop standing there, time to do the job. Lin Gu, who was in the middle of a fight, looked over and heaved a sigh of relief. They're finally here, the Black Star Mercenary Group. Chapter 418 The Unobtainable is Always Tempting 1 Chapter 418 The Unobtainable is Always Tempting 1 Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios 2222 The pro players who landed with the airdrop cabins raised their high-caliber armor-piercing cannons and fired at the dark green magic colossuses around them. Fire sparkles exploded on the magic colossus's body, and thick clouds expanded from the explosions. Under this non-stop storm of iron, these magic colossuses that could face the charge of the knights head-on were now shivering and backing up continuously, unable to move forward a single step as fractured shards fell from their bodies. In nine months, they had experienced dozens of battle missions. They had very rich experiences in facing such magic combat puppets. Although their numbers were much fewer than the army, they took control of the battlefield very quickly. Herluz drew his battleship slicing blade, smashing a magic colossus with every slice very efficiently. Arosia and the Volga brothers stood beside Han Shao and did not move. Han Shao narrowed his eyes and observed the battlefield while standing still. He was not preparing to attack. Herluz and these players were more than enough to deal with the enemies. The capabilities of these people under him were up to standard, so he was having a good time doing nothing as much as he could. To put it simply, this incident was about a villain who wanted trouble appearing on this planet, so they had invited him to deal with it. There were hundreds of similar incidents happening every day in the Shattered Star Ring. The motive of the villains was also very varied. They experienced it many times, so they were used to it and were familiar with the process. Land in airdrop cabins, then clear the scene. Han Shao did not even need to command anymore. He was proud of his team's progress. Nine months had passed, and he had deliberately controlled the size of Black Star, keeping it the same size as before. But as their resume grew, they had built a good name for themselves. When he carried out cooperative missions with Sky Ring, Blades, Purple Gold, and other large mercenary groups, not only were they able to force their way through most easy missions, they also always had a very dependable performance when facing difficult problems. They built the image of a dependable partner in no time at all. Originally, most large mercenary groups wanted to build a relationship with him because of his floating dragon background. But they slowly acknowledged and respected Black Star's abilities. When they needed external reinforcements in the Colton Star Cluster, Han Shao was almost always among their first choice. When a mercenary group's credibility rating reach a certain level, they would receive additional benefits. They would be listed among groups that had good credibility ratings in the area and automatically send some emergency hires in the area exclusively to Black Star. That was how they had become the reinforcements for Planet Dawn. Actually, he had just completed a guarding request two days ago. As per their habit, they were supposed to rest for some time in Uberly Hub. However, he saw it was an emergency event from Planet Dawn, so he decided to cancel the holiday and come to their aid. This planet was one of the infection targets in the mutation disaster mission that was yet to be activated. Hence, he came to take a look. Planet Dawn's development level is low magic level, yet to achieve the stage of magic being industrialized. They focus on individual powers. Although they sent some supposedly grade B ascenders to God Aura, their society's knowledge of the galaxy is very limited, not even as good as Planet Aquamarine. Every civilization had their own name for the universe. Planet Dawn called it the Higher World and Ascending, showing that their civilization was more focused on individuals. Furthermore, most of the people did not know of the situation in the galaxy. They only knew that it was a higher level world. The king not spreading the knowledge was also part of the reason. Dark Star deployed the mutation source here as well. Now that nine months had passed and the version 1.0 update was near, 
It was time to visit the other planets where the mutation disaster would occur in version 2.0 so that he would be mentally prepared. Black Star. I've heard so much about you. Lin Gu walked over and greeted Han Xiao with a pleasing and respectful tone. With the people of Black Star taking part in the battle, he was not worried about the situation at all. Hence, he took the opportunity to create a connection with Han Xiao. Hello. Han Xiao extended his hand out and gave him a handshake. Lin Gu was a little flattered. He thought the top-level people of the industry would be very arrogant and did not expect Han Xiao to be so friendly. The two of them were chatting over there as Rex crawled up from the ground on another front. He picked up his shield and spear, caught his breath, and joined the battle again. He did not even have time to communicate with the reinforcements. His army had a chance to catch their breath, so they gathered again and cooperated with the players. Magic colossuses broke apart one after another. With the strong help from the players, the battle ended very quickly. The rest of the soldiers hurriedly bandaged their wounds and recovered their physical strength as fast as they could. Rex came before Han Xiao and Lin Gu. His face was solemn, and he did not say any useless words. The door to the altar will open now that these magic colossus have been destroyed. Rizar's sect is gathered there. There are more enemies waiting for us. We have no time to waste. Please follow us and move forward immediately. Rex saw Lin Ji's respectful expression toward Han Xiao between the breaks of his battles. And from that, he knew that this new reinforcement was someone important. Therefore, his tone had respect and alarm in it. The guests from the higher world were always mysterious in his eyes. He could not help but look at the airdrop cabins, guessing how the people from the higher world landed in these things. He wondered what the principle behind these things was. Okay. Let's end the chit-chat here and start moving forward. Han Xiao nodded and agreed since it was a request from the employer. After the Alliance army had a brief moment to rest and regroup, they hastily looked for the entrance in the ruins. They were able to find the entrance to the underground altar very quickly. This was an abandoned underground city, built into a secret stronghold by Rizar and used for many years. They surged in and followed the corridor down. The underground city was not large, so the tunnel was narrow. Rex's troops had a high number, so they had no choice but to leave some of their people on the surface. Han Xiao and the others followed behind and moved outside the army. This was a very serious situation in Rex's eyes, but to him it was very simple. Find the target boss, kill it, the end. At the underground altar in the deepest area of the underground city, the scene of the army entering appeared on the magical mirror. The hundreds of believers' face changed instantly. SH asterisk T, why is another group of warriors from the higher world here? Our plan is ruined. The magic colossuses did not kill enough people. The blood is not enough to activate the altar. We're done for. The superior believer was panicking. Rizar was not calm anymore. His face became very grave. He stared at Han Xiao and the others in the mirror, and a sense of envy, yearn, and jealousy appeared in his eyes. These people all came from the higher world. Soon, very soon, I will become someone of the higher world, too. Rizar had always felt that the people who were trapped on planets were pitiful. The believers thought that Rizar carried out this plan to become the strongest mage. He ridiculed this idea. These foolish believers did not know the vastness of the universe, and their sights were so narrow. Pitiful. Maybe in the eyes of galaxy residents, the universe was nothing much, but for people who could only look up at the sky and draw out the universe with their imagination, being able to enter the galaxy was exceptionally attractive. Furthermore, he knew that there were other civilizations and races in the universe. His curiosity and desire for knowledge was like a flame in his heart that could not suppress. This was the exploration instinct of intelligent species, wanting to advance, wanting to step onto the peak of mountains and take in the beautiful view. When something was yet to be obtained, it would always be very tempting. Rizar's target was only going to the higher world. He could sacrifice everything and not care about the consequences at all for it. However, the higher world mercenaries that suddenly arrived had changed the plan that he had spent so much effort to prepare. If not for those people, his plan definitely would have succeeded. A heavy shade of mania appeared in his eyes. Mentor, what do we do? The superior believer asked anxiously. 
Razar looked down at the panicking believers. This was a sect that he had spent dozens of years building. A hint of cruelty appeared on his face. Lend your flesh to me. A bright red light suddenly burst out from his magic staff. The pillars on the altar were glowing in blood red. A complex glowing magic array appeared on the floor. This time all noise disappeared. The believers' eyes suddenly swelled, and their faces turned blue-black as if they were suffocating. They scratched their throats, but their bodies were out of their control. They fell to the ground one after another, struggling frantically as their body twisted into countless strange positions. That superior believer's face was filled with agony. His eyes were filled with disbelief. He crawled up the altar while struggling. His shivering hand wanted to grab Razar's robe, but before he could do so, his eyes burst. Blood gushed out onto the floor, turning into a long, thin line of blood like a red earthworm, crawling down to the bottom of the altar. Hundreds of believers died together. The blood in their bodies was sucked dry by the magic array. They turned into dry corpses with opened mouths and sunken faces. The altar that absorbed the blood, on the other hand, became smooth like gray jade. Although rowdy moments earlier, the scene was now dead silent. There was finally enough blood. Boom! The ceremony activated. The enormous amount of magic power constructed a special magic array smelled like blood. Behind the altar was an origin water vein. The underground origin water that was slowly flowing suddenly started to boil, and tiny spots of light appeared on the water surface like fireflies. It was all visible magic power. The light spots suddenly combined into a few light dragons, absorbed by Razar frantically through his face organs. Rex finally arrived with the troops five minutes later. They saw the altar and the dried corpses on the floor from far away. When they clearly saw Razar absorbing the magic from the origin water, Rex's face turned grave. No, the ceremony has started. We have to stop him immediately. Just as Rex was about to order his troops to charge forward, the sound of magic buzzed from around the altar. Defensive arrays appeared on the walls one after another. Colorful lights covered the altar. There were almost a thousand layers of defense spells, and they were all extremely tough. The floor trembled, and twenty new magic colossus climbed out of the ground and stood beside the altar. Rex's expression changed immediately. They would not be able to break through so many defensive spells and magic colossuses. He had thought that he could stop the ceremony once he found Razar, but they were now blocked outside. Razar had planned too far ahead. He could not allow accidents to happen, so he naturally had a large number of defensive measures. As long as he could stop the enemy for just a short time, he would be able to complete the magic absorption ceremony. The magic that a thousand miles of origin water contained was enormous. This ceremony had been passed down from the ancient age, and it constructed a magic fountain inside the body. Only then was it able to contain so much magic so he could break through his strength limit. It's the end of the Southland Territory if he completes the ceremony. We have to destroy these defensive spells as quickly as possible. Follow me and charge. He had yet to finish when someone suddenly pressed on his shoulder and stopped his sentence. Rex turned back and saw that Han Xiao walked past him and stood before the troops. You're too slow, let me. Han Zhao's tone was unwavering and had the confidence of a professional. Different from the Planet Dawn troops, his face was always calm and relaxed, not bothered by these defensive measures at all. Freewebnovel.com Clank. Next moment, compressed orbs shot out one after another and expanded quickly. About a hundred different models of artilleries surrounded Han Xiao. The cannon tore the layers of spells apart instantly. To him, these defensive spells were as weak as paper. In nine months' time, although Han Xiao did not change his combat style, he did make enhancements. He had increased his machinery and enhanced their power. In less than ten seconds, the twenty magic colossuses were torn into pieces. The firelight lit up the underground city like it was in daylight. The explosive power that he showcased made these soldiers dumbfounded. Rex was shocked, and he mumbled, such strong power, even stronger than the ascenders in the legends. Even the Kingdom Tribune mages are not this strong. Is this the power of the higher world warriors? 
He heard the secrets from the Kingdom Tribune mages before that the warriors from the Higher World were completely different from them, who only used magic. They had all kinds of strange abilities. Now he had finally witnessed it. The cannon shattered the defensive spells and the altar easily, and the ceremony was instantly stopped. Razar fell to the ground, shocked and furious, overwhelmed with disbelief. He had never thought that the defensive measures that he had spent so many years on would be completely obliterated in a matter of seconds. The strength of this higher world mercenary was far beyond his expectations. However, Razar's face changed the next moment. He felt a strong magic power inside his body, crushing that limit in his body. A new power was born. His eyes widened, and tears rolled down his face. Success. I succeeded. Although the ceremony had stopped not long after it stopped, the magic that he had absorbed had already helped him break through that limit. He had finally reached the standard that Godora had set. He could head toward the higher world as he had been yearning for. The increase in power made Razar have a false sense of confidence like he could defeat everyone with just a wave of his hands, but he did not want to stay and fight. He was about to turn around and activate the explosion runes. While the underground city collapsed, he would then leave through the hidden tunnel. His heart was filled with excitement. His lifelong wish was going to come true. However, plans very rarely worked out. Noticing the rapidly increasing energy reaction, Han Xiao raised his eyebrows. Yo broke through to grade B, but the next second, the void dragon mechanical suit covered his body. Han Xiao moved beside Razar as if teleporting. He gripped his head and smashed it heavily into the ground. Bang! Before Razar could react, his head had already struck the ground. His staff slipped out of his hand and rolled far away. The power that he had just gained did not have any effect at all. The feeling of being strong only lasted a few seconds before it was shattered instantly. Does it make a difference? Chapter 419 The Unobtainable is Always Tempting 2 Chapter 419 The Unobtainable is Always Tempting 2 Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios His aged face was pressed tightly against the ground. His gorgeous rope was dirted with dust, and Razar was completely unable to move, as if he was being held down by a mountain. He was furious and shocked. He had finally seen hope for the lifelong dream, and he could not let it disappear no matter what. Even if the opponent was someone strong from the higher world, he could still fight. Rex activated his magic power. A blood red and blue magic current gushed out from his body, stirring up a strong wind. The faces of Rex and the soldiers who were more than a hundred meters away changed. Nitrom Repulsion Ring pushed away enemies within ten meters radius and was used to deal with enemies who were at a melee range. It was a must-learn spell for Planet Dawn mages. Its power depended on the mage's strength. The ring cast by Razar was the strongest that Rex had ever seen. It was said that only ascenders could have such strong magic power, which meant that Razar had reached that level. Rex's face tightened. The situation had suddenly become much more difficult. Get ready to throw spears as backup, Rex ordered loudly. All the blue shield knights beside him raised their cone-shaped spears and prepared to throw them. From what he saw, Razar now had the strength of an ascender and should be on par with the higher world warrior. Hence, he decided to interfere and help just in case. However, when he turned around, he noticed that the other higher world mercenaries had their arms crossed with a calm expression and seemingly no intention to interfere at all. Lingu smiled and said, You don't have to worry. Black Star's captain strength is well known among the mercenary industry in the Garten Star system. Rex was stunned for a second. He then took a closer look past the gushing spell and realized, no matter how enormous Razar's magic power was, Han Shao continued standing still like a reef. His hand was still pressing Razar firmly on the ground, not budging in the slightest. At this time, Razar suddenly noticed that a horrifying power was brewing in the mechanical suit hand pressed on his head, like some kind of strong attack was about to be released on his head. His weak body would definitely not be able to withstand it. In a panic, he could not be concerned with pushing Han Xiao away and was hastily casting all kinds of defense enhancement spells on himself. The next moment, 
a gray energy fog appeared around the void dragon mechanical suit, flowed down the arm, and shot out from the palm. Rizar's head was being grabbed by Han Zhao's palm, and he faced this energy directly. Boom! With a violent explosion, the gray fog surged out. Like thousands of sharp blades, the gray shockwave spread out. The floor was filled with cracks in an instant like it had been plowed. At the middle of the explosion, a pit with a diameter of almost two meters appeared. Before the explosion aftershock had yet to disappear, gray light glowed from Han Zhao's body once again. The second energy exploded immediately after. Void jet spray. Fruob novel. Calm. Even though the enemy was rather weak, Han Xiao was not taking any chances and gave all he had. Although Rizar was grade B, the same grade as him, Rizar had only just passed through its door and had yet to familiarize himself with his powers. It was a piece of cake for the great mechanic Han to fight this kind of novice grade B. He used three full-capacity void jet sprays continuously without stopping, using 1,170 points of the mechanical suit's energy. Three high damage numbers appeared above Rizar's head, adding up to a total of 4,700 health points. It only took a few seconds. This ability's damage efficiency was extremely high. This was the strongest explosive ability without using Flaming Will. Flaming Will had a five-minute cooldown and Void Jet Spray had no cooldown. It had become Han Zhao's go-to ace. The smoke and fog dispersed. Rizar was lying down in the pit, his body covered in wounds from the energy shocks. Void Jet Spray was a pure energy attack, and it contained the space attribute. Just as the ice attribute could slow and the fire attribute could burn, the direct effect of the space attribute was ignoring a part of the target's resistance. Having taken damage of more than half his health points in an extremely short time, Rizar was heavily injured and had fainted. A small boss character with grade B attributes had been demolished by Han Xiao within 10 seconds. After many combat experiences throughout the nine months, Han Xiao was already very familiar with the Void Dragon mechanical suits, attributes, and functions. This single unit battle suit was definitely one of the top on the list of the strongest mechanical suits in the current level, and Void Jet Spray was a very good ability against supers of the same level. How's the strength difference so big? Rex's lips were dry. He was completely astonished. Rizar was already the strongest on Planet Dawn after he gained these powers. Even ten of him would not have been able to beat the Rizar. Yet, in front of this mercenary, Rizar was as powerless as an infant. Are all the people in the higher world this strong? The soldiers of Planet Dawn were dazed. Something that was so difficult and important in their eyes had been solved so easily. Everyone felt it was almost unreal, like they were in a dream. Han Xiao pulled Rizar by his collar and threw him before Rex. His mechanical suit folded itself, and he was back in his clothes. The hundred or so artilleries around them turned back to compressed orbs, rolled on the floor following the attraction of magnetic force, then rolled up to Han Zhao's belt and clothes in a neat queue. Done pack up, Han Xiao clapped his hands. With his strength now, even crushing the whole of Planet Dawn was a piece of cake. As if he had just awakened from a dream, Rex ordered his subordinates to tie Rizar up with multiple chains. He explained, The king wanted me to capture Rizar alive and bring him back for interrogation. We need to know where he learned the ancient ceremony to prevent the possibility of someone else knowing the spell to absorb the origin water magic powers. Do whatever you want. My job here is done. Han Xiao raised his eyebrows. At this time, Rizar woke up slowly, still dizzy. He realized that he was tied up by magic-suppressing chains, and the magic in his body was forcibly restrained and could not be used. Subconsciously, he wanted to struggle and resist. Then he saw Han Xiao, who stood at the side, and he immediately stopped his actions. As long as Han Xiao was there, resisting would just give him more shame and torture. However, he could not hold back his rage. He stared at Han Xiao and clenched his teeth tightly. If not for this external help from the higher world, he would have already succeeded. Before this, he never would have expected the Vain Kingdom's king to be able to call such a strong reinforcement. These people were the culprits that had ruined his plan. Rizar hated their guts. Why did you stop me? This obviously has nothing to do with you. Han Xiao shrugged and said, There's no why. It's all a job. I have dealt with dozens of outlaws like you. 
Thieves have no rights to complain about the police. If you want to blame something, blame it on your luck being bad and meeting us in your act. What's your motive? I just don't want to be trapped in a behind planet forever. Can you understand the feeling of surprise and my dreams shattering when I knew that we were just one of the countless races in the universe? We're not special, but that means that we have many friends too. I don't want to be ignorant forever, and I don't want to stay in this planet and wait for my death like the rest of the people here. I want to see the real world. Razar pulled the chains, making clanking sounds. Since my ceremony has failed, you have no need to deal with me anymore. Aren't you mercenaries? They can hire you against me so I can hire you too. Please take me away from Planet Dawn. I can offer all of my wealth as the reward. If you don't need that, I can work for you too. Razar was still making his last struggle. The soldiers at the side heard this and could not help but get nervous. They were afraid that the higher world mercenaries would change sides. Han Shao, however, did not hesitate at all to reject the new mission that popped up on his interface, Razar's request. He said coldly, sorry, but Black Star Mercenary Group keeps its words. Furthermore, even if you have quite a good reason, it cannot be an excuse for you to harm the planet. Razar was furious and frustrated. He kept silent and let the soldiers pull him by his chains. After returning to the surface, the army gathered and rested, getting ready to make their return. Rex found Han Shao and said solemnly, Captain Blackstar, Captain Lin Gu, on behalf of the Vane Kingdom, I invite you heroes to be guests at the palace. The king wants to thank you personally. Do you have the time? Sure, we will go with you then. I can take a look at Planet Dawn on the way. Han Shao nodded. Of course, this was an excuse. His main goal was to get the intel regarding signs of the mutation disaster, and getting intel from the higher-ups of the kingdom was the most convenient way. Since the king had given him such a good opportunity, he was definitely not going to miss it. I will stay too. Let's go together then. Lin Gu did not want to stay initially, but he saw that Han Shao accepted the offer, so he changed his mind. He wanted to stay with the Black Star mercenary group longer and leave an impression. The alliance cleared the battlefield quickly. The tribes left in various directions. The Blue Shield Knights escorted Razar and started heading toward the Vane Kingdom city. Late at night, the Blue Shield Knights stationed themselves on a plane. The night on Planet Dawn was very dark, almost pitch black. The wildlife consisted mostly nocturnal creatures. Light could be used to repel them. Illumination spells were deployed around the temporary station as the light source, but it was barely visible. Razar was locked in the prison car in the middle of the camp, surrounded by guards in continuous shifts. In the dark, silent night, inside a single-person tent, Han Shao opened the galactic communicator and looked at the mercenary hiring panel. Chapter 420 Surprise Deal Chapter 420 Surprise Deal Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Black Star Mercenary Group Credibility Rating 875 High Scale 173 Members Grade D39 Grade C 132 Grade B2 Requests Completed 76 Main Activity Area Colton Star Cluster Resume Sunil Defense Battle Silver Rescue Operation Rosai Planet 9512 Exploration Ubeerly Hub Letton Large Stargate Maintenance Guards Remarks Eradicating Space Parasites Capture of Purple Germ Civilizations Head of Rebels Pilipalapa Wasasa 71 More Missions Expand Slash Collapse Creator Black Star Han Shao Creation Date Galaxy Calendar Year 688 October 2nd Summary Small to medium-sized mercenary group with a very good name, very high credibility and strong ability. Completed hiring missions with high ratings multiple times, and most mercenaries under their command are undead. Partner with many large armies. Stationed in the Ubeerly Hub, often responsible for matters happening around them. Operates under the Dragon Emperor Ames. They are a dependable mercenary group that is active in the Colton Star Cluster. Mainly accepts combat and guarding missions. Very trustworthy. In nine months, 
Black Star Mercenary Group's resume had become a lot richer. With players as the combat power, not only did they not suffer any manpower reduction, but their income was increased too. It was very convenient. In the nine months, he had only taken on hiring missions from partners. They had grown while keeping a low profile and made quite a fortune. His savings were now 784,000 anas. Other than buying some materials, metals, and parts to build new machinery, he had saved the rest and planned to use it to complete the class advancement mission. With so much money, buying one high-end knowledge would not be a problem, but it would be difficult to buy two. According to the standard of galactical mercenaries, Planet Dawn's mission was very easy. Therefore, the reward was not high. However, he had not accepted the mission for the reward alone. Han Xiao planned to gain some information about the mutation disaster on Planet Dawn, so he told the spaceships waiting outside Planet Dawn to leave first. He had hitched a ride with the spaceship to this place. It was really great to have so many partners. He did not have to spend money on traveling at all. It was even better than Uber. The dim light from the communicator's screen reflected on his face. The International League is in a few days. After the things here are done, I shall bring the team back to you, Bayerly Hub. Three months ago, which is two weeks ago for the players, the Competition Alliance announced the system for the first international finals. The online store will be selling gathering crystals to the qualified players, which has a similar effect to dungeon crystals and will gather them from all planets to a simulated stadium. The entire competition will be recorded and broadcast live in all channels. The system of the first season was the same as the previous life. The international competition would only be held in real environments after the players were able to carry out interstellar travel. By then, the stage would be planets and star systems. The players from the Chinese clubs had been following him for a year. They had earned a lot, and their equipment was very strong. Thus, their performance in the international competition would definitely be better than in his previous life. In his previous life, the performance of the Chinese clubs in the first season had been quite enraging. To avoid spoiling their reputation or taking the blame, their battle style had been very cowardly and time-consuming or way too steady. Sometimes they were able to outlast the enemy, but sometimes after stalling and wasting a lot of time, they still lost. It was difficult and upsetting to watch. Fruobnov.com. Hence, it had led to very few people watching the competition every time the Chinese teams were competing. The players preferred to watch other countries' contestants passionately fight each other and would all directly skip the fights with Chinese teams. Although China's result in the first season was acceptable, they did not make any impression or notable performance at all. Their first impression on players around the world was that they were very good at dealing with pressure. If they don't fight tougher this time, they will v followed me for nothing. When the International League ends, the version update should come soon too. The players will disappear temporarily, and by then, the rewards from accepting requests will not be as high anymore. When the time comes, I shall not do mercenary work for some time. Since moving in a team is more mobile and swifter, it's more suitable to do some preparation for version 2.0 mutation disaster. It's going to require some planning. While doing that, I can also recruit some main character type people and increase the number of officers. As he was thinking, Han Zhao's senses felt a tiny abnormality. Han Zhao's eyes swayed, and he stood up and walked out of the tent. It was silent. He looked around and was stunned for a second. The prison car in the middle of the camp was gone. Rizar was nowhere to be found, and the guards were missing too. Escaped! He did not want any accidents to happen on the mission, so he equipped his mechanical suit and scanned with its radar. Then he discovered that Rizar's signal was in a small forest just outside the camp. Beside him were signals from about a dozen soldiers, and there was another individual signal hidden not far away from them. That signal strength was much higher than the soldiers. Han Xiao checked through the database and realized that it was unexpectedly from the commander of the knights. Rex. The other soldiers are all asleep. What are they taking Rizar to the bush at night for? Holy can it be. Han Xiao took a deep breath in. That is an old man. They have a really unique taste. Han Xiao walked into the forest on tiptoes, terrified, ready to turn away and run any time he saw something dirty. He activated his night vision and looked inside the forest extremely carefully. 
Razar was tied tightly by the magic-suppressing chains, and a few knights surrounded him with steel swords in their hands. Their lips moved, and they seemed to be saying something. Han Shao increased the output of the sound collection function in the battle suit and heard their conversation. I will ask you one last time, where did you get the ceremony from? I found a stone tablet under the ancient ruins. On it was the incomplete method of carrying out the ceremony. I changed the spell into using blood as the energy source. How many more times do you want me to say it? Who else knows about this spell? No one. After I memorized the spell, I destroyed the tablet. Do you think I would tell others such a dangerous spell? It's only safe in my hands. Razar's face was full of impatience as he replied to the knight. This knight rubbed his hands, and he said with a tone of suppressed excitement, How about this? Let's make a deal. You tell us the method to carrying out the ceremony, and I will let you live. Frankly, I am quite interested in the higher world as well. Razar's eyes brightened like he had caught the last straw to save his life. Ha ha ha. There is always a way out. Razar pondered, and a sense of derision appeared on his face. He felt that, after he told them of the method, these people would definitely kill him. He secretly raised his alert and asked, how do I know you don't just want to trick me out of my spell? We are the guards on duty during this time, the knight before him said. If you die, it will easily be traced back to us. Are you not afraid of me killing you after I escape? Razar said with narrowed eyes. Humph, do you dare? As soon as there is magic movement, these higher world mercenaries will come to deal with you. If I run, won't you people be traced as well? Hee <laughs> hee. This is not a question that you need to worry about. What if, after you let me go, you immediately alert the rest? Then you can go ahead and sell us out. With the conversation, Razar gradually started to believe that these knights really did want to make a deal with him. His tightened nerves became more relaxed. His attention was completely on talking with the knight in front of him, and he did not notice that a few knights behind him secretly raised their steel swords and aimed at his vital parts. Even if Razar was at grade B, if he was penetrated by steel swords when his powers were suppressed, his life would still be in danger. Han Shao secretly observed the situation. His eyes swayed as he saw this. He had thought that these knights wanted Razar's spell. The deal was almost coming to an end, yet they suddenly wanted to kill him. Seeing that these knights were about to attack, Han Shao thought about it and walked out. Hearing the footsteps, the people immediately turned around. When they saw who it was, they were all shocked. Razar's face changed immediately. You again. If their conversation had been overheard, his tinder of hope would be extinguished once again. Han Shao looked around and noticed that although these knights were surprised, they did not panic like their private deal had been found out. What's going on? Han Shao decided to speak first. Yo, you heard, a knight asked carefully. Guess. Han Zhao's eyes landed on his steel sword. Kill him! That knight yelled as he turned around and stabbed his sword at Razar's chest, blood splashing all over. Han Zhao's expression was strange. He had thought that these knights were going to fight him, but what was happening now? Razar's eyes widened. Before he could react, the other knights lunged at him with their swords. Han Zhao's outline swayed and these knights could only see a flash before their bodies fell back in the air. They were all sent flying by Han Zhao's kicks in an instant. Although I don't know what's going on, I shall stop you first. Han Zhao looked at Razar. This guy was kneeling on the ground. His face was pale and he was gasping for air. Although he was a mage, he had at least more than 100 endurance so he would not die. The steel sword did not cut too deep, but it probably penetrated his lungs, so he was having a hard time breathing. Can anyone explain this? Han Shao glanced at the knights. They closed their mouths and did not say anything. Han Shao turned to look at the deeper side of the forest and said to the darkness, the one hiding, they're not speaking, so you will explain it to me. The sound of footsteps approaching appeared in the forest. Having hidden for a long time at the side, Rex walked out with a serious face. He knew that he could not hide anymore as soon as Han Shao appeared. Rex took a deep breath and said slowly, These knights are my supporters. I arranged for them to be on duty at the same time. Bringing Razar here was to kill him, 
Han Xiao raised his eyebrows and said, Isn't he already captured? Why bother killing him secretly? Just kill him in broad daylight. Rex shook his head and said, The king wanted me to capture him alive, interrogate him openly, and lock him in a cell. Captain Black Star, you're not someone from our kingdom, so I shall tell you bluntly. For criminals at the level of ascenders like Rizar, the higher-ups of the kingdom will very likely give them to the Godaran emissary in exchange for something. This way, Rizar will still be alive, and his dream of going to the higher world will become true as well. When it comes to this kind of person that almost killed a million of others for his own sake, I don't even want to give him the slightest chance of staying alive. Also, Rizar knows the ceremony to absorb the origin water. Maybe someone in the kingdom is interested and might force him to share the ceremony spell in exchange for not killing him. Then this horrifying spell might be leaked out. If that happens, something like this will happen again. Therefore, even if this means disobeying orders from the king, I can't let him reach the kingdom city alive. As long as we kill him this way, we can use the excuse of Rizar trying to escape to cover up his death. Captain Black Star, I appreciate your timely assistance very much, but this is our kingdom's matter. Please do not interfere. Rex spoke in a very justified tone. Although he clearly knew that he was no match for Han Xiao, he did not intend to back off. Han Xiao now understood. So that's what happened. As it turns out, the deal was a trick to divert Rizar's attention. Quite a smart plan. He sized Rex up. Being so full of justice, could he be another main character type of person? Or, did you make up an excuse long ago and are lying? Han Xiao pointed at Rizar and said, Since you don't want him to go back alive, how about giving him to me? It's easier for you this way. What do you want him for? Rex frowned. That's not for you to know. Anyway, I will take him into the galaxy. Or, the higher world. Far away from you. And never let him come back here. Rizar heard this and was immediately surprised. Going to the higher world was something that he had dreamed every day. He was already in a hopeless situation, but now he felt like he had found hope again. However, when he looked up, he saw Han Xiao smiling at him with unknown meanings in his eyes. That look was almost wicked and giving out a cold aura. Rizar felt a chill, and the excitement immediately dissipated. His intuition suddenly told him that this was probably not good news. We've reached the end of today's episode. Thank you for traversing the boundless landscapes of fantasy with us. If today's story has sparked joy within you, please remember to hit the like button, share our journey with others, and subscribe to Lord of the Stories for an ever-expanding collection of mystical escapades. Until we meet again to turn the page to a new adventure, hold the tales dear in your heart, and let the embers of magic warmly glow in your spirit. Farewell, intrepid explorers of the narrative unknown.